Everyone, welcome to another lawn care live stream. My name is Ron Henry. I am your humble host for the show this tonight. And the way this works is pretty simple. So if it's the first time that you're here, first of all, welcome. Um, the way the questions work is you just simply drop them in the chat and then I work through the chat in the order that they come in. So um, I try, I'm trying to speed up as far as how quickly I get through the questions. Um, but don't think that if I am, um, you ask a question and it takes me a little while to get to you that I'm ignoring you. Just uh, just drop it in there and I will get it done. So again, I, uh, anyone that's new to the, to the uh, live stream tonight, uh, welcome and uh, and it should be a great time tonight. So let's see who we have here. We got uh, C Math in the house tonight. He's saying again, he's always stuck on the 101. Mister always on the on the uh, Hollywood freeway. He says um, he's out in ten minutes. I'll be listening live from the 101. I appreciate it, um, uh, C Math. He has a question. We also got BMH in the house uh, tonight. We got Cedric. Uh, I was talking about the mad scientists. Uh, so thanks for coming to hang out, um, Cedric. We also got Higgy Pop and and several others. So we will uh, we'll get to. It. Let's get jump right into the questions that we have tonight. Uh, the first one is um, well, C Math Moore saying that he just seeded uh, yesterday. Sold tums in the eighties where I live in California. We just had uh, three days in the upper nineties. Awesome, awesome stuff, uh, C Math. That's good good temperatures. More than enough heat to get uh, good germination, right? Um, some housekeeping, anyone that, um, from the winners for last week, we had, let's see who won, um, Higgy Pop, DG's, um, Robert Rainey and DMAC4, everything that you guys, um, uh, won has been sent out. Uh, so you should be the people that, that I finally got your address later on this week, you should be getting the stuff early next week, but some people should have already gotten it. Some of the soil tests and these, some of the other things. So congrats again on everyone, uh, that won. And kicking off our questions, we have Mr. VMH. You know how VMH is. He can't just have one question. He's got to ask three, right? So his first question is, is winterizer fertilizer just a marketing thing? Um, and two, how much actual nitrogen value per thousand square feet would you be putting down uh, for your last fertilization of the year? And I guess the third one we'll get to in a second. So is it just a marketing thing? Um, I, I, I mean, in many ways, I think so. In many ways, I think so. I mean, is there some value in applying some applying some fertilizer to your lawn um, like next month, like, you know, October as the lawn's beginning to go dormant just to give it some food as it goes into dormancy. Sure, I think there's a lot of value in that. But I mean, if you look at the makeup of winterizer fertilizer or, or fertilizer that's, that's labeled as winterizer, it's not like remarkably different from summer fertilizer or spring fertilizer, right? So from a standpoint of it being something special, um, not so much. Um, so, but I think there's some value in it. And then you say, how much actual nitrogen per thousand square feet will I be putting down? So my last application of granular is going to be um, not this weekend, but next weekend. Um, and I'm just going to be going at three pounds per thousand. So really light, like super like my, my normal rate, but I'm not going to be also doing liquid fur on top of that. So it's going to be very light. So the actual nitrogen that's going to be going down is just under half a pound. Whereas normally I put down uh, 0 0.8, 0 0.8 pounds of nitrogen. So um, quite a bit less. I mean, just almost, almost cutting it in half. But again, the grass is beginning to slow down already. Like I'm, any of you guys that are in Georgia know what the grass is starting to look like. It's starting to lose that, that nice green sheen. It's starting to slowly fall off, unfortunately. So uh, that's all part of it, right? And then the third question he has was saying, assuming I'm putting out pre-emergent in early February and do a hard scalp early spring and then do top dressing, do I need to reapply uh, pre-emergent on the new top dressing? Okay, um, so n in my opinion, no. Uh, I can tell you like what we've done on, well, this year I didn't do pre-emergent, but on Alex's lawn, we applied um, pre-emergent, just like what you're talking about doing in early February. And we top dressed his lawn um, the last, the first week of May, I think is when we did it. Yeah, so last week of April, first week of May. Um, and and there was no pre-emergent applied to the lawn since then. It actually has not been any herbicide put on his lawn um, really since then. So so no, and he hasn't had any issues with weeds in his lawn. He's got a few areas and now, like this time of year, it's been, was it four or five months now? We're starting to get a little bit of spurge along like where the fence line is, those kinds of areas. But overall, the lawn has been weed-free despite being aerated and top-dressed after pre-emergent was applied in February. So if you want to feel good about it and you just want to, you want to switch your apps up and you want to do that, you can. Um, but it's not something that's like strictly necessary, in my opinion. Not strictly necessary. I'm, I'll put you this way. Also, whenever I have ha um, applied pre-emergence to my lawn in the spring and I've top dressed, I haven't had issues with weeds. I've never done a follow-up application afterwards. So you should be good to go. Shouldn't be a problem. All right, next up, we got Mr. Cedric G in the house saying, Mad signs as the end of the season is rapidly approaching. Thanks for letting me tag along for the ride. Thank you for coming along for the ride. It's not me letting you tag along. It's your choice to show up, man. 
And he says, uh, my yard thanks you as well. Can't wait for what uh, next season has to offer. Strive Action Forever. Yeah, man. It's it's The thing is, if you, you made a lot of big changes to your lawn this season... So next year, you know, you're just going to be able to enjoy it more. I mean, you may do another, you may do a top dress, you may not, but um, you know, overall, you know, the, if you've done a lot of the heavy lifting when you started to take your take your lawn from like normal to looking, you know, pretty awesome, like a lot of that work is going to carry over into the next season. So yeah, man, I really appreciate you. Appreciate you being a regular sub, uh, viewer of the content, and that's uh, you know always awesome. So thanks again, and I appreciate the super chat. Kicking it off tonight, Mr. Cedric. Super chat received. He's a super chat received. Lego. <laughs> That's right. That's right. All right. Next up, we have uh, DDs in the house, and um, it says, "Hey, Ron, just halfway through a four thousand square foot lawn leveling, but just started raining. Not bad for an almost sixty year old woman. Thanks for all the help. That's that's awesome. That's really awesome. I don't know that if at sixty I would still be um, top dressing my lawn. So kudos to you. That's really that's really awesome. You're really uh, you're putting in work. That's um." Very, very, very cool stuff. So you're halfway there. Once the rain stops, you know, if you can get to it today, fine. You get to it tomorrow. It's going to be, you know, if you finish it this weekend, no issues at all. But uh, nice, very nice work, uh, you know, getting that done. That's that's uh, that's pretty awesome. I want to be you when I grow up. I want to be you when I grow up. And we have the UK contingent as all, Mr. Shazia Shadri, saying, hey, Ron, hope you're doing well. I'm not doing bad. Can't complain. He says, uh, looking forward to a great show. I've been watching the Ryder Cup Sadly, Europe currently lagging behind the American friends. So well done to you all on a strong early start. Uh, yeah, man, I'm trying to think. I think, hasn't Europe won the last few of them? I, th I thought um, we're kind of in a dry spell. So, um, you know, it's nice that we have the lead. It's, there's still a lot of golf to be played. So it's not like, you know, this is, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's a, a precursor for what's going to actually, how it's going to work out in the end. But um, you guys got to share the love, man. Let us, let us win one every now and then. You know what I mean? We're, we're due. We're more than due. You're saying, of course, uh, the course at Whistling Straits looks fantastic, but if I'm honest, your lawn looks even more stunning. I don't know about that. I, I, I'm going to have to respectfully disagree with you on that one, especially now uh, with all the, um, you know, it's starting to fall off. Just keep up the excellent work. And also many thanks to the letter and stickers. They arrived last week. You're very, very welcome, sir. I'm glad you got them. They arrived well and that you're, uh, you're doing okay. So your question is, um, I, uh, I top dressed my lawn, um, my lawn in the back last summer with a mixture of, of sand, compost, and, um, and compost. During humid weather, I noticed a white furry substance covering my lawn. So, um, and then your follow-up is, um, after spraying with iron sulfate disappeared, then it came back periodically. While it's not affecting the grass, is this basically caused by fungal spores from the comp compost? Quite possibly, um, Shazia. I'd have to see the pictures of it to know for sure, but I, I did see that... Um, in some areas of my lawn, when I went where I went heavier with the uh, with the soil three compost, but it was only for a couple of days and it went away. So um, the thing is, we don't have the kind of moisture, we don't get the kind of rainfall that you guys in the UK tend to. So if you have an area where you put like some very rich compost down um, and you're getting a lot of rain and that area is also not draining well, you could see some of that. But I mean, I, I really wouldn't worry about it. It sounds like you're saying it disappears. The grass looks fine. Um, it's obviously not hurting the lawn. I, I really wouldn't. Um, I wouldn't worry about it um, too much. I mean, you know, plus you guys can't really get fungicides, I think, like we can here in the States anyway. So I really wouldn't sweat it. You said after spraying, um, I think we already got that. Yep. You said, I think after spraying with iron sulfate, um, didn't come back. And then your question is, should I now avoid using compost? No, I don't. Absolutely not. I, I would still use compost. Um, you know, if you're, if you're going to do top dressing in the future, uh, I would still have a, a, a percentage of it, a 30% is what I like to use of the top dressing mix that is compost. So 70% sand, 30% compost. Um, if you want to back it down a little bit to do a little bit more sand next time, if it makes you feel better, you can. But I am always a fan of putting some kind of organic material uh, down whenever you are your top dressing. So hopefully that helps. Thanks for coming to chime in in the UK. And, um, you know, let us, let America, let America win one for a chance, man. Don't, you know, you Europeans can't be hogging it all up. All right, Daryl's in the house. What's going on, Daryl? Uh, what's up? Not too much, man. I'm hanging in there. I saw your message back to my um, my my YouTube stories earlier, um, showing showing off the lawn and showing how it's slowly beginning to lose its color. Uh, but yeah, man, it's a it's a thing a thing for us in this part of the United States. All right, next up we got uh, Daniel's Lawn here, Mr. Man from Down Under. He says, "Hey, Ron, my lawn is recovering nicely." From the spring lawn renovation I gave it last week, I'm waiting for the renovation vid to fully upload. How's things going your way? How's the lawn keeping? Lawn's doing well, man. Cannot complain. Um, it's again, it's beginning to fall off. It's it looks it is greener this it is greener now than it was this time last year. So that's that's good. 
but it is starting to lose its color a little bit. Um, again, if you want to see what it looks like, go check. You can, if you want to see what my lawn and Alex's lawn looks like, so it's not just me, it's his lawn too, check out my YouTube stories. I did some videos um, the, earlier this afternoon. I'm just showing showing like what the lawn looks like and the front lawn, swale area, vanity strip, Alex's lawn, so you can see what how all of it looks. So if you want to check that out, uh, take a look there. All right, Mr. Papa Mo's low in the house. He says, hey, Ron, just dropping in to say hello. Watching three grandkids tonight, and I have my hands full. Yikes, man. Hopefully, hopefully they're um they're you know they're not, not super tiny to where you're not gonna um, have you running crazy, right? He says, I'll check in after they go to bed. Thank you again for everything. You're very well, very welcome, sir. I got the email. Um, I really, really do appreciate that. I'm glad that you know your lawn is doing really well this year and that you know I was able to play a small part in uh, in helping you get the results that you wanted. So I really do appreciate that. And then Daniel's back. He says, um, hey, Ron, are you getting paid from YouTube? Because they've made it so hard to get paid. Apparently, you need like 1,000 subs and 4,000 hours of channel of, of, of channel hour, of channel views. Yeah, I am. I'm, I'm monetized on YouTube. Um, and the way, and to your point, the way that they, they um, to get into the partner program, the way it works, it's like um, 1,000 subscribers and then 4,000 hours of watch time within a 12-month period. So just keep doing what you're doing, man. You're making, you're making great content. Just keep, just keep putting that out. And you will um, just keep putting that out and you're going to get there. Eventually, you know, you'll just keep, keep building up your catalog. You're going to get the 4,000 hours and you'll get monetized. You know, maybe perhaps over this season, you will be able to. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't sweat it. Um, I wouldn't sweat it too much. All right. Uh, but great, great stuff. Just keep, keep chugging, chugging away. YouTube rewards consistency. Um, and the next up, your question is, what do you think of electric rotary mowers? Um, I, I mean, I think they serve a purpose. I mean, there's, there's, here's the thing, <laughs> whether we like it or not, eventually, um, you know, electric lawn care is going to become the dominant standard. At least I think so eventually, at least I, that's m my feelings on the matter. Maybe not uh, in commercial areas as much as yet because of like the, the large, the large, um, you know, piece of property they have to cut, but, uh, but every, that's where the trend's going. You have to remember, like you go back to like, 10, 15 years ago, like battery powered stuff just was not very good. Like even our cell phones, right? They just didn't, they didn't last very long. If you had like a, if you, put, if you had like a battery, po battery powered mower, you'd have a hard time getting through an entire mow with it. Um, same thing for like the string trimmer or power combination tools. Um, but that's not really the case anymore. Like a lot of the battery, battery powered stuff, like they put out more torque. They, you know, as a blower, like battery powered blowers work really, really well. No fuel, no mess. So I, I can see that's where things are eventually gonna go. Um, the issue for me is that I real mow my lawn and electric powered real mowers are pretty expensive, especially like getting like a, like a Toro, like a Greensmaster, like their, their, um, their E-line is, is pricey as well as finding those in the used, your pre-owned market. They're not as, um, not as readily available as the gas units. Right. But I, I think there's a lot of merit in them. There's nothing wrong with, um, with electric mowers. Um, if you get a good result with it, use one. You know, there's a lot of people that have gone all electric and they have great looking lawns. So yeah, I don't, I don't think there's um, anything bad to say about electric, uh, electric mowers. I think if you look at some of the other YouTubers, look at some of Alan's content, like when he's out cutting the um, the Freedom Park, the um, like Cletus's um, racetrack down there in Bradenton. Like a lot of times he's using like a, a gas powered like his Titan mower for mowing it, but then he's using like electric trimmer, electric. Um, electric, uh, you know, edgers and that kind of things to be able to get things done. So yeah, I think that's where the future is going. Just a matter of time. All right, uh, next up we got Alex B in the house saying happy Friday, Ron. Happy Friday to you, Alex. Hope all is going well. And Mr. Connor Soul saying, what's up, Ron? Hope you're doing well. I am Connor and look what I got. Look what came in the mail. Thank you so much, sir. I really do appreciate it. The Everest Kentucky Bluegrass, if I can get this there. Some Everest KBG, courtesy of Connor. Thank you so much, sir. I my One of my uh, things to do this weekend is to get this planted in the planter. Um, so yeah, thanks. Thanks for that. It's gonna, it'll be a fun little project. We'll see how the KBG does, um, over this fall period, right? Some of you guys have been asking me if I'm going to oversee the front lawn just to do an experiment with Kentucky bluegrass and that's not, that's not going to happen. It's, uh, one, I just don't like having to mow in cold weather, right? So there's, that's the main reason why I'm just lazy, um, when it comes to mowing, uh, when it's cold outside, I don't like to do it. So, plus I've been mowing every other day pretty much for like since April, so I'm ready for a break, guys. I'm ready for, you know, to back it down to, you know, less mowing. So I'm not going to do things to try and increase that. All right, next up, Tomax, uh, Tomax Zamot um, is in the house, is saying, uh, what's up? Um, what's up? What's going on, Ron, um, from Orlando? So you uh, thanks thanks for coming to hang out, uh, Tomax. I appreciate it. And then um, Paul is in the house. He says, hey, thanks again for your recent take on my soil test. No problem at all, um, Paul. Always happy to take a look and and give you um, my opinion on 
you know, what you can do. I think I think you had had it pretty much figured out as far as what your your plan was, but you know, never hurts to have a um a second set of eyes to get another get some more feedback to, in case there's something you missed or there's some other option that, you know, might work a little bit better. But I think you had it pretty much figured out. You didn't really need my help on on that one, but I appreciate you um, you know, sharing your soul test results with me. All right, uh, Daniel saying, what's up, everyone? First of all, uh, like this stream for Ron. I do appreciate that, Daniel. Thank you so much. Yeah, if anyone wants to give the live stream a like, um, I would really appreciate it. As always, you know, it's free for you guys. Great way to support the channel. And next up, our next question, which is a very, very timely question. It's around the subject of pre-emergent. EB says, uh, when is a good time to apply pre-emergent? Um, now, like now's a good time. Really, um, you know, I'm already seeing like the True Greens and other lawn care services rolling around here. Like uh, who's the big around here? Um, Turf Mark, they're, they're a big one in this area. Um, yeah, I'm seeing them putting down their pre-emergent. So yeah, it's now's, now is go time. You could have done it even a bit sooner if you wanted to, EB, but now is the, uh, the time to get uh, your, your pre-emergent down. You're definitely within the window to get that done if that's something you want to, uh, you do. And you really should, because I mean, you know, I can't tell you like how many, um, how many emails I've gotten this season over people that are like, even in the live stream, I guess, if you get a chance, go back and look at a lot of the content in the live stream. And a lot of it's about like fighting weeds, right? Like taking care of weeds in your lawn. And outside of like the really nasty ones, like Dallas grass and goose grass, ones that are just a little bit more hard, more difficult to control, pre-emergent will go a long way, a really long way um, towards preventing issues with weeds both during the fall and also into the spring. So absolutely get that down. It's one of the best things you can do for your lawn. And it's a great way to save money because it's a lot cheaper than buying, like if you can, if you have warp season grass, it's cheaper than buying Celsius and certainty uh, to get rid of weeds in summer months. All right, next up, we got Mr. Travis Winston in the house. He says, good evening, Ron and Golf Course Lawn Squad. I hope all is well with you and everyone. Hey, Ron, I know you probably mentioned this, but other than Celsius, what are you using for pre-emergent this fall? Okay, so, um, so Celsius isn't a pre-emergent, um, Travis. It's uh, it's post-emergent herbicide, but for um, the pre-emergent that I'm using is a product called um, uh, Coastal. It's Coastal, like mine's drawing a blank. Uh, but I, and I can actually show you guys that. Let's see if I can pull it up right here really quick. Um, yeah, I think I should actually bring the jug in from the garage and actually show it. But yeah, this is what I'm gonna be using um, this fall. Um, I'm gonna be using the small, obviously the smaller jug, the 64 ounce one, the half gallon. Um, I just want to try something new, right? Because the, th the thing with this one that's kind of cool is when I saw a professor, I know his name, first name is Bert. Um, I, I was watching a video that he did on it and it looked very promising compared to some of the more expensive um, offerings. You always hear me talk about Spectacle Flow. It's like, this is like, um, it produces the same or similar results as Spectacle Flow without the crazy um, price tag. Um, not saying the crazy price tag, it's, just, it's expensive. It's a lot more expensive than, um, than Coastal is. Um, so yeah, this is what I'm going to be, I'm going to be using um, on my lawn this fall. I'm going to do an application this month, and then I'm thinking in January maybe a, another light app. So I might split it up. I haven't fully decided yet, but I think that's what I'm what I'm going to do. I've seen different tech. I've heard. I've read about different techniques for applying this, um, and we'll we'll see which one I um, I end up deciding to go with. So this is what I'm going to be running uh, this fall. The only negative to this one, guys, is that if you look here, the number of states this is available in. Um, there's a lot of places where you can't, where they, you know, you can't buy this as yet. So you don't have to have this. Really, you could go with something just like straight prodiamine. That's a great option. Again, we have that on the golf course lawn store. You don't have to go with um, coastal. Really, what coastal is is prodiamine and um, it's prodiamine, simazine, and amazequin. Um, and uh, and there you go. So if you want to see another option for pre-emergent, assuming you don't have one um, picked out as yet, we've got a couple here. So let me switch over. So yes, yeah, so you've got prodiamine in um, the small uh, one ounce. Is this five ounces? I think it's five ounces, right? Yeah, small five ounce container, which you can see right here. And then you have it in granular form and then also in an 80 ounce uh, jug. So it just depends on which one is your pleasure. This one will do most home lawns, depending on how big your lawn is. But this will do, I think, 6,000 square feet uh, thereabouts for Bermuda. Um, and if you have warm season grass, I think even further, like the rate for Bermuda is higher than like rye or, or, um, or KBG, if memory serves me correctly. I think that's correct. All right, hopefully that helps, sir. All right, next up we got Alex B. He's giving us an update on his renovation. He says, Reno was going smoothly. I aerated, I did starter for it. I top dressed and overseeded the whole property and all of a sudden two inches of rain in like two to three hours, worried how much got washed away. 
Probably a, a lot less than you think, man. Um, I think the whole the whole thing of like, you know, unless you're lawn, you live on like on the side of a hill, the whole idea of, you know, you losing a bunch of your fertilizer, losing a bunch of seed um, from rain, um, almost it's overblown, but I think we, we make it into a bigger problem than it, than it really often is. Uh, so yeah, I really, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Here in Georgia, it's been crazy, kind of like you. We've been getting all kinds of rain here lately. It's only been the last couple of days that it's actually stopped. Um, so... Looking forward to getting the Moel um, in tomorrow morning, but yeah, I, I really wouldn't worry about it too much, Alex. I, I'm sure you're you're fine. So I think I think you sent me pictures of your property, and it's fairly flat, from what I understand. There's not like a lot of slopes in it, so you should be okay. Should be okay. All right. Next up, we got Miss Grace Ortiz in the house. She says, "Hey, Ron, hope you had an amazing week. I did. I did. It's not not a bad week at all. I cannot complain. Did some scripting for some content that I'm going to be working on here uh, soon. Um, and yeah, yeah, it's overall." Overall week uh, has gone um, has gone pretty well. Glad the rain's finally stopped. And then uh, D.W. Davis says, I'm glad you're doing it again. Army worms are back in action here in Southern Illinois. I thought they were done, but no, I had to treat them again today. Man, that's that's that stinks, man. Um, they are, uh, I guess they, they're just they're hanging out with a vengeance. It'd be interesting to know what you're using, D.W. Davis, um, to treat the army worms because, again, there were some lawns around here that got got destroyed by them, got some damage from them. But on both my lawn and Alex's lawn, we did um, a celeprin, the granular celeprin in April. And that's it. I mean, there hasn't been any issues um, with either of our lawns, even though there's some lawns in this area surrounding us that have had problems. So we should know what you're using on it to know why they why they keep coming back. Because, um, um, you know, a celeprin should have some residual that should keep them away if you applied it, you know, recently. Because again, again, I did mine in April and it's still working. All right, uh, next up, um, HR says, has a good question. He says, um, how do you determine if a product is sprayed as a foliar or a regular soil application? Thanks, and a great weekend, everyone. It should say on, um, on the label. It should, it should, should be specified, um, HR. Um, that's probably gonna be the best, the best advice I can give you. It's, it's gonna be, it's going to be, um, it should be on the label if it needs to be specifically uh, watered in. Most liquid ferts, most liquid ferts um, can go either way. The only, well, like one exception I can think to that, right, is like if you're putting down like uh, urea, like straight urea um, on your lawn, that's something you're going to want to water in because it will burn, it will burn the uh, the grass if you don't. But on the on the product label or the manufacturer's website, they should specify whether or not it needs to be, uh, needs to be watered in or not. So hopefully that helps. All right, next up, we got uh, Paul D Douglas is back. He says, um, uh, one more, um, I use I use granular and a liquid pre-emergent. How far apart should they be applied? Um, so you're doing both a granular and a liquid? Um, so I, I usually do one or the other, Paul. I've not really seen the need to do like a granular, uh, like say now and then a liquid like a month later. Um, I guess if, you, if you're gonna do that, um, I would do them, I, I would apply the other one when the effectiveness, the effectiveness um, period of the first one wears off. So for prodiamine, depending on the rate you use and a bunch of other factors, you can get a, a solid four months out of it, maybe five months out of it. Um, so if you are doing say liquid prodiamine and granular prodiamine, you might do the liquid first, um, and then you know four months down the road, you could do the granular if that's what you wanted to, uh, to do. But I haven't had the need to really um, to, to do to do uh, to double up like that on liquid and granular, but if you're doing it, I would I would space it out. You know, in other words, um, adding doing both in a close window um, is really a, is not going to really give you any more protection, and actually could cause cause some problems. So I would I would spread them out based on how long the pre-emergent is supposed to be effective for. Hopefully uh, that helps. All right, next up, Kidro uh, twenty two says, "What's up, Ron? What's up, Kidro?" He says, uh, "Should I aerate?" Seed, then top dress for a level plane. Uh, when should I apply pre-emergent? Okay, should I aerate seed and then top dress for a level plane? When should I apply pre-emergent? Okay, so if we're me, um, what I I would only change that order just slightly. I would aerate, I would top dress, and then I would seed. Again, it depends on how how heavy of a top dress you're doing. Um, but most grass seed um, doesn't need to be buried like under an inch of soil to uh, to grow. Like most labels, if you read them. They're gonna say they're gonna call for like an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch of um, of coverage over the seed. Um, so you know, if it were me, um, I would I would aerate and then I would top dress and then I would um, do the seed. As far as pre-emergent goes, I would get that done now. So kind of like what I just answered in the other question. Now is the time. So you have two windows, like fall and spring, and we are well within uh, the 
spread the fall window for applying uh, pre-emergence. So hopefully that helps Kidro and good luck on the seeding project. We have the man, the myth, Mr. LG in the house. LG, LG and Josh, they both get that, that, that introduction, right? He says, Carbon Bro LG in attendance is going on. LG, hopefully you're doing well up there in uh, great Midwest. I guess I was considered the Midwest, right? Um, but yeah, hopefully all is going well with you. Um, and yeah, Carbon Bro, um, Carbon Bro or Carbon Pro is really what you got to go to for the, for the time being. I did talk to um, the folks at Miramichi Green to get an update on Essential G because some of you guys have been emailing me that and versus like answering the same email over and over and over and over again. I figured I'll just put it in the live stream easier. Um, they are thinking that it will be back in stock. So then again, available for sale uh, the middle part of next week. And when it is, I will also do like a YouTube story, Instagram, um, you know, announcement, send out carrier pigeons, all this kind of stuff. Give you, uh, you guys will know that it's back in stock. So, uh, but yeah, definitely in the meantime, Carbon Pro G is a great option. So uh, get that stuff while you can. Uh, Grasshopper Lawn Care is in the house saying Grasshopper is here. Welcome, Grasshopper. Welcome. Welcome. Thanks for coming to hang out with us in the... Uh, in the show, and then Kidro saying, "Yeah, you're up here in Midwest Illinois." Yeah, it doesn't really it doesn't really change the answer. I would still I would still do that. I would aerate, top dress, and then seed. And then once you put the seed down, uh, Kidro twenty two, just rake it in lightly. So if you if you're using like a leveling rake, um, once the seed is down, just drag it over it to kind of create that soil seed contact. If you have a um, like a reel mower, like a Greensmaster, something with like a rear drum on it, you can disable the reel. And then just use the like you know kind of pop like a mild wheelie and use the rear drum to roll the seed in. That's another another option as well to really press it in and get that good uh, soil to seed contact. Uh, very very good. All right, um, G B Frarer is in the house. It says, hey, "Good evening, Ron. I have Saint Augustine grass and want to know what is the best way to, to treat brown patch." Um, putting down a fungicide is um, putting on a fungicide limiting your water. Um, and if you're you're heavily fertilizing the lawn, so I'm not sure how much fertilizer you're putting on the lawn, GB Farrer, but like with brown patch, it's typically a combination of um, a lot of moisture, um, people that tend to over fertilize their lawn, and heat. And you are, you didn't say where you are, um, but at, at any rate, um, the, the fungicide that I would go with is um, Azoxia strobin. So you can get that in a couple of different ways. You can get that um, in a product called Heritage G that Syngenta makes. There's other options for getting it too. You go to big box stores, there's places that, that um, there's products that they have there that have it as well. Um, and if you want to use something that's a, you know, a bit more potent that, that has two methods of operation, you could go with Headway. So you have then Azoxia strobin and Propoconazole. So you have two um, different active ingredients to target uh, lawn fungus. But I would also, um, I would also, if you're watering the lawn a lot or watering it heavily, I would try and reduce that some. Because I'm not, again, I don't know where in the country you are, but, um, you know, backing off on the watering a little bit, that will, can help things, um, can help things a bit when it comes to dealing with fungus issues. And I will give you links to both of those in the chat just so you have them. Uh, again, Heritage should do the trick, but if you're looking to spend a few more dollars and have like basically putting down two fungicides at the same time, um, Headway um, is a great option. So let me get you here, GB Farrer, and um, and there um, there you go. Um, yeah, so hopefully hopefully that that helps. Okay, all right. So next up, we got Mr. Thin Cut in the house. He says, good evening, everyone. What's going on, Thin Cut? Thanks for coming to uh, to hang out in the in the live stream. You see Thin Cut, I, I gotta show you guys, I actually got the stickers out this time. So you see his avatar, right? He also sent me some stickers. Um, he sent me some stickers uh, to show you guys. So maybe we could do a little giveaway tonight if you guys want. To, I can give one of these to wait if someone wants a Thin Cut a sticker. He's also concerned about my help, his health. He sent me a Thin Cut mask. So uh, I appreciate it, sir. So I got all those. And if you guys are interested, you know, put it in the chat. We will see about doing a um, a uh, a giveaway a giveaway tonight for those. Maybe we'll we'll see. We'll see if we, we can make it, make that work. All right. Next up, we got Scott Scott R in the house. He says, "Hey man, hope all is well. It's not going bad. Scott can't complain. Could you please walk us through your fall winter preem apps to prevent POA? Timing of apps, products you're using, rates. Okay." Um, so, uh, I covered the product I'm going to be using. It's going to be the, um, coastal is so I'm going to be going with. And the rate for that, I think is point, it's a uh, 0.65, I think is what they say. So is what, is what they recommend, um, applying that at. 
um, for the fall. I, have, I don't have the label for 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 Coastal memorized, uh, Scott, but Coastal is going to be applying it. I'm going to be doing that. Um, I'm still trying to decide whether I'm going to do one app um, this month and then a, a follow up in January, um, or just do one and see how it how it does. I kind of want to go light and see what kind of um, performance I get out of it. Um, so we'll, we'll see, it's gonna be one of those two. But just check the label for it for your particular, um, you know, for your grass type and, what, you, and what, it, what it says, but it's the fall rate for Coastal is heavier than the, uh, than the spring rate. They have a special rate they designate for, um, for fall applications. So that's what we're gonna be using and I'll just flash it up on the screen here really quickly. So one more time so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, Scott, it's gonna be that guy. And as far as when I'm gonna be applying it, the first app will probably be next weekend. Um, whenever I also do my last fertilization of the season as well. So hopefully that helps. Will, will we see how it works, man? Um, you know, Spectacle Flow has done really, really well for keeping Poe away out of the lawn. So changing it up, we'll see how, uh, we'll see how the coastal, how the coastal does. Hope that helps. All right, next up we got uh, Lyle uh, Creaming says, if I overseeded two weeks ago and grass is germinated, can I put down a pre-emergent uh, prodiamine in the next week or so? Um, so I, me personally, Lyle, I wouldn't because the grass you just put down is is it's brand new. It hasn't really established it. The roots aren't deep. Um, and the way that that prodiamine that, and a lot of pre-emergents work is they, they suppress the ability of the plant that germinates, its ability to grow roots. So your grass looks like a weed is trying to grow roots right now. So, um, you know, if you, if you do it, um, don't be surprised if you lose, you tend possibly lose some of your, uh, some of your grass, some of your grass that you just put down. I might give it a little bit more time. If you're really, if you're really hard up on putting down prodiamine, um, I might give it a bit more than two weeks after germination. That grass is still going to be pretty young. You didn't say what kind you you did, but it, it doesn't it doesn't really matter. It's, it's for me that would be too close. I would give it I would give it more time. Um, and if it's something that you just say if you have Bermuda and you're overseeding with rye or something this fall and you don't really care if some of it gets dinged, then no big deal. Um, but if it's like if you're a case where this is you have cool season grass and this is what you're using to really fill in the lawn and get it to look nice for the season then I would really, I, I really honestly wouldn't even do it, right? Because um, whereas Bermuda is a little bit more tolerant of, of um, pre-emergent being applied to it within the first calendar year when it's still relatively young grass, a lot of cool season grasses will not, will not tolerate that as well. So if it were me, I wouldn't, definitely not within two weeks. Definitely not within two weeks. So hopefully that, uh, that helped. Hopefully you didn't do it already. All right, uh, next up, we got Tom V in the house from Chicago. He says, we finally got rain this week. I would also uh, like to know when to put down uh, my granular humic max. I put down Turplex at six ounces per gallon last week. When to do the max? I'm gonna be doing mine uh, next weekend, Tom. It's gonna be my last app of the season. Um, it's gonna be at the low rate. Again, it's, it's at, at half a pound of nitrogen. It's just under half a pound is gonna end up being. Um, and that should be it, man. You did, you did your Turplex, which is good. You did humic max and just let let things um, let things close out. Well, actually, let me see. Actually, I take that back because you're in you're in Chicago, so you have cool season grass. You don't have you're not like me. So um, I would keep with your with your regiment, man, because like it's not like your grass is going to go dormant um, like what what we're dealing with here in the uh, in the southeast U.S. So, but like Bermuda warm season grass like zoysia are start is going to start to go dormant. My grass is already beginning to fall off. Um, but you in Chicago, you're still within your growing season, so. I would do an, an app this this October and then look at it, see how it looks, um, see how it looks at the end of the month, and you can decide then whether or not you want to feed the lawn anymore. I mean, if it's snowing on the ground by then, by like early November, and, and you know at that point there's no point in fertilizing, but I, I would still go at your normal rate for this month, given that you're up north, right? Because your grass is not, you're not, you, your situation is not the same as mine or anyone else that's in this the southeast U.S. So hopefully uh, that helps. All right, Romanito, uh, man, I, I'm, I'm, I am totally butchering your last name. I'm gonna try it though. Romanito Manalili, Manalili. I think I got it, I think so. If not, I apologize. <laughs> says, hey Ron, happy Friday. Temp in the morning is around 50 to 60 and it gets up into the 80s in the afternoon. Um, question is, can we still fertilize and apply herbicide? Uh, yes, you can. So I'm assuming you're in, in Georgia because that's kind of what's starting to happen around here. Um, so yes, you can still do that. And as far as herbicides go, I mean, if you're trying to target specific like weeds in your lawn, yeah, you can still spray them. 
But really, the herbicide that you want to be putting down now, Romanito, is um, pre-emergent. So I don't, I don't want to be like, you know, applying fertilizer and her and herbicide. Like those two things go together every single time. Because the way the, the way you ask the question, it, it kind of comes across that way. So fertilization, yes, you want to do another app, you know, this uh, upcoming weekend. No worries with that. Um, Post-emergent herbicide, so some of the stuff to kill weeds that are already grown out. Yeah, you can still do that. But um, this time of year, the thing you also want to focus on is getting your pre-emergent down. So that's going to do a lot for preventing um, even more fall weeds from germinating and also in the spring, preventing you from having a nightmare with um, with POA. So hopefully uh, hopefully that helps. Great, great question. It's crazy too. Just I was just thinking about what you were saying. You know, it's funny how things change. Like we didn't even go from like super, super hot days to where it slowly tapered off and then it started getting cooler. It was like hot, 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 and then just stopped. And then it started getting... You know, you woke up one morning and we have like really cool temps. So it's uh, it's been a crazy year for um, for weather, right? All right, next up we have Air Rack 1500. It says, I live in Austin, Texas, and I'm thinking about overseeding my Bermuda with ryegrass. I reel mow at three quarters of an inch, and I definitely want to keep the lawn green throughout the winter. What rye seed should I use? Um, so perennial rye is what most people use for overseeding air rack, um, 1500, as far as a particular brand, I can't recommend one from experience cause I've never overseeded, um, my lawn with rye in the fall. I can tell you like the brands like Baron Brug, it gets really good reviews. People, a lot of people tend to like that grass seed. Um, but yeah, just go with a quality seed and you should be, uh, you should be good to go. But yeah, yeah, that, that would be my, um, my thing. It's like you're already at three quarters of an inch. You're already cutting low enough. Um, yeah, lawn should look great, but it's uh, just as long as you're as long as you're willing to get out there and mow when it's uh, when it's cooler, uh, should be good to go. So, so again, um, without without having direct experience with a particular grassy to say, yeah, this one's really good, um, I would say Baron Brug. Go with go with them or some other um, high quality high quality grass seed. Let us know how it works out, man. Let us know how it uh, how it does. All right, uh, Alex B is back. He says, Ron, if I already top dressed with a 70-30 topsoil to sand mix and about seven days into new seed watering establishment process, um, should I wait until next uh, season to address structural issues with sand? Um, I wouldn't. I, I would, um, no. So I guess what you're, what you're saying is you already did your mass top dress across the entire lawn, but then you still have a few areas that need some touch-up work. Um, should you wait till next year? No, I wouldn't. I mean, as long as the grass is growing through, uh, the areas that you're you're targeting, uh, then yeah, you can definitely do that. Like uh, with every time I've top dressed, I've done exactly what you're talking about, right? So I do like the mass top dress, the entire lawn, um, pretty much fairly even coverage. But then when I look at it and I see when it waters in, and I see how the lawn, how everything is settling, then I'll pick certain areas to do some spot top dressing, and that that produces a really good result. So yeah, uh, I would not wait all the way until next season unless you really want to. Um, but again, just remember the, the main the main core piece of advice I, I'm going to give you, Alex, is you don't want to ever really submerge the grass completely in sand. So as long as you're going light and you're slowly building up those areas that are little problem spots, you should be good to go. Should be good to go. As long as the grass is, is, uh, is actively growing, no worries at all with that. So great, uh, great question. Jinwan Park is in the house. What's going on, Jinwan? See you, you, the fam, and the kiddos. Looks like you're all hanging out. Um, hope all is going well. Happy Friday to you too, sir. Thanks for coming to hang out in the live stream. All right, Alexander Thomas says, evening, everybody. What's going on, Alex? Thanks for coming to hang out. And next up, we have a question with a about real mowing from Mr. Uh, Matthew uh, Bliski. says, hey, Ron, just did my first mow of the 13,000 square feet of celebration that was put in 11 days ago. We got to clap that up. We got to give you, uh, you got to give you uh, some applause for that. Congrats on the, on the new grass, sir. It's pretty awesome. I had to cut my rotary at an inch and three quarters. I did a pass with the green, with the GM uh, 1000 at one inch, but it scalped. Uh, should I wait till spring? Um, no, I mean, you can keep mowing it. Uh, the, the thing is, is that we, we are in the tail end, uh, Matthew, if, if it were me, if it were me, um, you know, cause I think the GM, the 1000 will go up to what an inch and a quarter is the highest I think it'll go, I would cut it taller, um, especially considering you just put it in, right? There's no reason There's no reason to really scalp it or try and get it crazy low, especially when it's still trying to establish. Um, we're going into winter, so let the light, you know, don't don't stress the grass out, um, the, the, the new grass out too much. If it were me, if you really want to real mow it, you can do that, but just, um, I would I would literally cut it as high as I could with the Greens Master, which I think, um, someone will correct me in the comments here if I'm wrong here, but I, be, I believe it's um, one and a quarter inches is as high 
as the 1600 and the 1000, um, as a 1000 will go. I definitely would not do a, any kind of a crazy scalp, like, you know, taking it down under an inch or anything like that. So I would, you know, I would, if you, you already did it, you've already, you've already taken it down to, um, whatever you're at now, I guess, whatever height you had the, the, the GM at at one inch. Um, and you can continue maintaining that, but if you can take it up even taller to the max how to cut for the GM 1000, that's going to be, I think the best compromise, right? So hopefully that helps. And again, congrats on the celebration, man. I'm jealous. It's pretty, it's pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. I got to find out if there's anyone around here that actually carries celebration. It's something I've thought about, you know, as far as like a, a lawn renovation, but I don't know, man, the amount of mess that would make and having the top dress all over again, and it's just be a ton of work, right? I don't know about that. We got Mr. Princess Cut Lawn here in the house. What's going on, George? You're, you're up, you're in early tonight for a change, man. Normally you come in a little later on, but you're in here a little early. So I appreciate you. Thanks for coming to hang out in the uh, in the live stream. Hope all is uh, is doing well. And then Jinwan says, do you think the cooler, colder air temperatures contribute to POA and winter weeds germinating earlier? Very well could be, um, Jinwan. I mean, once temps begin to fall off, that's when POA will begin, um, will begin germinating. I mean, there are people uh, that I got emails from, some viewers I got emails from in like late August that, that were sending me pictures saying, hey, this looks like POA, but it can't be POA because it's like late August, right? I'm like, oh, uh, yeah, look at the picture. That looks like POA. So it, you know, depending if the conditions are right, um, it absolutely can. But yeah, to your point, once temperatures begin falling off, begin trending cooler is when, um, you know, POA and other winter weeds tend to become a problem, you know, tend to be a problem. Just as in the house is going on, Lawn Whisperer. So here's the guy, here's the thing, guys. So while, while I do appreciate you guys hanging out in live stream and asking like tons of questions, you still need to continue to do that. I'm not, I'm not trying to send you away or push you away. But if you're looking for some excellent, excellent, um, cool season grass content, you got two guys here that just literally just, just stopped in. I'm not sure if they planned this or whatever. Um, but like Lawn Whisperer, Justin, and also Princess Cut Lawn Care, both these guys put out awesome, cool season content. So if you're, if you're looking for some tips around, you know, different strategies for your, for your um, lawn, over, for overseeding uh, your rye or, or KBG, if you're doing that, like I'm sure Justin, um, Lawn Whisperer and or Princess Cut Lawn Care are going to have you covered. So definitely check them out. Give them some love. Um, guys put a lot of work into it. It's always great to see, uh, you know, always, I appreciate you guys coming to hang out in the live stream for a little bit. I appreciate the support. All right. Alex B is leading off. He says, like the stream, subscribe to the channel. And for those with social shares, uh, share, use the share button. I do appreciate that, Alex. It does really help out a lot, believe it or not. Um, you know, like the, the engagement, um, you know, having the likes, um, definitely helps sharing the content. I always appreciate that. And just having you guys around, you know, just, just having you guys coming to hang out and talk about lawn care and just dealing with the challenges you're hearing about the challenges you're dealing with, hearing about your successes and things like that. Always, always fun. All right. So, um, Mr. Brick Rehab is in the house, says, still hitting the high 80s and 90s here in Texas. Well, enjoy it while you can. Enjoy it while you can. And you know, Brick Rehab, you guys should you guys should have high temps because, you know, you guys got punished. Um, was it over the summer? You guys got all like a biblical amount of rain over the summer months that caused all kinds of problems in your lawn. So you guys are due for like a season of like just nice and hot weather where you can just mow your grass and enjoy it. So... Uh, you know, I definitely, uh, I definitely get that and enjoy it in, uh, in the fine state of Texas, uh, while you can. Eventually it's going to start cooling off, but enjoy, uh, enjoy the mow while you, uh, while you're going to be able to, uh, to do that. All right. Next up, we got SA Town, uh, holding it down, which I think is also a, another Texan. I'm thinking SA is probably for San Antonio, right? Um, yeah, cause 210, I think 210 area code is San Antonio. He says, happy Friday, Ron. I, I feel like my lawn is starting to fall off in terms of growth and color. Should I proceed with fertilizing next week or just let it go till next season? Either one will work, um, SA, hold, SA Town hold it, holding it. I, I say holding it down, but it's not. there's no down in your thing. Um, yeah, it, either one will work. You can, if you want to apply fertilizer as it's going into dormancy, like a light app, you can do that. If you don't want to, it's going to be fine either way. Um, I'm going to be doing a light fertilizer application um, next weekend, and then that's going to be it as far as fertilizer on my lawn until... Uh, next spring. I'm, I'm going to be doing a couple other applications of like fungicide and a few other things. But um, but yeah, as far as actual fur, as far as feeding it, it's going to be done. Done, done, done. All right, let me scroll down here and get a couple of super chats we got here. I don't want to um, ignore you guys. We got one super chat here from well, Romero Williams. Super chat received. He says, happy Friday, Ron and everyone. Second time watching and excited about the new grassland knowledge. You're very, very welcome, Merrill. Thanks for coming to hang out. And then DMAC 
um, is dropping in. He says, Super chat received. He says, hey, Ron, it's me, the new guy. Uh, such great questions on here. So here's my dumb question. It's not a dumb question. He says, I have centipede grass um, lawn full of chamber bitter. Um, do I buy a commercial grade pre-emergent? My first lawn ever. I have um, more questions. Um, yeah, so as far as commercial grade pre-emergent, like, I mean, if by that you mean like prodiamine or dithiopyr, I mean, yeah, one of those. Um, yeah, I mean, those those are, are good options. For centipede, prodiamine should be safe for that. I think that dithiopyr is too, but I'd have to check the label to be to be a thousand percent sure on that. Not, not a dumb question, um, DMAC4. Um, prodiamine, I'm, again, I'm, I'm fairly certain that one is safe for centipede. Um, dithiopyr, I'm not, I'm not a, a thousand percent sure on that one. Um, so, so yeah, man, I appreciate the, uh, the, the super chat. It's not a dumb question. It's actually a really smart question, uh, given the time of year. So, uh, so yeah, no such thing as, uh, as a dumb questions, um, at all. And as far as applying, um, prodiamine, I've got a couple of videos on that already. If you just go back in on my channel and look up like, um, go to YouTube, obviously because we're on YouTube and, um, look up, type in Ron Henry pre-emergent. Um, there's several videos on that, on that, uh, subject. So um, look up for the one that, that's just strictly on, on pre-emergent and uh, you should be good to go. I'll show you how to mix it, I'll show you how to, and apply it, all that jazz. So should be good to go. All right, now the hard part of Super Chats. I gotta find where I was in uh, the comments. All right, here we go, we're back. All right, next up we got uh, Corey uh, Binion. He says, is it okay to, to put down prodiamine and then two weeks later apply dimension for pre-emergent? Um, I wouldn't, um, Corey, I would do one or the other. Um, I, I have not seen the need to like double up on pre-emergent applications to so do, um, I, I do see the value in like having the rate and doing like a split app if you want to do that. Um, but as far as like doing prodiamine this week and then wait two weeks later and doing, um, like another pre-emergent, um, if it's applied properly, if it's, if the pre-emergent is applied properly, if you mix it properly, you measured it out, it's applied at the right rate, you water it in. You don't need to to, to stack them uh, like that. A, a perfect example, again, looking at Alex's lawn. You guys, again, look at my YouTube stories. You can look at his lawn. Or if I can ever convince him to ever come on the live stream, he's like he's like being on camera. Um, you can ask him. Uh, his lawn doesn't have any weeds. He had no problems with weeds in his lawn over the entire summer. And his pre-emergent application was done in like early February. It was done super, super early this year and he had no problems with it. So as long as you apply it at the right rate, um, there's not really a need to be doubling and tripling up on 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 pre-emergence. You actually can cause um, more harm than good by doing that. So I would I wouldn't recommend that. All right. So um, just looks like you're getting some love. Ned G saying saying hey, what's going on, Ned G? And then we got B Young saying uh, what's up, Ron? Enjoy and look forward to the show every Friday. Thanks so much, B Young. I really do uh, appreciate it. Thanks for coming to uh, to hang out. And I do appreciate it again, uh, Connor. Thanks for the Everest Kentucky bluegrass. I do appreciate that. I will be getting it down uh, this weekend. All right, Alan C is up next. He says, Ron, I'm contemplating life choices now. I love the way he posed the question. I'm contemplating life choices now. Tiff Tough Bermuda in Birmingham put down half a pound of fast release um, NNK about two weeks ago. Should I add another half a pound of NNK or let it ride for the year? If you did it just two weeks ago, I wouldn't do, I wouldn't hit it again. Uh, right now, I mean, I, that's 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 a bit that's a bit um, a bit much, Alan. Um, if here's the thing, look at how the grass is looking. Is if the, does the grass still have its summer vibrance? Does it still look as good as it did during the summer? Because um, he says you're in Birmingham. Yes, you're 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 about in the same temperature range um, as I am. Long short, long short is I would not. No, I wouldn't. Um, I would give it. I would do four weeks between the between the applications. So we did it two weeks ago. In another two weeks, if the grass still looks awesome and it looks like, hey, it's not going to be not falling off anytime soon, and you want to do a light application, then then I would consider it at that point. But I wouldn't just two weeks later hit the lawn again um, with nitrogen. I mean, it's not again. You could do nothing uh, this time of year, and the lawn will be absolutely fine. So you know, I would just give it give it a time for what you've already put down to to burn through that, and then um, then follow it up if needed. If needed, you'll be able to look at the grass and be able to see see for yourself. All right, uh, Ned G saying, sup Ned, how are you enjoying these temps? I oh, you guys are having like a side chat. That is um, not for me. And then Victor Stam says, Ron, fantastic channel. Thanks so much. I really do appreciate it. He says, I live in Illinois. How can I prepare my lawn for um, the winter? Um, so putting down a, a good pre-emergent now is, is, a, is a great idea, Victor. Outside of that, man, there's not a ton, um, 
a ton that I, I'd recommend out of perhaps, you know, putting down pre-emergent, getting a fungicide down. Um, I mean, that can help some with some of the some of the fungus that, that um, you guys tend to get on your cool season lawns whenever snow sets in. That that can help as a preventative. But outside of that, just enjoy it between now and then. Just mow the just mow your lawn. Um, you know, fertilize according to soil your soil test results. Um, there's not really anything crazy that you have to do um, that's going to materially make a huge um, huge difference in how your lawn looks in the spring, other than pre-emergent and um, you know if you want a preventative fungicide. That, those are the two things I'd say. Outside of that, just uh, just mow it, mow it and enjoy it, sir. Mow it and enjoy it. All right, looking for um, my next uh, question here. We got one from um, Grasshopper Lawn Care. It says, in fall, when you start seeing wild onions and garlic popping up, is it time? For, it is time for pre-emergence. So there you go. There's someone that um, gives you a another uh, you know another uh, I guess indicator as far as when you can start putting pre-emergent down on your lawn. So wild onions and garlic. If you start seeing those in your lawn, the long stringy, I mean, it looks like um, like onions, like wild onions. Um, then you can do it. But, uh, but yeah, for, for me, pretty much, I tend to go more on a, um, just when, when it gets to be between February through March, that's my spring window for pre-emergent. For the fall, anytime from September into early October, depending on how temps are, that's when the, when the window opens up too. Again, I, I am of the opinion, um, when it comes to pre-emergent, a little bit earlier is better than late, you know? So if, once they start germinating, it's, it's, it's too late at that point. So a little bit earlier is a little better than, uh, then late. But uh, thank you, uh, Grasshopper uh, Lawn Care. Appreciate you chiming in. All right. Ogsan uh, says, hey, Ron, I just put down Coastal. When should I do the next one? Glad I got it. I, here's the thing. You may not necessarily have to do another application of it, um, Ogsan. Um, I have to know what rate you use. I, there, there is a rate that is literally specified on the label. I should have it up here that, um, that they, the label tells you to use for um, a fall application. So if you did that, you're probably good to go. You're probably just fine. Um, and you see, you're ahead of me. You got your coastal down before I did. So that's that's uh, that's pretty awesome, man. Um, but yeah, I, I, if I, if memory serves me as far as um, what Bert did, and I, I should remember his name. I should I should not remember his last name. Um, I believe they did an application in late October, and they did another one in November. They did them. They did them like about a month apart. Um, but again, if you apply it at at the the fall rate, that in itself should be enough. I actually bounced that off off of a buddy of mine that has a a um, a business that does he sprays lawns for a living, and he says that yeah, you can do split apps if you want, but just that if you follow that one heavy rate, the one rate that's specified for the fall on the bottle, that really is going to be enough to carry you through, assuming you applied it properly and watered it in and all that all that jazz. So good job, man. Get your pre-merger down. Nice work. Very nice work. All right, next up, we got John Cuck in the house. He says, hey, Ron, big fan of your channel. Thank you so much, John. He says, uh, my lawn has very green and lush parts, some okay parts, and some very weak parts. Sounds like pretty much everybody's lawn. He says, I suspect the soil is the issue, but I have no idea how to deal with that besides aerating. Okay, so there's, there's things that, um, there's a lot of different things that could cause some parts of your lawn to be stronger than others. It could be, you need to say what your grass type is, John, but it could be shade, it could be, um, the amount of water, the areas that are doing well gets versus the areas that are not. It could be a compaction issue. Like even what you're saying here, you're talking about um, aerating. If your soil is heavily compacted, that can um, that can also have a negative effect on, on how the lawn does. But if but I would the thing I would I would ask yourself is look at your lawn objectively and say, okay, the areas that are doing really, really well compared to the areas that are not doing well, what is different about them? Are they in a different part of the lawn where they're getting less sunlight? Are they a part of the lawn where, again, by watering is a big thing. Is it where they're just, where my irrigation runs, this area is not getting as much or water runs off really quickly. Um, all those things can make a difference. Whenever you do your fertilization, are you sure you're making, you're doing it evenly throughout the entire lawn to where, you know, the lawn's being fed equally all throughout? Because all that stuff, all those things can, um, can add up. Aeration can, impacted as well, but it's, if it were me, if I were a betting man, it'd be um, one of those other things I spoke about, like watering, a shade issue, or um, or fertilization, right? Like those, 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 one of those three is normally uh, the culprit along with um, different amounts of sunlight that the, the areas are getting. So hopefully that helps. Aeration is not gonna, not gonna be a bad thing, especially if you have cool season grass, you can, uh, you can absolutely do that if you want. Um, but I would also look at, you know, do just look at the two different uh, areas, the good spots, the bad spots, see what's different and try and, um, solve the problem, solve the problem that way. Uh, D Mayer's in the house. 
Uh, Mr. Groundskeeper, Greenskeeper, so like come and hang out, sir. He says, uh, what's going on, Ron? Looking forward to hearing some good turf talk tonight. Hope everyone else with cool season grass is enjoying the fall. Uh, yeah, now this is go time for you cool season guys. You know, it'd be interesting. I mean, I granted, I don't want to move up north because I don't like cold weather, but it would be interesting to actually experience what it is like to have um, a, particularly rye grass because rye, rye stripes so nicely. Like, it's crazy. Like, every time I watch um, watch the Masters every year, it's insane how how dark green and how beautiful that grass looks. And it would be interesting just to, to experience that one time. Not everything else that goes along with it, obviously. Not the cold weather, but just experience, like, the, the, the amazing stripe action you can get from, like, real mode... Uh, rye grass. But I appreciate you coming to hang out, sir. Always, uh, always fun to have you around. All right. Um, Amir uh, Irene says, uh, no say inglés. I think you're saying don't speak English. Um, sorry, I'm not going to be a ton of help. I can, I can, I can speak a little bit of Spanglish, but not enough to answer lawn care questions. Uh, but I appreciate you coming to hang out, um, Almir. Uh, all right. Uh, and then Alexander Thomas is kind of of the same opinion as me. He says, let it sleep or you might in increase spring dead spot if you're adding fertilizer now. Yeah, so that's that's the thing. Why, that's a big part of why like next weekend it's going to get its light app and then that's it. I'm calling it done because it you can increase um, problems as far as like spring dead spot. And here's the nasty thing about that, um, Alan. You're not going to see it until the spring, right? Like I had, uh, I'm trying to think, there's three big spots in my lawn where I had that. Um, thankfully only one of them was in the lawn where you could actually see it. The other ones were around the fringes because there are other lawns around here that have it too. Like the, the neighbor's lawn that you guys can't see, um, that falls off. Um, they had quite a few areas with that as well. Um, but, but yeah, I mean like back off on the fertilizer or no fertilizer, get your preventive fungicide down and, uh, and call it good. Thank you for chiming in, Alex. You're absolutely right. That's yet another reason to not go crazy heavy on, uh, on your fertilizer apps. All right, um, uh, Luis Rodriguez says, good evening, Ron. What's going on, Luis? I appreciate you coming coming to hang, in, hang out in the live stream. Appreciate it so much. And uh, he says, I'm glad I made it. Great content. Uh, thanks, sir. Thanks for coming in. Next up, Mr. Dalvin Larry. Now, Dalvin, you haven't been emailing me as much, man. You must be, uh, you must be uh, I think you're getting your lawn under control. Everything's doing better. So I know back for a while there, we were going back and forth quite a bit, but I think you got things, all the problems that we were talking about solved, it sounds like. Your comment is, I noticed that a lot of your vid videos, the distance of your sprayer tip is from the ground is when uh, when applying liquids. Is that to do with PSI or do you change it up depending on the product? Okay, gives a good question. So as far as how far I keep the tip um, away from the, from the ground. So a couple of different things. Um, if you look at the video when I was doing the herbicides, I tend to try and keep that the, the spray tip within two feet, you know, 18 inches to two feet um, of what I'm spraying. Mainly because I also don't want, I want to, you know, get the, the herbicide in the areas where I want it, but I don't want it to drift or go into areas where I don't want it. So that's that's the primary thing. When I'm putting down um, like my liquid for uh, turf plex or like the Miramichi Green Carbon Kit, when I'm doing those, um, it, it's the same thing. I mean, I still end up around two feet off the ground. And a lot of that is just, just to prevent like it from blowing all over the place, right? I want, I tend to do it early in the morning when there's not as much wind, but I tend to keep it as low to the ground as I can to still take advantage of, um, of the spray pass where I'm making le as less passes, but I don't want to go so, be so high off the ground that it's, you know, a lot of it's blowing away and, and moving all over the place. So, um, hopefully that helps. There's not like a, a, a magic other than a magic number other than I would say 18 to 24 inches is a good, um, is a good number or a good uh, gauge or range to go by. Um, and especially if you're doing herbicides, you want to make sure that you're putting it in the areas and on the things you're trying to treat, but not in other spots. So in those cases, you may even go a little bit lower. So you're really, you know, getting it, you're pretty um, concentrating just where you want uh, the herbicides to go. Great question. It's a good one, um, Dalvin. I have not had that one, uh, that one before. We got Blue Jay 3000 in the house. What's going on, Blue Jay? High fives to you. I'll give you three high fives too. Thanks for coming to hang out in the uh, in the live stream. And then uh, Alex says, hopefully not too much wa washed away. When I saw the storm in the forecast, I put a light amount of peat moss on top of the seed in some areas. So hopefully that mitigated the washout. Yeah, Alex. I mean, if you if you came out after the heavy rain and a lot of the peat moss was still was still there, then the seed is probably still there too, right? So if all the peat moss is gone, then yeah, we might have an issue. But um, again, I, I'm pretty sure you sent me a picture of your property. Um, and I'm, from what I remember, it's fairly flat, so you should be okay. You shouldn't have an issue with a lot of, um, a lot of runoff. And then Dalvin says, when are you dropping your coastal video? I know a guy who's waiting. Coming out soon, man. It's coming out soon. 
It's coming out very, very soon. Don't fear not. It's coming out soon. All right. Next up, we got um, uh, Dimitri uh, Mezzo Paula says, "Good evening. Is fall pre-emergent staggered with prodiamine and dithiopyr application recommended on on St. Augustine grass? I would just do prodiamine. I would just do prodiamine, um, um, Dimitri." Um, you don't necessarily need to, again, there's been a couple of questions on this as far as like doing two pre-emergence. Um, if you, if you apply prodiamine at the correct rate, if it's mixed properly, you apply it at the correct rate with the right nozzle and you water it in properly, um, you're going to get a good result. There's not really a need to stagger and, and add like multiple pre-emergence, um, to keep weeds out of your lawn. So hopefully, uh, that helps. All right. Uh, Brian, uh, Dugas is in the house. He says, Hey Ron, this is my third chance to join the live, the live version of the show. Welcome, Brian. I'm glad you made it for the third time. He's really enjoying it. I'm getting eaten up by mosquitoes here in Southern, uh, South Louisiana as I water in my prodiamine application. You're in South Louisiana, man. I mean, that's, that's just, that's just part of it, right? I mean, I, I, I could give you some options for, you know, reducing the amount of mosquitoes, but it's Southern, South Louisiana. It's going to be a thing. It's going to be a thing, but uh, I'm glad you're getting your prodiamine down. Also glad you're able to make it to the show and uh, and definitely let me know if I can help with um, with anything else. All right. Uh, next up, uh, Dwayne Hopkins says, hey, Ron, I hope you have a great week. I enjoyed your recent uh, video of the backpack spray review. Good video. Great video. Oh, yeah, yeah go, uh, Dwayne, I'm glad you enjoyed that. Um, you know, it's funny. People are very are super, super religious when it comes to their their lawn care products as far as like um you know, which sprayer you're using. Like I got, if you read the comment section, there's a lot of comments that I got saying, um, you know, well, this sprayer is just as good. And, and you know, I, this one costs like half the price and all this kind of stuff. Guys, I'm just, I'm just putting out information. I mean, it's, it's your, whatever sprayer you decide to use, it's very much a case of, um, it's the Indian, not the arrow. Like you can literally use a pump back, a pump backpack sprayer and get an amazing lawn. So it's just, you know, if you have a backpack sprayer, you're already ahead of the game, regardless of which one you got. As long as you've got it calibrated, you've got a good tip on it, you're using it properly, you're going to get a good result. So uh, I'm glad you enjoyed it, Dwayne. It was a fun video to make because, tell you what, man, the Yard Mastery Sprayer, I mean, um, it is, it literally is like a flow zone with tips, with the, with like the, the, the T-Jet tips included, and it's, it's less, less expensive. So I'm really excited about it. It's a really cool, um, you know, offering that, that Alan, that Alan and, the, and team have put together. I think if someone's in, in the market for like a premium backpack sprayer, again, there's there's a couple of tiers. Like you have the 150 to 200 dollar tier where you in that where you have like um like the Chapin and some of the other other brands um that have that are in that that price range. And you, and with that you get like ten typically lower pressures and um lower flow rates. You tend to be around like the half gallon per minute flow rate range within that price range. And then you move into the premium ones where you get into like the flow zone, um, the and the yard mastery sprayer where you get closer to a gallon per minute. I mean, the, the yard mastery sprayer, even though it's, it's, um, it's pressure, the pressure it runs at is lower, it outflows the flow zone at the higher rate, at least in my example. Like my flow zone, the flow zone two, um, puts out less um, than the yard mastery sprayer. So um, either one was getting a great result with though. If you got, if you got a uh, flow zone, you got an awesome sprayer. Just get some good tips for it and go to town. All right, uh, next up we got Thurston um, R saying, hey, Ron, what's going, what's going on? Thanks for going on. Come and hang out in the, uh, in the live stream, uh, Thurston. Appreciate you in the chat. And then um, next up, uh, Victor. Uh, Victor Stams has uh, another question, a, a question about um, irrigation systems. He says, uh, sorry, Ron, one more question. I'm planning an irrigation system um, in the spring, looking into Irrigreen. Ever heard of this? Thoughts? Um, no, I haven't. I think I've been asked that before and I haven't researched it. Cause again, I don't, I don't do a lot of, um, research into, into irrigation systems. Cause it's one of those things that once you have it, you have it. Um, what pray tell is the, oh yeah. Someone asked this before the digital sprinkler head, um, thing. Um, I, I don't know enough about it to really be able to speak on it. Um, uh, Victor, uh, you know, I, I hear the one thing I would say is this, is I can imagine that that type of system is going to be more expensive than like a traditional like hunter or rainbird system. Um, and you know, the one, the one concern I would have with something like that is if the sprinkler heads break or you, you damage them somehow, like the cost of replacement, like replacing a hunter sprinkler head or, or a rainbird is like, I mean, if you have someone do it for you, it's like 30 bucks, right? You do it yourself. It's a lot less than that. Um, so I, I might, I might wonder if the additional complexity and cost that you're incurring by putting in, um, you know, one of the, like, uh, I guess one of the, 
new next generation of, of irrigation if it's really worth it. But I mean, again, I've not used it, so I really can't speak to it. Um, I only have experience with like the traditional old school legacy irrigation that works pretty well for me. But uh, but yeah, if you if the reviews on it are good and you want to give it a go, uh, go for it, man. Definitely let us know how it works out. But I can't I can't tell you yay or nay whether or not I would recommend it um, because I just haven't used the um, I haven't used the product. I don't know anyone personally that's used those. I've seen some reviews on them, and the reviews I've seen on not the Irrigreen, but on other of the variable sprinkler heads, like the ones where you can kind of draw waypoints, and it will, um, it's like a variable, like how far it throws the water varies depending on like waypoints that you set up. Like the results on those have been kind of mixed. So this one might be the best, the best thing since sliced bread, but I, I've not um, seen a lot of really good reviews on them, mainly probably because the technology is so new. But uh, give it a shot and let us know how it, uh, how it works out. Okay, next up we got Thurston R says he completed his renovation 16 days ago with tall fescue and Kentucky bluegrass. I need to mow tomorrow. I have many bare spots. Would you still um, sprinkle a little more seed in those spots or leave it until uh, after the mow? Overall, the lawn is filling in. Yeah, I would do it after I mowed um, Thurston. So if you did it 16 days ago and the areas, there are, are some areas where you're getting good germination, the grass is starting to grow in nicely, and there's some areas that are lagging behind, um, go ahead and do your mow. And then after you're done mowing, then put down a little bit more seed in those problem spots. Um, and that I think that's gonna do better because you didn't say whether you're, you're not real mowing because you got tall fescues. You're gonna be using a rotary. Um, like rotary mowers have like a, um, like a vacuum, like a sucking effect to them. And the last thing you wanna do is put down like grass seed and then mow right over it and then have it get pulled and blown all over the place. So I would mow. And then if you wanna put down more seed in those problem spots, uh, that is when I would do it. And congrats on the renovation and on getting good germination. So you're doing something right, man. You know, it's always just those small little touch-ups you have to do sometimes, but that is, uh, that's completely, completely uh, normal. All right, um, Dwayne Hopkins says, hey Ron, I recently um, fertilized the lawn. And I noticed areas of the lawn that seem to have benefited more. Does this mean I didn't apply evenly or can parts of the lawn respond differently and may need more time? Uh, it's a combination of both. In most cases, it's you didn't do as an even an application um, as as you should have, especially if um, the lawn if it's, it's the first time it's happened. Like I'll tell you, like um, I have I, I, when I had a service doing my lawn like way back when. There was one time where you can tell they were just in a rush and literally you could walk out in the back lawn. I wish I'd taken pictures of it. You could literally see a dark, like an eight foot wide dark green stripe and then an eight foot wide, like, uh, you know, where it's lighter green, where they obviously like missed a past. Um, so that, like not putting down the fertilizer evenly or not lightly overlapping your passes can definitely cause the um, the type of issue that you're... Uh, that you're talking about, but I, and again, especially if during the summer months, I know we've been corresponding quite a bit, if over the summer, it all looks really good. So maybe this last app, you just didn't do it as, as an even job as you um, as you have in the past, and that's what's causing the color difference. Another thing, Dwayne, to keep in mind too, is um, we are going into, like our grass is starting to fall off. Like if you look at my lawn now, if again, go check out um, the YouTube stories. I posted some today, this morning, um, on after I do some video of the lawn, you'll see there's some areas of the lawn outside of the areas that are more that are where it's R15 that are just darker, a little bit darker, and then other areas because it's been the, the lawn is starting to go into dormancy. There's certain areas that are starting to fall off. So some of it could it could be a, a bad fertilizer app or an uneven fertilizer app, or it could also be that your lawn is just beginning to um, check out. You know, so I I wouldn't stress about it too much. I definitely would not go put more fertilizer down in those problem areas. Just uh, just let's write it out and see how it uh, how it does. All right, next up we got JC in the house um, saying um, the best part of, of my yard is Celebration Bermuda. That was a great sod from an athletic uh, field project. Yeah, man, um, the best part of my lawn is, is Celebration Bermuda. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's an awesome, awesome grass, a Bermuda grass type. It's probably my favorite. Um, no one around here really has it, but it's a, it's a great, great looking Bermuda grass, um, grass type. I almost, I really, I, again, I'm gonna say I'm, I'm I'm really seriously considering it, but if I were ever to do a renovation, uh, celebration is probably what I would go with. It's probably what I would end up using. But I think about how much work it would take to do that, like all the top dressing and carnage, and you know, you guys want to see a grown man cry, having them bring a sod cutter in to cut. Oh, it'd, it'd, be, it'd be horrible. I can't do it. Just thinking about it, I'm getting chills. All right, um, Thin Cut says, "Hey Ron, I'm wondering if you've named the zoysia plot. If not, I'd like to name it Frankie." So there's a couple of different um, um, names that have come up. We've get, I've gotten Karen, I've gotten Zoe, I've gotten the Duke, 
um, gotten Frankie. So what I'll probably do is I'll just probably I'll alternate. I've been calling it Karen a couple of times and I've gone out there, but I'll probably just roll through some of the name options that you guys have given me. So everybody feels like they've contributed and uh, you know, that way everyone is, um, everyone's happy. Everyone's happy. Actually, let me run down here, um, Thin Cut. There's another super chat that I got from Miss Goldie Mojica. Let me go and take care of that. Super chat. It says, uh, thank you so much, Goldie. It says, I just want to say thank you again. I have several questions, but I will ask you via email. One, I did not, um, one, I think I did not put down enough prodiamine, ran out, and did not know how fast I was supposed to walk, and I have short legs, little lady. Uh, yeah, yeah, Goldie um, Mojica, just send me an email. I know you and I have been talking back and forth. Just send me an email and... Um, like, let me know what, like, how much you mixed up, like, how much you used, and how much was left, and we'll we'll figure out what we need to do to um, to to get to get a good result, you know. So don't um, don't don't sweat it too much. Just just email me. I appreciate you coming to hang out, and I appreciate uh, the super chat. Thanks uh, so much, man. William, you're really upset tonight, man. You have to calm down. Take it easy, man. Take it easy. Don't worry. Be happy. All right. All right, and then Alex B's up next. It says, uh, to each their own, but I wouldn't I wouldn't put down pre-emergent anytime after seeding. I just overseeded a whole property, not using any pre-emergence now or early spring. And that's that is my that's my feelings on the matter. Um with Bermuda, you know, if you did uh if you if you seeded Bermuda, say in April, and you really, really, really want to put down um, pre-emergent this fall, you probably will be able to get away with it. With a cool season lawn, I wouldn't ch- I wouldn't do it. Like cool season grass. Um, you really want to give it a full season to establish nicely before you start um, hammering it hard um, with pre-emergence. And to, to Alex's point, um, you know, I just I just wouldn't do it because you think about it. Like, there's a cost of the seed, there's the cost of um, the watering, all your time, all the work you went you put into it. So you know, if you have to deal with a few weeds um, for part of this season, or you know, this this growing season, but you get the the grass that you want, the lawn that you want. Um, it's kind of a worthwhile trade. I mean, the best thing you could do then is just to, to really um, keep up with your with your mowing, like getting it like mowing your lawn regularly, getting a thick stand of grass. That also you know is like natural weed control. That does that allows the grass to outcompete the weeds for resources. So that's another thing you can consider doing too. In addition, in, instead of you know blasting a newly seeded lawn um, with pre-emergent. All right, um, uh, Thin Cut says um, odd question, sir. Uh, what gauge is your lawn level? I am thinking about making my my own and when I get my strength and flexibility back in my shoulder. Oh, what gauge steel? No idea. No idea. Um, it's an R&R products rig, so I'm not sure if they, they specify or they let people know um, what gauge, um, what well, how heavy the materials they use. Um, in their rakes, um, I will tell you, like I am of the opinion that you want to, you want it to be a little heavier, right? You want the weight of the rake to do a lot of the work. Um, Princess Cut Lawn Care did a really, really good video on um, on leveling rake on leveling rake uh, um, uh, that are, are commonly used like in the DIY community. I, th- I want to say in that video he weighed each one of them, like he weighed the heads of each of them, um, and he can tell you, and that might give you an idea, thin cut of what gauge steel. Um, to use whenever you decide you're going to make your leveling rig. So if you if you're handy, which I, you know, obviously you are, um, and you know like you know from a density standpoint how much of that material what it might weigh, check out um, George's video, Princess Cuts video, and based on that you can you can make your choice. But for me, I, I like a little bit heavier than lighter because that way literally you're just moving it around and the rake is doing a lot of the work of of planing the the, the top dressing mix in and getting a nice even result. So if that was your question, hopefully I answered it. If not, drop another one below and we will uh, we will revisit it. All right. And then Alex, kind of what I'm saying, says, yeah, I'll deal with weeds um, well into next season when the new uh, seed slash grass establishes and it's stronger. Yeah, that's that's my take on the matter. Like to put it, to put it in perspective for you, um, like this year, I didn't, this spring, I didn't put down any pre-emergent because I wanted to oversee with Arden 15. I wanted to see about getting um, more even coverage with it. Um and that worked as far as it growing in. It's definitely it's definitely beginning to fill in, and and it's still, still I still have a mutt lawn, but it's definitely filling in um, much more than it than it did in pre than it did last year. Uh, but what I I made the conscious decision not to do pre emergent because I really wanted to get as good germination as I could. The negative to that is I've had more crabgrass this year than I've ever had um, uh, in in any previous year. You know, in the in the previous year. So that's all part of it. You have to kind of decide what are your goals um, for this season. 
and you know what other what other things would you like to have that are compatible with those goals and unfortunately like seeding a lawn especially cool season grass and pre-emergent those two um don't don't go well together do not go well together all right um thurston r is back he's a question he says another quick question ron um, I get a free lawn application for my lawn service. My last soil test uh, back in the spring, pH was normal. Would you apply it anyway? Um, yes, yeah, so if they do lime, um, here's the thing. Most of the lawns around here in the fall also get lime. Um, it's just something that they do. Um, I'm not sure if it's like a, if it's just a, a Georgia thing, but a lot of the lawns in this area get lime as part of their of their service. So if they, if they normally do that, I would do it. Because what tends to happen, um, Thurston, is whenever you are putting in fertilizer over the season, so you're you're putting in, you know, you're fertilizing your lawn from spring all the way through now, like the salts that are in fertilizer tend to have an effect of lowering pH over time. So that's why typically what you find, at least on warm season grass, at least definitely around here, like a lot of these lawn care services, at some point they're gonna put down lime on lawns. Like and typically it's not a very light application. It's almost like a maintenance rate to to kind of to keep pH into the into its happy zone to keep it you know keep it keep everything copacetic so I would let them do it if whatever they whatever you're paying for um, let them do that because think about it also from this standpoint right like the lawn care services they don't only do they're not only doing your lawn they're doing a lot of lawns in the air they're doing you know hundreds some of them if they're big enough thousands of lawns um, so the program that they put together uh, assuming you're doing your part as far as keeping up with your mowing is going to produce a pretty good result. So if they think if if in your neighborhood they're doing lime on everyone else's lawns, um, you know you're probably going to be just fine. It's not gonna it's not gonna hurt anything. All right. Next up we have um, Mo D um, in the house. This is Hi Ron. I'm back. The weeds are unrelenting. They, they can be that way. He says, can I use a regular herbicide for current weeds and also a pre-emergent for fall? Yeah. So. You can use a post-emergent. So I think Modi in the past, we've, you, you've used Spectracide. I think if I remember you from previous um, live streams, that's what we've spoken about. So if you've, um, if you've not, um, yes, yeah, so if you, if you want to continue to do that, you can. But then also putting down pre-emergent, if you've not done that in the past, and it sounds like you didn't this past spring, that's going to do a lot to allow you to get ahead of the curve. So Whereas you're, you know, perhaps in the past, you've always been like, you're not done pre-emergence, so you're always like chasing weeds as they as they grow in the lawn. Putting down pre-emergent is gonna do a lot for preventing a lot of those weeds that you're dealing with from growing in the first place. So like, as I've said earlier in the live stream, um, you wanna do it twice a year. So one time is now, like in the fall, and then another time is in the spring, and the, 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 fall, the fall application, the one you do now is to prevent weeds like Poanua from um, being an issue in, in our warm season lawns. And then in the spring app is going to prevent um, things like spurge, crabgrass. It's going to do a lot for reducing the amount of those that you have to deal with um, when temperatures arise again in the spring and summer. So pre-emergent spring and fall will do a ton for, um, for for keeping weeds out of your lawn. But to answer your question, yeah, if you if you still have weeds, they're still actively growing. If you want to do like another spectricide app to knock them down, can absolutely do that um, without issue. Great, great question. I'm sorry you're dealing with it, man. I mean, it's not, not just you. It's also me, too. I've got weeds in my lawn, too, but I've, I've, I've mentally prepared myself that that was going to be a thing. So such, uh, such is life. All right. Charlie uh, James says, Southwest Florida, get you up here. Southwest Florida is all affected with leafy gray spot fungus on St. Augustine. What would be the best practice for, as a preventative me measure? Um, be careful with how much water you're applying on the lawn, Charlie, and also a fungicide. Like if you look at um, a pr good example. Uh, St. Augustine is one of those as one of those grasses that is more susceptible um, to fungus, particularly brown patch. Like I think um, Al, um, Alan uh, has been fighting with that on his lawn. You think about it; he has access to everything, right? He's got access to like the best pre-emergents, um, the you know, best fertilizers, and he actually and he knows what he's doing, right? But it's still in his case; he still has issues on his lawn occasionally with um, with with brown patch. Um, so the thing I would say is get down uh, fungicide. Um, if you can get down a zoxastrobin, that would be that would be a great option. There's, you can find that at your big box store, or if you want the one that I would recommend, um, there's a product called H Heritage G, which is strictly a zoxastrobin. But if you're willing to spend a little bit more and you want to put down two fungicides, so you have like two different mo um, modes of of, of modes of action, two different ways to to, to try and control um, fungus in your lawn, then you can go with Headway G. Um, and I will put links to both of those in the chat for you, um, Charlie. But I guess what, what I'm also trying to help you to appreciate is that it's not, um, fungus issues is not an uncommon thing in, um, in St. Augustine, 
Fungicide, limiting your limiting how much water you're putting on the lawn is, are things you can do to, to help reduce, reduce the amount of it that you have to deal with, unfortunately. But yeah, check out both those links. I've got also got videos um, on fungicide that I did earlier this year that explains the differences between them and which one you might want to use for what. So hopefully that helps. Um, if you have any other questions, let me know in the comments below. All right. Next up, we have Mr. Andrew77. He says, hey, Ron, do both Carbon Pro G and Essential G have some granular um, biospectrum? Um, and with winter fertilization, are root systems still active using any NBK at all after going dormant uh, for the winter? Okay, so does Carbon Pro G and Essential G have um, spectrum? So, so Carbon Pro G has a microbial package added to it. It does have um, the, essentially what's in biospectrum added to Carbon Pro G. Essential G does not have that added. So that's the difference. That's the difference between those two. Um, Essential G, um, though, has um, more compost in it, and it also has um, some silica and also some humate that Carbon Pro G does not have. So either one of them is going to work great, um, but that's that's the biggest um, difference difference between the two. Really, Carbon Pro G is really three things: it is biochar, um, compost, and a small amount and a small microbial package, and then Essential G is compost, biochar. Uh, humate and silica. I believe that's correct. I think those are the the, the, the things that make up um, essential G. Both awesome choices, both excellent options. And your question about um, are roots still active um, at all during the winter months? Yeah, I mean, the, the grass is still alive, um, but I mean, the amount of NPK, the amount of, of nutrient that they're using, in other words, the nutrient demands of the grass when it's dormant are nothing compared to when it's actively growing. So yeah, it's, you, you can put it to you this way. It's almost like... Um, Think of like whenever, think about like 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 um, um, animals that, that go dormant, that that hibernate, like bears and um, and snakes. Do they still need oxygen? Do they still need um, do they still need oxygen while they're hibernating? Yeah, they still breathe, but they don't they don't necessarily use nearly as much resources while they're hibernating as they do whenever they're actively out and about and hunting and killing stuff. Right. So it's the same thing with your grass. It's still it's, your grass does not go dead during dormancy. It's just using a like the the amount of nutrient that it's using compared to spring and summer. Um, slows down to a trickle. So hopefully that helps answer your question. Um, but it, it's not to the point where you need to actually feed it, Andrew, 77. So there's going to be plenty in, in your in your, um, in your your soil going into dormancy. Don't feel like you need to fertilize the lawn in the middle of winter um, to keep the grass alive. It'll be, just, it'll be just fine without it. All right, next up we have Corey uh, Binion in the house. He says, I have bad POA and not such problem in my Bermuda lawn. Which is better, prodiamine? or dimension. Well, if it's, if it's already a problem, um, uh, neither of those. Um, if it's already a problem, I would go with um, certainty. Certainty is a great, great option for both of those. Yeah, because certainty will kill POA and it will all, and it's amazing against um, sedges. So um, if you're looking for something to kill the stuff you've already got growing, which it sounds like you already you do, um, certainty is what I would um, would go with Corey. And then uh, if you haven't put down your pre-emergent as yet, still get that down anyway, because any you know any poa or other um, weeds that have not yet cruises and weeds that have not yet germinated, the pre-emergent will help with that. And I will put the link for this in the chat. Hopefully that will help you out. Let's see at Corey. And uh, there you go. So hopefully that that answers your question. So if there are, if there if the pose already up, which it sounds like it is, and the nut sedge is already there, which sounds like it is, uh, dimension and prodiamine not going to be a ton of help on that one. Use something like certainty. Great, great uh, question. All right, Mike Z is in the house. He says I plant a new grass seed in Labor Day on the whole backyard using a tiller. We added hay on top, but some spots aren't staying bald. Um, not sure what you, what you, what you, uh, what you mean, um, um, uh, Mike. So you're saying that, so you, you planted some grass seed, you laid some, some hay on top of it. Um, but the spots aren't staying bald. I'm not sure I, um, I understand, I understand the question. If you can like ask what your, um, okay. Oh, I see what you're saying further down here. <laughs> Stayed bald and the grass didn't grow. Okay. So, um, in the areas that didn't, the grass didn't take, just put down some more grass seed. It's not like, like seeding a lawn is not like, um, this is why I actually say sod is actually a better way to go, at least for warm season grass. Like seeding a lawn is not one of these things where you put grass seed down and you get you know automatically like even coverage all throughout the entire lawn. Everything grows in. I mean, granted, like people like Augusta National can pull that off. Um, 
Uh, but for your home lawn, you, what you, what you, what you, if you have areas that are not growing in, that are a little bit thin, simply re-add it. And you know, it'd be interesting to see what Augusta looks like um, prior to the Masters. You never really see video of it, but even with them, I'm sure there's probably areas that, you know, they, they put down the rye and it grows in beautifully. And there's some areas where they go over it again and maybe add a little bit more. I'm sure even with them, it's still, they still have to probably go and touch up some areas um, that don't grow in as well as others. Maybe I'm wrong, but it'd be interesting to, uh, to know that. We never, we never see Augusta other than when it's in its absolute glory, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, Mike, for in your case, I would um, just add some more grass to each of those thin areas that did not uh, did not grow in. And then uh, Charlie also gives another option here, says sedge hammer is another option for uh, set for sedges. That's a good option too as well, uh, Charlie. But yeah, um, but certainty is also good against post. That's why I said, you know, set like uh, certainty will, will smoke pretty much is really awesome against sedges and it's also really good against POA. So uh, give that a go and let us know how things um, how things work out. All right, let's see um, what other uh, questions we have here. Um, so Andrew77 says, Ron, any thoughts on the fescues with rhizomes that supposedly have been developed and are used, are being used now? I don't like the don't like fescue um, and the look of keeping grass that long, but curious what you thought about them. I don't know enough about those to be able to really comment on them. Um, on them, um, Andrew. I mean, I guess the idea with it with with creating fescues that ha that create runners is that um, it's it's a way to to thicken up the lawn. To, but I mean, I, I I would just keep looking at the research. Let some other people try it out on their grass first and see how it does before um, before you do it on your lawn. And really, in your case, um, having fescue, if you want the grass to be short, it, you have the wrong grass type. Like fescue is designed to be long. It's designed to be tall. Like mowing it short is, it's just not gonna look good doing that. You're, you're gonna cause, you know, you're gonna stress it. It's just not gonna, you're, you're cutting the grass incorrectly or you're, you're he said you're cutting it incorrectly, but you're you're not putting it, you're not running the grass at, at the height where it, that it's optimized for. Kind of like Bermuda. Can you grow Bermuda to be three inches or four inches tall? Yeah, I mean, there's people around here that do it, but it doesn't look good. It doesn't, it, it gets, tends to thin out and just looks like uh, like matted down dirty carpet. You know, it doesn't look very good when it's tall. So it's the same thing with fescue, it's designed to be taller. Like St. Augustine, designed to be tall. It's designed to be mowed tall. So if you don't like fescue um, and you, you know, you're somewhere where you have, where cool season grasses is, is the, the grass you should be running, consider doing a renovation and maybe going to rye or like a Kentucky bluegrass because those you can mow shorter and um, they'll, they'll still do fine at lower cutting heights. But like fescue is not one of those where um, mowing short is really going to be the, um, the way to go. All right, um, next up, um, DMAX says, I don't have a, a bag on my mower. Am I spreading weezers or is that a myth? Um, so is it a myth? Um, if you don't have weeds in your lawn, in other words, if your lawn is, if your lawn is weed free and you're mowing your lawn without a bagger, then no, you are not blasting weeds all over. You're not, you're not spreading weeds all over your lawn. If you have grass, if you have weeds that are growing and they're really tall and they have seed heads, so the weeds are producing like seed heads to where they're trying to make babies and then spread out and you run over those with a rotary mower, yeah, then, and you're, you're blowing, you're not bagging it. Yeah, you could, you could be spreading the, the weeds around the lawn in that case. Um, so it kind of depends on your lawn, DMAC. If your lawn is fairly clean, where you don't have, like, again, a lot of weed issues, um, no. Um, again, in my case, I really, I really recommend, if you can, um, doing what you're doing, like, like mowing your lawn without catching the clippings. I'm, I'm a fan of mulching um, uh, your lawn, mulching clippings ver more so than bagging them, mainly because um, it's like free fertilizer you're throwing away. I mean, you spend all that money on fertilizer and all the other things you put into the, into the soil to great, create great grass, um, and you know, if you are mowing regularly, you know, why would you take all that grass, all that, that great organic material and then throw it out? It's like, you're literally removing nutrient from your, um, from the soil, you know? So I, I am a big fan of, of mulching, um, where, where you, whenever possible. And is, if you're spreading weeds a lot around, it, it all depends on your, uh, on your lawn. If you're weed free, no, like I, my lawn for the most part, doesn't have a ton of weeds in it. It's got more weeds than it normally does, but for the most part, not a, not a ton of weeds. Am I spreading like you know crabgrass and a bunch of stuff around when I mow without a uh, the catcher on? Not really, not really. Or I, I have not seen that. Hopefully, uh, hopefully that helps. Great, uh, great question. But the big thing, man, is just get out there and mow. The more you mow, the better your lawn's gonna look. Uh, what's going on, Blue Jay? So I'll give you three thumbs up. You gave me three high fives first. So I'll give you. I'll respond. I'll see your your thumbs up with three thumbs up. Thanks for uh, for coming. And you should ask a question if you have a question. But if you just want to hang out. And, Throw up emojis. Uh, that's okay too. I'm good with that. I'm good with that. And guys, while I take a sip of my lemonade, I'm taking a break here. I'm taking a small sip of my lemonade. If you guys wouldn't mind touching that like button 
ever so gently. It's free for you guys to do. It's a great way to support the channel, sends great vibes to the algorithm and gets more people to come hang out with us. So if you guys wouldn't mind do that, I'd really, really appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Great stuff. All right. Next up, we have Troy Ridley in the house. He says, hey, Ron, the grass stopped growing for a week. Is this a good timing to set up for putting down pre-emergent when the grass stops? Central Texas Bermuda. Um, yeah, so if the Bermuda is beginning to slow down, um, yeah, I mean, here's the thing. September is the month, that time frame you're entering the window when you can put down pre-emergent, um, Troy. So kind of like what you're seeing, like my lawn has started slowing down. Uh, Alex's lawn has slowed down. All the lawns around here have slowed down as far as how quickly they're growing. So if you are looking to put pre-emergent down, my rule of thumb or my, my feelings on the matter is a little bit early is better than a little bit late if you're trying to do your, your best to prevent as many weeds from germinating as possible. So a little bit early, better than a little bit late. Uh, so yes, you absolutely are within the window. And then De, uh, Demir91 is chiming in. He says, part one of two. He says, uh, you'd love perennial rye, Ron. We just built and opened a second course last year and it's wall-to-wall -wall rye minus the bent grass greens. Been going back and forth with overseeding my yard at home, which is an awesome stand of some high-end uh, bluegrass vari uh, varieties, but the rye, gr the rye grass is awesome. Um, and I can't decide if I want to mix uh, some in for that fine texture look. I don't know, man. I mean, I mean, you you obviously know what you're doing, right? I mean, you're running you're running a golf course, so um, so I mean, e either way, I'm sure it look, looks great. But here's the thing, Demir, you said it looks awesome. This this post is no good without pictures. So I'm gonna have to hit you up on Instagram. You have to send me some pictures of the lawn. Um, so I can, I can take a look at it. Actually, it might be a bad idea because everyone keeps trying to get me to overseed my lawn with ryegrass. And, you know, I, I, it's probably something I'm not going to do because I don't have to get out there and mow. Um, but I don't know. It'd be interesting to see what your lawn looks like with the, um, that, it's your high end KBG, um, how nice that's looking. You know, we'll see. If I were to ever do it, I'm not saying I am. This is not admission. This is not, I'm not committing to anything by saying this. If I were to do it, and that's a huge if, it would probably be only the front lawn. Just the front lawn and maybe the vanity strip area. That'd be that'd be it. I'm, I'm definitely not doing the back lawn, so uh, I don't know. Probably not, but we'll uh, we'll see. We'll see. I'll, I'll look out for those pictures though. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, Vertigo is still remembering from the from a couple of weeks ago. He says, "I'm an exchange resident." Just kidding. He <laughs> uh, says, "I can't watch the stream tonight. I'll listen to it uh, during the week as I resod my 10,000 square foot backyard." Yikes! That's a huge project, man. This is your live stream, our great motivation tool. Thanks. You're very, very welcome, Vertigo. Um, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a big project. Definitely let us know when you pop in. When are you doing it? You said, uh, I guess, next week? Um, whenever you're doing your, whenever you get done with the project, next time you come in the live stream, I'll let us know how it goes. And if you want, if you, it's up to you. If you want, send me a picture of it and I'll show everyone on the live stream so you can see your work. This is my email address, ron at golfcourselon.com. Send me a picture of, of the um, of the resod and we can show everyone what, what 10,000 square feet of resodded, uh, resodded the grass looks like. So we can go. And then Brick Rehab says, yeah, I thought it was Karen. It is Karen, but I'm just saying, man, there's, Zoe's not a bad name. You know, the Duke's not a bad name for uh, for for Zoisha. You know, I'll, I mean, the Duke sounds a little bit too authoritative. I don't want to, I don't want to make, you know, Leroy feel too bad. So maybe Karen. I think Karen is probably the one that's going to stick. All right, um, Saul Lopez says, hey, I'm a big fan of you. I need some um, need need some back on, on some of my lawns and I'm trying to grow grass in, but unfortunately it dies. Um, what is it you need um, in the back of your lawns, uh, Saul? I, I, don't, I don't understand the question, but if you, if you um, like do a follow-up down below, I'll, uh, I'll answer it, but I'm not, um, I'm not getting what you're, uh, what you're, uh, you're asking in the show, but just, just answer it and I'll do my best to, uh, to help you out. All right, next up we got Rashad Simpson. What's going on, Rashad? It says, hey, Ron, new listener, and I'm glad to pick your brain a bit. Oh, oh here we go. He says, I'm here in uh, Stone Mountain, and I've been trying to grow grass over a spot where I had to remove a tree. No luck. Any suggestions? Okay, so um, what I would say is the, the area where the tree was, so you have, I guess, a big ball spot now where the tree used to be. Um, if you can plug that area, I'm not sure what you've been trying to do to grow it. Um, if you've been just trying to put down grass seed, you know, unless you've been unless you've been really diligent about watering and everything else to try and get the do everything you have to do to get the stars to align to get the grass seed to grow in nicely, because seeding Bermuda is not not an easy uh, not an easy proposition. Um, that could be part of your issue. But what I would do, Rashad, is um, I would plug it. If you want to have the best chance of having the area where the where the tree used to be, 
match the rest of your lawn. Um, getting a plugger, like getting one of those those pro pluggers and getting some pulling some plugs out of the strong areas of your lawn and transferring that to the area where the tree used to be is is probably going to produce the best result. Because I'll tell you, I've seen. Um, my lawn's a perfect example of it. Like I've had a couple of areas that um, where the sod has, been, has had to been replaced. Uh, and even though the sod that I got was supposedly Tiffway 419, it doesn't match the Tiffway 419 that was on my lawn when it was when it was put in. So even among the same grass type, the same cultivar, you can have um, differences in color. So if you want to make sure it's gonna match, um, I would get a plugger. So the tool you'll wanna get is a, look up Google Pro Plugger Google Pro Plugger, and there's there's a couple of different places that sell them, but get one of those, and that that and you're going to transport plugs from the area that are where your lawn is doing great to the areas where um you, where you had the tree. That would be um that'd be my uh, my suggestion. Great great question. Hopefully that helps. Hope that does the job. All right, next up we got uh, JK in the house. It says um, spray prodiamine and ran irrigation the next morning. Unfortunately, later that day the skies opened up and we got close to two inches of rain. Did my prodiam did my pre emergent run off? Highly unlikely, JK. The rain likely only helped things. Likely only helped things. I mean, you know, two inches of rain is that's that's awesome. I mean, I think prodiamine calls for what half an inch, half an inch of water to um to to get it down um into the soil, but two inches even better. And, and again, unless you're Unless your lawn is like you live on the side of a mountain where you know any kind of water creates like a ton of a ton of runoff, you probably didn't lose as much prodiamine as you think. Like I, I had a viewer that did the granular, not even the liquid, the granular, which is you're more likely to lose that than you are the liquid. Um, that did the granular prodiamine in the spring had a heavy rainfall and was worried about losing it. I had him go out and take pictures and like all along the curb, and there was no like big pools of yellow all piled up, which would be indicative of like the prodiamine running down. He had no, he didn't lose any of it. So I, I wouldn't worry about it. The rain, the rain is only helping to get it down into the soil where it can really work well. So um, don't, don't worry about it. I think you are in, uh, you're in good shape. All right, uh, Thin Cut says, uh, you did answer my question, thank you. I watched George's vid on rakes. I will go back and rewatch to get the weights. Thanks for all your information. Yeah, no problem at all, Thin Cut. I wanna say the weights of the of the heads were around, of the heaviest one is something like eight pounds, eight pounds or nine pounds, something like that. Um, don't quote me on that, just go, go watch his videos. I know he did weigh um, each of the heads um, and then you can just use that as, a, um, as an option. All right. Next up, we got here. Shamari McGee says, "Is Scott's fertilizer the is Scott fertilizer the best?" Um, people, some people get really good results with it. Um, I don't, you know, is it is it a is it as good as a lot of the commercial grade fertilizers out there? No. Um, but is it? Can you get a good result, a great looking lawn using Scott's per, fertilizer or their program? Yeah, you can. There's people that just that go with the Scott's program and they get great looking grass. So it's not like you have to use. Um, you know, a, um, a high-end fertilizer, but what, what you get with, um, a good example, what you get with um, something like Humic Max, right? So if you take a look at this, what you get with something like Humic Max versus like a Scott's fertilizer is one, if you look at the prill size, if you look how small that is, each of those are about maybe a little bigger than um, a needle head, right? So you get a finer prill, and why is that important? That's, that's important because as you, if you're cutting your lawn, your grass low, right? Or you're, you're real mowing it and the turf gets pretty, gets very dense. What can happen is uh, a bigger prill, like the bigger little nuggets, that's the name of the little, little fertilizer nuggets. Um, if they're really big, like most of the Scott's fertilizers or most of like the big box or fertilizers are, those getting, getting those like past the canopy and into the soil, they just tend to not, not like um, get down as well. So that's, that's, the, that's the, one of the biggest reasons why I'm not a big fan of those. And in addition to, um, the, uh, the additives that are in Scott's fertilizers compared to something like Humic Max, where in this you have almost 9% um, almost humic acid in addition, to, um, in addition to, to quick release nitrogen. I mean, it's a, it's, just, it's, it's a different class of fertilizer. But to answer your question, Scott's fertilizers are not bad. They are definitely not the best fertilizer you can, you can buy, but um, I don't want you to feel like you can't get a good result using them. Um, but there are definitely better options. Like again, Humic Max, the, 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 the stuff from like anything from Lebanon Turf, is going to be um, is going to be really good. There's other other companies that make a great fertilizer too. The one I'm talking about is this one, um, Shamari. So if you go to Golf Course Lawn um, dot the store, the Golf Course Lawn store, Humic Max is uh, this. It's a 1608. 
it's available in all the states because it doesn't have any it doesn't have any phosphorus in it. But this is this is the fertilizer that I use on my lawn, um, and have got I've gotten awesome results with it. A lot of my viewers that use it have gotten good results with it. I, I again, it might happen tomorrow, so I might be jinxing myself. But I don't have I have not had a viewer come back to me yet and say, hey, I tried Humic Max on my lawn and it doesn't it didn't work incredible. So. Um, so yeah, hopefully that helps, um, helps answer your question. So I, I, I prefer the professional, more professional grade ferts, but you can get a good result with, um, with Scott's fertilizer. If that's what you decide you want to use on your lawn. Um, Opal Pearl says, what are your thoughts on humic acid? I think it has value. I think it has value like any other organic material, um, that you put down in your, in your soil. I mean, I think there's, there's, there's definitely, um, merits to it. Just like, I think there's merits to, um, biochar. Just like I think there's merits to um, liquid carbon. Uh, I think there are merits to, to a lot of those things. So yeah, I think it, it adds a lot of value and um, it definitely is not going to hurt um, hurt the quality of your soil, not gonna hurt um, the microbial activity in your soil. So that's why I'm a, I'm a huge fan of it, um, Opal Pearl. Great, great question. All right, um, next up, um, JK is here. It says, hey, I sprayed my first app of Eagle 20 EW. Uh, yesterday and plan another app 14 days now as a preventative measure for spring uh, dead spot. Anything else you'd recommend? Um, I would, um, if you're still fertilizing your lawn heavily, I would stop doing that. I would, I would back off as soon as the lawn begins going into dormancy, like we're starting to see here in Georgia. I, I'm not sure if you're in the Georgia area, but if you are, um, back off like how much nitrogen you're putting into the lawn because that can also contribute to uh, to spring dead spot as well. So, you know, we've had our fun. The lawn was awesome during the spring, awesome during the summer. It still looks great during the fall, but it's time to start, you know, um, limiting how much N we're putting into the grass because that's or into the soil because that's going to that is something else you can do in addition to um, to fungicides to help prevent um, issues with spring dead spot. You are very, very welcome, Charlie. Uh, James, thanks for coming to hang out. I'm glad I was able to help you out with the answer to your question. And then we have Mr. Ruben uh, Gonzalez, um, served in Operation Iraqi Freedom. Appreciate your service. Thank you for your service, sir. He says, uh, hey, Ron, I had a question on pre-emergent, but it seems that everyone got the same issue. I already got the information I needed. Thanks. I'm glad. This, I should have like uh, labeled this the pre-emergent um, pre live stream. I've been, I've been playing around with different um, thumbnails on the live stream. It tends to be, and, it, and, it seems, and I think what I found uh, to be true is the case. Like whenever I use my cu like a custom thumbnail where I am like, um, uh, having having the thumbnail reflect the talking points I'm going to talk about, um, it tends to do a bit better. But yeah, but anyway, to, add, to answer your question, um, I'm glad that you got the, you got the question on pre-emergent has been answered, that you're good to go, um, and be sure to get it down. Remember, when it comes to pre-emergent, a little bit early is better than late. Better than late. All right, next up, we got Alex B says, Ron, what do you recommend for... Um, Ants in the lawn. Not any now, but I tend to get a, a deal, a great deal of them in the early spring. Anything as effective and long lasting for ants as a celeprin is for grubs? Not really. Um, probably the, the, the product I like best for ants is um, a product from Syngenta called Advion Fire Ant Bait. That stuff is the bee's knees. I discovered it. Where did I learn about that? I learned about that from um, Lawn Care Life from Jason Creel. Um, channel like he did I think he did a video on that like years ago um, and I learned about that and I, and I tried it out on my lawn and it it works really well like literally I'll do an application of that in the spring and then like um, summertime I'll do another one and then you know I, I do I do really it does a really good job of keeping ants out of um, out of the lawn is it as good as a celeprin um, no not really but as far as like a, a good granular product that you can use um, I would I would highly highly recommend let me see if I can actually show you what uh, I'm talking about here. It comes in. Um, it comes in a in a little jug. Yep, here we go. It looks like it looks like this. So this is the one that I go with, Alex B. There you go. So like a a, four, a two pound jug is more than enough. A two pound jug on my lawn. I put it, put it this way. I have a two pound jug that I had from last year, and I did my lawn and Alex's lawn, and there's still plenty left over to where I'll probably be able to go into even the spring with that same two pound jug. So I've got, I've got plenty of it. Um, you know, it, one, one jug goes a long way. Um, granted, you have a pretty big property, so you may need to go bigger, but um, start with that two pound jug and, and see how that, um, how that works out for you. Yeah, Advion Fire Ant Bait, that is what I like to use. There's also the stuff you can get from like Orthene, um, but that's more of like a spot treatment type thing. Um, I, I prefer like for something across the entire lawn, um, Advion is more is more my jam. That is what I would like to go with. All right. 
Uh, and then T. Bennett says, I live in Augusta. It's still solid. So your lawn still looks good in Augusta. That's cool. Good to hear, Todd. Um, I assume it's Todd. I, 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 I used to know a Todd Bennett. I used to fly like RC helicopters. So anytime I see T. Bennett, I always think Todd. I'm not sure if your first name is Todd or not, but that's what I was thinking of anytime I see a T. Bennett. All right, uh, next up we got Rashad. He says, is it too late to overseed here in Stone Mountain uh, Bermuda grass? Oh yeah, so if you're trying, depends what you're asking um, Rashad, if you're talking about overseeding your Bermuda grass with rye, because you want to have, or try and keep the grass uh, green all throughout the season, then uh, no, I mean, you want you want to get it, if you're gonna do it, do it. Like we're getting, you know, earlier this month, so early, the beginning of September would have been better to um, to start your overseeding, but you can still, you can still do that and, and, and probably get a pretty good result with it. Um, but as far as you're talking about like warm season grass seeding, no, it's, it's way too late in the season for doing that. I would not do that. I would not do that. I would use, um, I would, if you're doing cool season, yes. If you are, um, and actually you were the one that just mentioned, had the question about, um, I think about the tree, right? So yeah, if you're trying to correct the issue where the tree used to be, don't use seed as, I would not use seed as a way, as a method for doing that. I would use the plugger. Like I was, um, like I was telling you earlier. So hopefully, uh, that helps. All right, um, next up we got um, uh, Mark Houston in the uh, in the house. He says, hey Ron, I live in Eastern North Carolina. I seeded zoysia in early June. Thinking about uh, not putting pre-emergent down until January, it's an option. It says probably, um, probably approximately 15% weed competition. Should I use a herbicide in, instead? I would be more prone to do that, um, Mark, instead of doing pre-emergent. Um, uh, you didn't say how well the grass is established since June. Um, I, I, could, I know how my zoysia plots are doing. It's finally now starting to look good um, to where if it were in the lawn, I would not feel bad about spraying a post-emergent herbicide on it to kill weeds. So yeah, uh, I think what you're saying, what you're, you're um, planning is, is a good idea, a good strategy. I would use a post-emergent against the weeds and wait till um, in the spring to do your pre-emergent. Just realize that you are going to deal with more weeds next spring because you didn't get a fall pre-emergent down, but... You got your zoysia lawn, right? So we got to kind of pick the thing that's most important to us. All right, next up, we got JK in the house. He says, looking at improving drainage in the backyard. Any thoughts on adding rain barrels at downspots to around, to avoid runoff? I think it's a good idea. I, um, I'll tell you, one of the best things I did in the off season JK this year uh, was um, putting some drainage from the spouts that come off the back lawn and also off the front lawn. There's a, um, and I'll, I'll, next time I go out and I do a YouTube story, I'll show you guys where it is. Uh, there was an area in the front where like anytime it rained, like water for the whole front part of the roof collected and it literally would, you see like a small river running through the front lawn. And that was bad for a couple of reasons. One, it was causing like a, a it was wearing that area. Like you can actually, it was actually causing like a, a very mild channel. I mean, I can see it. You guys probably don't notice it when you look at the lawn, but it was it was creating like excessive wear in that area. And then whenever I top dressed, it was always a nightmare because if I got any kind of rain, any amount of rain, like the sand would just get pushed down. This year, after doing that drainage, I got rain, um, like it was like six inches of rain over, over the course of like two or three days right after top dressing. I didn't lose any sand. I didn't have any problems whatsoever. So yes, to answer your question, um, yeah, if not barrels, doing something to divert the water to where it's not all spilling into like into the lawn, into an area in the lawn and creating um, on issues is a good idea. Like literally it's one of the best things I did um, this season. And I didn't do barrels. I went with the, um, like that flex tubing, that flex drainage you can get at Home Depot. I got some of that and uh, and just, you know, Alex and I got out there in an hour or so. We did both areas and we're good to go. So yes, I, I would absolutely do that. And then Left Tool, <laughs> Left Tool says, I got into the lawn for chicks. It's, I mean, you know, women do women do uh, do dig a nice lawn. They do, you know, they don't like how much time we spend out there, but they do like a nice lawn. So I, I get it, Left Tool, I get it. How, how's it working out for you? Is it, is it, um, is, are you getting a lots of, um, Lots of pastors by, you know, stopping and saying, sir, how do you get your grass to look this good? Is that happening? You gotta let me know, man. You gotta let us know how well that would work. All right, uh, I appreciate you coming to hang out, sir. I know you guys are always um, busy making content and and I always appreciate it when other YouTubers come and hang out in the, in the live stream. So thanks for that. All right, uh, Mr. William Wade says, any pointers for keeping my lawn green in Wisconsin as it gets super cold? Um, I So, Fertilize it according to soil test results. So if you've not if you've not done a soil test, um, William, I would do that and then fertilize your lawn accordingly and then mow it regularly. And then when it gets to be like crazy cold, like super cold where the grass begins to go dormant or starts to check out, that's just kind of kind of par for the course. You know, the grass is just doing what it does. Kind of like Bermuda. Like I would, would I like Bermuda to be 
green year round? Probably not, because I'd have to mow it year round. But if I if it could be, in other words, if I could have it green now, from now until spring, but I didn't have to mow it, then I'd, I'd be all for that. But that's just not the way the grass works, right? It goes, like everything in life, it goes through cycles. Uh, so between now and then, between now and the winter, when winter freeze hits or you start getting snow on the ground, um, you know, if you've not gotten a soil test done, you want to know, like, to really optimize your fertilizer applications, get one of these. Um, soil test that I recommend from my soil. It's a great uh, soil test kit, really easy to use. Fertilize accordingly, and then just mow your lawn. One of the best things you can do to keep your lawn healthy and green is to mow it regularly. You know, the, a big part of why golf courses look so awesome, in addition to the fact they have huge budgets to spend on water and fertilizer and, you know, people that, that, that literally their entire job is to keep the grass looking great, is that they mow the lawns a lot. They mow, they mow the fairways, they mow the greens, they, they religiously mow the grass. So, and that's a huge part of, um, of having great looking, great looking turf. So hopefully that, um, hopefully that helps. And then Green M says, uh, at Left Tool, chicks dig a green lawn. So there you go, Left Tool. You, uh, you see, you got, you got someone agreeing with you on that one. All right, two shots of vodka says, Ron, what's the plan? When's the plan to drop pre-emergent? Are we waiting for the soil temperature to get to a certain point? I'm gonna be doing, here's the thing, guys. Um, if you're only doing prodiamine, get your pre-emergent down now. Like, just go ahead and do it. Um, the reason why I'm waiting a little bit later is because the pre-emergent that I'm using, um, which is which is the actual pre-emergent aspect of it is prodiamine, it also has two post-emergents in it as well. So Coastal um, has um, some simazine and a mazaquin in it. So that should knock out any poe that's germinated between you know late late summer and now. So that's that. So what I'm saying is, unless you're going to be using Coastal, um, which it's going to be kind of limited, where, uh, like people are going to be able to use that because it's not available in, in, a, in a bunch of different states. You really want to just go with something like Prodiamine or um, or Dithiopyr. So just something to to keep in mind. So you're you're good to go. You're well in the win in the window of applying pre-emergent. Um, get it down now. If if Prodiamine strictly is that what you're if that's what you're going with. Uh, great, great question. All right, um, Opal Pearl says, I have a patch of zoysia in the middle of my lawn. The rest is a combination of fescue, Kentucky, and rye. What is the most efficient way to eliminate the zoysia? Hmm. Um, I mean, you could you could spray a post-emergent on it, uh, post-emergent herbicide on it that's bad for zoysia. I, I imagine like something like um, tenacity is gonna is gonna do is gonna hurt the zoysia pretty pretty hard. So, because everything else that you have, it sounds like you want to keep. So you have the fescue, the rye, and um, the KBG, you want to hang on to those. So um, if we want to spray out, if you want to, to knock the zoysia back, spraying um, a post-emergent a post, a post -emergent, a post -emergent herbicide that is safe for the cool season grass, but will, will hurt the, um, the zoysia is what we'd want to do. So something like tenacity um, could, be a good, could be a good option. Um, I guess one question I have for you, oh, Paul Pearl, is it just literally a patch or is it, is it, um, and is it woven in with everything else? In other words, do you have like a zoysia, like a one spot that's just strictly zoysia or is it like woven in with the KBG, the rye and the, um, and the fescue? Cause what, what we could, what I'm, the reason why I'm getting to that is if it's just that area where you don't have like anything else, like you just have an area that's just strictly zoysia and you're really trying to get rid of it. So, you know, what, what I'm getting to is you could, you, if you're going to be very, very careful to limit where you're spraying it. You could use like a non-selective grass killer, something like glyphosate or along those lines, ranger or something like that, to kill off the zoysia, and then you could seed your Kentucky bluegrass, uh, your, your 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 rye fescue, like a blend, to get it to, to to come in. So that's an option too. It just depends on what you're trying to accomplish this season, um, as far as as far as the lawn goes, and how how hardcore you really want to go. Hope that. Hope that helps. We got Mr. Josh Habib in the house. What's going on, Josh? Are you not out camping this weekend? You're always out camping, man, for the live stream. Super chat. Proceed. He says, happy Friday, bud. Creeping up on 30K subs. Big congrats. Well deserved. Hope you're doing well. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, yeah, yeah, man. The channel is growing. Um, really happy with all the love and support and a lot of it from you, man. A lot of the cool stuff that I've been able to give away uh, and my cool, my cool cup, the official, the Ron Henry cup, the official live stream cup is courtesy of Mr. Josh Habib. He gave this to me as a gift. So thank you so much, Josh, for all the support uh, over, uh, this season. Really do appreciate it, man. Uh, upward and onward, right? Just got to keep going. All right. So we have, um, Andrew 77. He says, um, thanks Ron. Thanks for the info run. I do have a Kentucky bluegrass and, um, perennial ryegrass, um, hybrid line in New Jersey. I don't like or use fescue. Was just curious, uh, what you thought about the rhizome fescue varieties coming out of late. I don't really have an opinion on that. Um, uh, again, largely because 
I don't I don't do a ton of research on cools on like the new cool season grass hotness coming out because I don't have cool season grass. Like literally, I've got like one area, one little plot that used to be cool season that the Bermuda took over. And I'm about to have another one, thanks to Mr. Connor Souls. I'm about to have some Kentucky bluegrass, guys. So uh, so pray for me. We'll see. Hopefully I don't fall in love with it too much before I should decide to do something crazy in the front lawn, right? We shall see. All right. Um, uh, LG's giving left tools a hard time saying how'd that work out for you? All right, next up we got uh, B. Bailey in the house. There's a question, it says, good evening. Does the black I'm seeing on my soil in the backyard mean I have a fungus due to standing water? I think I missed your response, great channel. Um, so B. Bailey, if you, if the, the, like the big, if you're talking about like moss, like heavy moss um, or algae that is forming on the lawn, um, if it's areas where you have, yeah, if you have standing water, that's definitely gonna be a thing. So there are things you can, there are products you can apply that will eliminate it. Um, but really the, w the real way to fix it is to fix the drainage problem that is causing you to have standing water. Does that make sense? Like I could tell you to go out and get like um, like Moss X or some other some other product that will um, that can target moss and other and other you know issues, other problems that you tend to reside tend to result from standing water. Um, but next time you get a heavy rain, it's just going to flood that area and it's going to sit for a day or two, and you're going to be right back where you started. So, I would highly highly recommend looking into ways um, of of somehow like recontouring the lawn or um, putting in like a catch basin or doing something to get water out of that area to where it doesn't just sit there and stand. Does it make sense? Because otherwise you're just going to be treating the symptoms all the time um, when we could just fix the root cause and then it's just, then you're not going to have to deal with it anymore. So hopefully that helps uh, answer your question. Sorry you're dealing with that. That absolutely stings. I know like having algae or moss issues is not fun, um, but you know, if, you, if you've already identified the issue and if you can address that, you should be good to go. Should be good to go. <laughs> I love tools like you got this. <laughs> uh, yep. And then Brick, Brick, see, I've, see, got, I've got people, all the people chiming in saying, don't do it. Don't do it. No, no overseeding. So I've got, I've got to continue saying don't overseed the lawn. And I, I, Brick Rehab, highly unlikely to happen. Highly, highly unlikely to happen because more than anything else, I don't want to have to get up there and mow it because I'm not going to overseed it and have the lawn grow in and then have it turn into like a big forest and stuff. I'm just not, I'm, I, and I don't want to, and the big thing is, I don't also don't want to have to, to spray it out in the spring. You know, I don't want to like do anything that's going to hurt my precious Bermuda come springtime. So for those reasons, it's probably not going to happen. I'll leave it to you guys to do that. All right, uh, uh, Andrew just has a comment, not really a question. He says, my yard was seeded in June. Can I put down pre-emergent this fall or do I need to wait till spring? Northeast Indiana, 50-50 bluegrass rye. I would wait, Andrew. I would wait. I would wait. I would not, I wouldn't take the chance because you, you obviously put a lot of time and money um, into getting your, uh, your KBG down and getting it to grow in nicely. I wouldn't chance it um, by putting down pre-emergent. Now, here's the thing. Here's the negative to that. You are gonna have more weeds in your lawn over the winter and into the spring, but um, you know then we can take care of that. You can use you can use post-emergent herbicides to get rid of those, um, and that is that is what I would do versus taking the chance of damaging you know the lawn that you probably put a lot of time and money um, into growing. I really I wouldn't. It's not worth it to me. I wouldn't risk it um, if it were me. All right, next up, we got Mr. LG with a super chat, trying to get me to drink some lemonade. Super chat received. He said, I missed a 7 p.m. sip, so take another. I'm gonna take one, two, cheers. O'Doyle Ruse. Isn't O'Doyle like the, um, the is that the alcohol-free? Isn't that O'Doyle? O'Doyle or O'Doyle? I don't know. I know O'Doyle's, I think, is like a is like an uh, alcohol-free beer, but I'm not sure what O'Doyle is. I'm sure, now I'm about to get a bunch of hate in the comment bank. You have never heard of O'Doyle? It's like the best thing ever. But I'm just having a lemonade mixed with water. Milo's lemonade at that I'm for the premium stuff, man. The premium go juice. All right. Our next question. Let's see what we have here. Uh, Mauricio Salinas says, he says, good, um, Ron, good evening. Uh, thanks for the live session. You're very, very welcome, sir. Thanks for coming to hang out. Uh, I have a Bermuda lawn Arden 15 that I seeded last year. Very, very cool. Developing, uh, dealing with some fungus problems. I applied Headway G last Sunday. Could I... Um, do a second application in 30 days. Yes, yes, you can. In 30 days, you can do a follow-up app. It'd be interesting to know, um, Mar uh, Mauricio, what um, what fungus issues are you dealing with? Are you having? Um, but yes, to answer your question, yes, you can. You can. Um, 28 days later, per the label, you can do a follow-up application of the fungicide. No, uh, no problem at all. So yeah, if you can, just let me know. Let me know. Just, just, just curious to know what fungus problem you were dealing with. Um, in 
in the Arden 15. In the Arden 15. All right, next up, we got Brian Bales. He says, terrible run of Doveweed this year. What would you recommend to get rid of uh, rid of it and prevent it? Okay, so Brian, if you have warm shoes and grass, um, Spectracide will work against Doveweed. Um, I believe Celsius will as well, but I, I, Spectracide should do, should do the trick. So let me get this to come up here, see if I can show you. All right, so this product is what I'm talking about. This guy will treat uh, dove weed. May take more than one application. It's kind of, that's kind of a you know a pretty stubborn one, but this um, should do the trick. Be sure to read the label and make sure it's safe for your grass type. You didn't tell me what kind of grass you have, but um, something in the spectricide family is a is an economical way of getting what I think is a pretty good combination um, herbicide um, that should take care of dove weed and is also not going to break the bank in the process. So. That's an option that you can can absolutely go with. Can absolutely go with. So hopefully that helps. Um, if you have any other questions, let me know. Let me know. All right. Now see, here we go. I just I don't you know wise guy. I almost don't even want to do it. I don't want to do it. But you know what? You've been you've been a faithful follower and a faithful viewer for so long. I'm gonna let you have your moment of joy. I'm gonna let you have your moment in the sunshine. Here we go. He says, Hey Ron, I'm in the jacuzzi listening to the most popular show on YouTube for long care enthusiasts. I appreciate you, man. We were doing really good up to this point, but then you got to be like, and remember, Zoysia is king. Ha, ha, ha. I got to admit, though, the Zoysia is looking is looking better right now. Granted, it's growing a little plot that's been babied. My Zoysia is looking better than the Bermuda is right now. So I will give you that, wise guy. I hate to admit it. I hate to admit it. But uh, right now, at this time of year, the Zoysia looks better than the Bermuda. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you have that win. I'll take the L right now for Bermuda. But uh, But yeah. I'm glad you're enjoying time in the jacuzzi. It'd be interesting if I, could, if, I, if I had a jacuzzi. It'd be interesting to see about doing one, doing a live stream in a jacuzzi. Probably be pretty hard. Um, yeah, probably not the best idea. Electronics, water, not a good idea, right? All right, Rashad says, awesome. Thank you so much for your suggestions. You're very, very welcome, Rashad. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And then Daryl, see, Darryl, this is my support group. Daryl's like, hey, Ron, don't let them talk you into, I think you mean overseeding. Don't let them talk you into overseeding, LOL. With riser, yeah, it's probably not going to happen, Daryl. I'm just not. Uh, it's I don't want to have to mow in, when it's cold. I don't have to spray the lawn in the spring, and I just I'm ready. I'm ready for a break. I'm ready to mow the lawn less, hang out with you guys, produce content, you know, support other YouTubers, other creators. Just kind of you know, just take a chill, just relax, you know, like just just enjoy enjoy things. Just make just make content. Less mowing, still make content. Uh, very very good. See Andrew and um, Rashad are having a side. And then Alex B says, around 100 watching. Let's get some more likes for Ron, putting in the long hours for us most every week. Uh, thanks, Alex. I really do appreciate that. Thanks for the uh, for the heads up. And then Saul Lopez says, what herbicide would you recommend um, me recommend for me to kill crabgrass that is growing on the back of my lawn? Depends on what kind of what kind of grass you have, um, Saul. If you are um, if you have a, um, a a warm season lawn like Bermuda. Uh, something with quinclorac in it is um, is a good option. You can go with straight quinclorac; that would work. But if you want, like a, a, a again a, a cheaper option that actually works really well against crabgrass, that same product I was just showing earlier. Let me pull it up again. Spectricide, this guy here, which you can get at your local big box store, Home Depot, Lowe's, Wall Wally World, any of those. Um, like this um, has the um, has the post emergence that will that will kill crabgrass. That will target crabgrass. Here's the thing, though. This late in the season, any crabgrass you have in your lawn is going to be pretty mature. It's probably going to be pretty, unless you're talking about like baby crabgrass, is going to be pretty well established. So it's going to be difficult to get rid of it um, at this point. So even if you spray this, don't be surprised if it takes a couple of apps um, to knock it back. Like crabgrass is one of those weeds, that's, like most weeds, but crabgrass especially, is one of those weeds that's best controlled when it is younger, when it's, when it's, um, when it's, when it's smaller, okay? And because we're later on in the season, you're still talking about that, that, that leads me to believe that it is like more mature crabgrass. The spectricide will help, but you may have to do multiple apps to, um, to, to knock it back. You can also do what I do, which is just dig it out. Like I have like my little manual weeding tool that I hang on my mower when I'm while I'm out there mowing and I see some, I just walk stop by and dig it out and that's how I that's how I get rid of it. I don't spray um, spray it every single time. But um, Spectra is a good option if you're looking for a more hardcore option, something that's a little bit more concentrated that gives you more control over the rate, you can go with Quinclorac. Spectracide has Quinclorac in it, but uh, it's kind of your call which way you want to go. For me, I would just, just go with like something like Spectracide. Easier to use. All right, next up, Mr. Lone Star has a question. He says, 
One love, Ron. Blessings. Uh, what's the best size, le best size leveling rake you'd recommend? Um, it depends on the size of your lawn, how big an area you're trying to do. Uh, I think at least 30 inches is like the minimum I would go with. My leveling rake is a 40 inch leveling rake, I believe. I think it's 40 inches. Um, but I also have a really big back lawn. I got like big areas that I, I'm going to be using this on. So it's a balancing act between like maneuverability, um, how much space it's going to take up. Um, and the size of your lawn. So if you have a, sm if you have a small area, uh, then a smaller leveling rake can work well. Um, but like I, I see a 30 inch to up to a 40 inch, anything in that space, 30 inch, 36 inches, something like that. Those, those can work well on, um, on home lawns. Either, either that, that should be, that should be just, just fine. Most people I find have, their rake is actually around the 36 inch, um, range. Like the rake that, um, I see people using more than any other, like the ones from Standard Golf, I think those are 36 inches. And that's, again, it's a great, great leveling rate, good handle, great design. Um, I mean, you'll buy it, and as long as you take care of it, you're not gonna, you should be the, you'll buy it once. You're not gonna have to buy another one. So uh, so hopefully uh, hopefully that helps. Um, William Wade says, how do I donate? Um, oh yeah, so William, so what you see people doing is called Super Chats. So in the, I can't actually pull it up right now, or can I? I think I can do it. Um, while in the live stream over the comment box where you're typing in your, your comments, Below that, you'll see like a smiley face, like an emoji, and you'll see like a dollar sign. If you click on that, it's gonna give you the option to, um, it'll give you the option to do either a super chat or a super sticker. Either one works. You can decide like how much you wanna donate or you know contribute to the channel. And you can also put a question in if you want, or you can just say, hey, this is just for contributing to the channel. But yeah, it's it's right below the, the box where you type your, uh, your comment in. That is how you do it. Appreciate it, appreciate the support. Uh, and uh, yeah, and then Michael Sully is telling you, yeah, on the dollar sign below, your comment left of your send. Yep, that's that's where it's going to be. At least on my machine. It, I'm, if you're on mobile, I'm not sure if it's somewhere else, but on a desktop, that is uh, that is where it is. All right, uh, Michael R says. Uh, by the way, the flow the flow zone 2.5 on toolbar on site is two hundred ninety dollars. Very nice. That's a, good, that's a good price for a flow zone. Normally they're well over three hundred. They're like like three twenty is the cheapest I'd normally see them. Um, and not the price you shared on your sprayer comparison video. Um, so normally there there are more than that, um, Michael R. So there are places that can be running um, can be running you know sales on it. Can be running you know I'm um, selling it at a lower price. But typically I've seen the Flowzone Typhoon two and two point fives anywhere from three hundred and twenty dollars all the way up to over four hundred dollars when they were very very scarce. Um, you know they are it's the 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 price varies on them. Um, on them quite a bit. Um, let me see here. Um, let's see if I can look at what what is Flowzone offer selling them for? I think I want to say they're selling them for yeah. So so um, let's see if we go to sprayers uh, Typhoon Two. So yes, if you look here, so Toolbarn has it has it on sale right now, which is good. But if you actually go to Flowzone's website, like the people that actually make it and sell it, um, again, one big thing is that it's sold out, which is common. It's a common thing, but the price on it is three hundred and twenty dollars, right? So um, that is that is more in line of what the pricing normally is. Two hundred ninety dollars is a great deal uh, for that sprayer. If you can pick one up for two hundred ninety bucks, go for it. Um, the one thing I will still say, compared to um, like what I mentioned in the video, even if you can get one for two hundred ninety dollars, it doesn't include the spray tips. That's that's really the huge value proposition, right? I mean, like the fact that the, the yard mastery sprayer puts out like flows more. Is that nice? Yes, it's a nice, it's a nice, um, it's a nice bonus. But I've never used my flow zone and thought, man, you know what? I really wish this thing would put would, would, like output product faster. Like literally, it puts out product as fast as that as, as I really need. Um, but the inclusion of the um, the the tips, the T-Jet tips for foliar and for like pre-emergent for like soil applications is a really nice value add, along with the um, the quick release fitting, the quick connect fitting, like that's another, between the quick connect fitting and then the T-Jet tips, it's another $30 thereabouts, maybe a little bit more. Um, and you get that with the Yard Mastery Sprayer. So even if you can get the, the Flow Zone for $290, even if you can buy it for that price, uh, the Yard Mastery Sprayer is still a better deal in my opinion because for $5 more, you get like $40 more, $30, $40 more of value of stuff you don't have to go buy to get equivalent, equivalent results. So appreciate you chiming in. Um, but the price that you're quoting is a sale price. That is not the normal price you can get that sprayer for. All right. Um, next up, we got um, Ronnie Young saying, uh, having trouble with crabgrass, 
What can I use to get rid of it? Um, I kind of asked that one, Ronnie, already. Um, depending on, it depends on your grass type, right? If for warm season grass, uh, something like spectricide is a great option because it includes quinclorac, which is a great post-emergent herbicide that works well against crabgrass. Um, as I was kind of telling the other viewer though, uh, crabgrass is one of those things that's, that's contr best controlled when it's young. So if you got like a big, you know, like a huge chunk of, I mean, a, a big giant piece of crabgrass, um, you know, if you spray spectricide at it, it's probably gonna laugh at you. You, you may take, it may take multiple applications to uh, to get rid of it. Um, if you have really, really big, a big, you know, areas with lots of crabgrass in it, if you're open to it, I might just try physically removing it, like digging it out. And then if any smaller crabgrass comes back, that's where something like spectricide is gonna work really well. Because when it's, when it's young, it does a really good job of eliminating it. It's when it's really mature that you have uh, more of an issue. That's true for that's true for even quinclorac too. Even it doesn't work as well whenever the crabgrass is, um, is fully mature. So great, great question. Hopefully, uh, hopefully that helps. All right, um, next up we got Cameron M in the house. He says a question about fertilizer. He says, I recently applied chicken poo, it's an awesome name for fertilizer, a chicken poo fertilizer from Menards. Um, I wanted to try a bio-organic alternative compared to Merlorganite. Any thoughts or experience with chicken poo-based fertilizers? Um, I don't have direct experience with using um, chicken, um, you know, chicken feces-based um, fertilizers. I will tell you this. If you guys remember, it's probably been two, three seasons ago at this point, a buddy of mine, um, Lee, we top dressed his lawn. The guy that had the rotary mower, like if you see the video that I have on my channel, like the only video on my entire channel that has anything to do with a rotary mower, where he's unboxing like a Honda rotary, um, I think it's like the HRV or something like that, not the HRX, one of the Honda mowers. On his lawn, the top dressing that we got, that, we, that he bought, came with like, um, like a manure, like chicken manure mixed in with it. The stuff smelled like absolute, like smell, smell like death, like twice warmed over. But his lawn, when it came back, was it looked incredible. As far as like when it bounced back from the top dressing, it looked really green. It was really, really, really awesome. Here's here's the thing of how potent that stuff is. When we were top dressing the lawn, we were out there um, taking wheelbarrows out because um, we didn't have a top dressing machine. We we're using wheelbarrows and dumping it out in different spots of the lawn. And like in the back lawn, where it took us maybe an hour or so to get to the grass um, from the front. By the time we got there, once we topped, once we got the leveling rig and started moving it around, literally the grass was burned. Like you could literally see a circle where, where the grass physically got burned from, um, from I guess it's the high nitrogen content, the amount of um, just, just how, how rich um, that, that particular concoction was. Again, it smelled awful. His grass looked incredible once it bounced back, but um, but yeah, there's, I guess I'm saying all that to say that there is some value to, um, those types of fertilizers. I've not used them myself personally, but I mean, if you want to go the organic, more bio route, um, Lord, that's a good option. You know, the chicken poo from Menards is probably going to work just fine too. So uh, yeah, try it out. Try it out and let us know how it works, Cameron. That's what you should do. Let us know next week. Check back, put it down this weekend and let us know next week in the live stream uh, how it works. All right, uh, next up we got Austin Baird. He says, hey, Ron, I'm about to overseed my Bermuda lawn. Is there a pre-emergent I can use at the same time? I don't think I can use tenacity, correct? Correct, you should not use tenacity on your Bermuda grass lawn. Um, there are some people that say you can do it when it's dormant. You, I mean, yes, technically you can. You can do glyphosate if it's completely dormant, but I still don't recommend it. Um, and then as far as pre-emergent, if you're going to overseed with like rye, I'm assuming that's what you're gonna try, what you're gonna do, I would not um, put down pre-emergent. I just wouldn't, I, I'd pick one or the other. Because here's the thing you have to realize, Austin, um, you know, you're gonna be putting down a cool season, you're probably gonna be doing rye, you're gonna be overseeing your Bermuda with rye. Um, once the rye gets established, it's not that big a deal to get out there and occasionally either manually pull the weeds or just, you know, spot spray with a, with like something like tenacity once the grass is established nicely. Um, it's not gonna be that big of a deal to do that, but if you put down pre-emergent right after seeding, you know, you're gonna, you really could hurt the results you get with your, um, with your seeding project, you know? So that, that's, all of those reasons I really wouldn't do it. William, you figured it out, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate super the chat. super chat, sir. Thank you for the support. Really, really do appreciate it. And then Opal Pro says, yes, so it's a three foot patch slash circle. So yeah, so it's a couple of options, Opal. You can use like a selective herbicide, like you could do something like Tenacity, which is gonna ding the zoysia um, if you wanna do that. Or if you can be really, really, really careful and just, you know, like just um, keep the glyphosate or whatever, or, the, or some other non-selective 
um, grass or, or plant killer to just the zoysia patch. You could do that to eliminate it, like rake it out and then seed with, I think you had fescue, rye, and, um, and uh, KBG, some kind of blend like that. You could do that. That's an option, but uh, just be really careful if you decide to go that route because literally everything the non-selective touches is going to kill. So it's kind of your choice which way, um, which way you want to go. Thanks for chiming in and letting me know what you were dealing with. All right, um, Mark Houston is back. He says, one of two. You guys, you guys have the long questions like, one of two. This is the first part of the question. Two of two to come. He says, thank you for your answer on my zoysia lawn for the seeding project. It established pretty good, but my weeds are mostly crabgrass, spurge, and kalinga. I have used uh, Drive Accelerate with good success on crabgrass. Um, any um, post-emergent suggestions for me? Uh, Again, uh, thanks. I live in uh, from from Eastern North Carolina. Um, not really. I mean, if you're if if mainly what you're dealing with is crabgrass and Drive Accelerate is doing. I know Drive is a really good one against crabgrass. I don't know how well it works on Spurge um, and Kalinga or the Sedges. Um, if you want something else to try for that, like um, I mean, Celsius works really well against uh, Spurge, and Certainty works well against um, Sedges. So. It depends on how bad of a problem you have, man. Because what I just what I just told you there, Mark, that's like two hundred dollars worth of of herbicides. You know, you you could do that, but it just depends on how how bad of a problem we're dealing with here, how badly you want it gone. Um, you know, but it's it's you can't. There are there are products that will work, but you know, you're gonna have to open your pocketbook if you want to see um, what I'm talking about and how you can mix those two for a pretty good result. I will show you the video that I did. Um, a few, it's been more than a few weeks at this point. It was in August. Um, that shows you how to mix um, Celsius and um, Certainty, like how I mix it for a really good result. You can you can vary that if you want, but just just my method and and that works fairly well. And that concoction will knock out the um, the Spurge and the Kalinga. So let me send that to you at Mark Houston, and that is the video. There you go. There you go. And if you want to read the um, the label for Celsius, for Celsius and Certainty, um, the labels, I'll put the links for both of those in the chat as well. So you can see both of those if you decide that that is the route that you want to uh, to go. Sounds like you're, you're already well read in though, man. You're using like um, Excel Drive. So I mean, you're, you're probably fine with mixing stuff and not afraid of a backpack spray or liquid. So um, yeah, take a look at that video and then you can kind of go from there. Kevin D. Jones saying, H, what's going on? What's going on, Kevin? I appreciate it. H, H to you too. <laughs> and then um, next up, we got um, Demir. He's chiming. He says, speaking of mowing frequency, I mow greens every day, fairways and approaches five days a week, tees and rough three times. Ron is right. Uh, is right. A lot of time, more frequent mowings will help your lawn tons. Yeah, so that's it. I mean, like golf courses, the reason why they look the way they do is, like I said, they they got the budget for it, but mainly it's because they mow so much. They mow, mow, and mow some more. And really what we're doing, guys, like, you know, if you're really being super hardcore, what we're doing is probably along somewhere between like what he's doing for tees and for the rough. So somewhere between like, I always say like two times, twice per week is like the bare minimum if you're serious about getting your lawn to look nice. But really, um, depending on your height of cut, every other day is where you want to be, which kind of works out to... Four, four-ish times per week is what that, that tends to work out to. Three to four times per week is what you end up doing in that case. And that, that's going to be a really, really good result. Appreciate you chiming in, Demir. Thank you uh, for letting us know what, you, what your regimen is on the golf courses. All right. Um, uh, BDSRT8. Do you have do you have SRT8? Is that what you have? I guess it's your... Is it the... Uh, do you have the... Um, I, th I can only have the, the, the car. Um, yeah, but there's also the, uh, the Jeep version too. I'm sure which one you have. You may have both of them. Okay, anyway, uh, uh, squirrel. <laughs> hey, Ron, I'm new to your channel and love it. I'm totally confused. I have St. Augustine and I need help. Um, I need some weed control um, for early fall and prevent for early fall and prevention in the spring. Houston, Texas. Um, just go with something like um, like prodiamine um, BD SRT8. Um, you know, you can do prodiamine. That that's a great option for your for your fall pre-emergent. You can look into into that. You can look into um, um, spectacle flow. Even though it's a kind of that's kind of an expensive one. Um, there's um, there's a, there's a lot of, there's a lot of different pre-emergents that you can you can try out there. Um, as far as dithiopyr, that one I, I I have to check the label on to see if that one is safe 
for um, for Saint Augustine. Saint Aug I mean, that one is is that one has some reach back for crabgrass, which makes me want to double check the label before I tell you that one to be safe to put on St. Augustine. It might be, but you want to check the label before you do that one. Prodiamine will be fine, um, but uh, but Dithiopera, I check the label before you put that one on, on St. Aug. Doing an application in the fall and the spring will do a lot for, um, for keeping weeds out of your lawn. So hopefully that helps. From Houston, I, I got family in Houston, man. So um, thanks, for, thanks for coming to hang out and chime in, in the live stream. Um, uh, Oid O'Doyle rules from Billy Madison. Oh, from the movie. Oh, okay, yeah, sorry. See, are you guys? Are you guys are like are, are are calling me out, man? So from Billy Madison, Happy Gilmore, wrong or wrong movie? But it's I think it's Billy. I think he's right on Billy Madison. All right. Um, next up, Jeremy writes in the house. He says, uh, "Big bro, good day. Hope all is well. What fertilizer are you putting down in October and through the rest of the season?" Well, my rest of the season, Jeremy, is next weekend, and it's going to be. Humic, uh, Humic Max. So, if you want to see what that is, I've shown um, some other people already on the on the live stream, but I will pull it up so you can check it out. Um, so we go here to Golf Course Lawn Dot Store, and if you scroll down, you'll see Humic Max, which is an excellent offering from the nice and friendly folks at Lebanon Turf. This is what I'm going to be applying. I'm going to be doing it at the three pounds per thousand rate. So pretty much a similar rate that I've been using over the summer, but um, I'm not going to be doing any liquids um, uh, next this weekend. It's just going to be just that close out and to, to close out the uh, close out the lawn for the season, um, Jeremy. That's going to be that is going to be the uh, the ticket. That is going to be the ticket. So uh, so yeah, hopefully that helps. Great great uh, question. And then Bailey says, uh, "Yes, sir. Thanks so much. I've added French drains now. Yep, that's a big that's a big help. If you did that, um, B Bailey, um, just give it some time because what will happen is you know over. I'm not sure when you added the French drains, but over time that area is because it's not having water settle anymore will begin to dry out and reach saturation levels that are similar to the rest of the lawn, and you shouldn't have the issues with algae as much as you you had when it was like a you know basically a small swimming pool. So um, so yeah yeah just give it give it a bit of time to see." Um, how well that works. All right, um, Dwayne says, when applying fall pre-immersion, is there recommended soil temperature like we follow in January, February for spring applications? Yeah, so whenever soil temps cross 70 degrees going south, are going, going cooler is for fall, is, um, is a good time to do your fall um, pre-immersion app. In the spring, when soil temps are between around 55, 50 to 55 degrees um, consistently, that is, um, you want to get your pre-immersion down prior to that. So what I would always say is, um, the month of September is your window for fall pre-emergent, and for spring pre-emergent, February, March is your window for that. This again, this past year we did a test. We we did Alex's lawn super early just to see what would happen, and it worked absolutely. He had no issues whatsoever. He had no issues with his lawn with weeds all throughout the season, and we aerated his lawn. Um, you know, in May, like the last week of that last weekend between April and May, that's when we aerated and top dressed his lawn and he didn't have any problems with weeds all season. So great, great question. Um, let me see what else, uh, what else we have here. Brook Rehab says he keeps saying probably, I think he, <laughs> he's fading slowly. You guys are like, he keeps saying probably. So you think, um, you think I'm getting weak, man? I'm getting weak in the knees as far as the overseeding with the, uh, with the ryegrass. Mm. Mm -mm. Nah, nah, I don't, I don't think so. I'm entertaining it, but it's the more I think about everything that's involved in it, probably unlikely to happen, man. Probably unlikely to happen. Um, B Bailey says, "Come on up to, come on up to Mableton. I'll pay for you, bro." Um, I mean, just, just send me an email if there's something that you need need help with. Just email me. Um, it'd be easier than going to Mableton. I have an aunt that's actually, I think she stays out in Mableton. Um, but yeah, no, it's just, just email me. If you have questions, just shoot me an email, ron at golfcourselawn.com or come on the live stream and I'll do my best to help you out there as well too. Okay, um, Austin uh, is up next with another question. He says, Ron, is there a post-emergent safe for cool and warm season grass? That's a good one. Uh, my lawn is a Bermuda tall fescue mix. The tall fescue is heavily shaded. Um, it's for the tall, heavily shaded areas of my lawn. Huh, is there a post emergent that is safe for cool, for cool and warm season grass? I'm trying to think. Um, there might be. There might be. It, dep it depends on what you're trying to treat. Um, it depends on what you're trying to treat, Austin. I'm trying to think of what will not hurt. Um, 
that will not hurt cool season grass that's safe, uh, safe for warm season and vice versa. There probably is. I, I don't know off the top of my head. I'm sure someone will, someone is probably yelling at their screen saying it's this one. Um, but I, off the top of my head, I am not sure. Typically, cause what I tend to think about when it comes to, um, po when it comes to post-emergent herbicides, if you're thinking about like a really good one, I think like tenacity mixed with speed zone for cool season lawns. And I think Celsius mixed with something else like Celsius and certainty or Celsius, um, uh, you know, Celsius and sedge hammer. Um, for warm season grass. That's what I tend to think about. I don't think of a, of a, I don't tend to, I've not really done a ton of research into a herbicide that will work on both warm season and cool season. Because here's the thing, even if it existed, even if that were to exist, there, what you're going to miss if you had something like that is coverage. Because like what, um, like the, the, the method of action or the, the way that, that Celsius kills, um, is able to not hurt Bermuda, but also damage certain weeds while that is safe for Bermuda that its method, it's, it, the way it works, would not be safe for something like rye or perennial or, or, or fescue. Same thing, conversely, the way tenacity works, um, while you can do that and it will kill the same kind of weeds that Celsius will kill on warm season grass, it won't, it's not safe for, um, it's not safe for warm season lawns. So it's, I don't, I, th there's a reason why there's post-emergent herbicides for cool season grass and ones for warm season grass. So um, I don't know off the top of my head, and even if, it, even if it did exist, I don't, I think the coverage um, would be fairly limited, even if, it, even if it were out there. All right, good question. That's a good one. Uh, next up, we got Cameron. He says, how long after overseeding do you think it's safe to apply post-emergent? Depends on what kind of grass you're seeding, you, you, you did. If you um, seeded Bermuda in like April and you wanted to do, um, oh, you oh, said it's post-emergent, no. Okay, so if you did, if you did, put, did um, say Bermuda in April, we'll use as the same example. I was thinking pre-emergent, but you're asking about post-emergence. If you did, if you did in April and you waited like six weeks, once the lawn is established nicely, meaning you're mowing it and the lawn's all filled in, there's no thin spots. Overall, the lawn looks good, um, and you want to use a post-emergent, then um, I think you should be fine to go at, at that point. Um, but, but the big thing is, is once the lawn is established, like you've mowed it several times, it's filled in nicely, it's thick, it's just it's it's doing well. That is when you can go with a post-emergent app. I wouldn't like um, I wouldn't see it, and then as soon as you see the grass germinating, because you see some weeds, you smack it with um, with a post-emergent. Because the thing with thing to realize, even with something like Celsius, right, which is a very very good post-emergent herbicide, it's an excellent post-emergent herbicide. Um, it still stresses the grass a little bit, even though it's safe for Bermuda. It still imparts stress to to the grass that is designed to not kill. Um, so for a, for a lawn that you just seeded, grass that doesn't have a very strong root system, it's still fi still finding its way in the world. You want to give it some time to to get established before you you do anything that stresses it um, in any in any any measurable way. So I would say six weeks, maybe even longer, depending on how well the grass is uh, is growing in. Okay, uh, next we got Wayne. Um, Wayne Lambarth says I killed off half my Arden fifteen. Over the summer, because of wild Bermuda, um, I reseeded Arden 15, and notice where I seeded is noticeably different from the color not being um, as dark. Is this normal? Um, I have to see a picture of it. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure, Wayne. I have to see if, if it's the same batch. Like if you got this, if you got um, the Arden 15 from the same place, um, and you're sure it was Arden 15 you used before, and it was Arden 15 you put down um, the second time, it should match. It should match. Um, I mean, give it some time and see how it does over time. But um, but yeah, I uh, it should it should match, especially if you're using the same using the same stuff that you got from um, like from Pennington. Like if you got it got using Pennington R15, I think, and I think they're the only ones that do it. I know outside Pride sells it, but I think I think it's all Pennington. I don't know if anyone else that does R15. If you if you're using that same um, like from the same bag, it should look the same. It should. I'm not sure why there'd be um, a, a big, a mask, a, a massive color difference. Um, so no, send me a picture of it. It'd be interesting to see what you're dealing with. My here's my email, um, Ron at golfcourselawn.com. If you don't mind, Wayne, send me a picture of it just so I can see what you're what you're uh, what you're going through, and um, you know, I can offer a more informed opinion then. But it should match. It should match. Keyword should. All right. Next up, Martin Mueller says, uh, "Hi Ron, love your show. Everyone is talking about army worms. How do you diagnose your lawn? Diagnose if your lawn is infested?" Don uh, Martin. Um, literally, you can go out, you can look because army worms. You, you'll see them. You'll see them in the lawn. You can actually see them um, on the top of the lawn because um, they'll. And, and another thing you'll notice too, uh, Martin, is if you see part of your gra your grass or your lawn that's normally green, 
and it's always been green, no issues. You haven't done anything crazy to it. Um, and it starts browning up and, and that brown is moving rapidly. That is a sign of armyworms. Um, but if you wanna see what they look like, I did a video a couple of weeks ago on that. I'll put that here in the chat so you can see what they look like. But just, I mean, just if you just Google or YouTube armyworms, what they look like, you'll, you'll be able to see that. But that's one where, unlike grubs, where you have to, um, they could be under the lawn and, you, and they could be doing all their damage, you not know it. Armyworms are more on top, they're on top. You'll, you can, you'll be able to physically see them in the lawn if you get down and you look for them. But here in my video, which I will send to you now, You'll be able to uh, you'll be able to see at the beginning, like the opening B-roll. That video shows you what to look for um, in the lawn for as far as army worms. Great stuff. And as far as um, if you just want to make sure you don't have an issue with it, like even if they're there, or if you just don't want to have a want to prevent them from becoming an issue, like if say your neighbors have problems with it, um, what I'd recommend is an insecticide called a Celeprin G. It's um, it's a granular insecticide that Syngenta makes. It's a really really good one. I applied it in April and I've had no issues with my lawn with armyworms all year or grubs um, or for any, any, any other lawn damaging insects for that matter. Um, really, really good product. Only negative is it's not necessarily the cheapest stuff, but it's, um, again, I applied it in April and it's, it's still, my lawn's been good all year. So um, so take that for, uh, for what it's worth and I will put that in the chat uh, for you as, um, as well. So here's a link to a seller print if you decide to, uh, to go with that, Martin. All right, uh, next question we got. We're winding down here, guys. Well, sort of, we got a few more. Um, Dwayne says, hey Ron, I have an area of my lawn that gets plenty of sun, but had a hard time this year and will mostly, most likely not fill in uh, before dormancy. Is there anything I should do before next spring to cure? Um, not really. I mean, if it's, you know, I guess you said you had an area that gets plenty of sun, but it didn't um, fill in. Did you did you seed your lawn this year, Dwayne? Are you... Um, or you do sod it or something. I guess my long and short is no, there's not really anything you can do um, outside of making the summer last longer, which you can't, uh, not, not really. Just wait till next spring. It should finish filling in once heat comes back again. Um, I would not throw a lot of fertilizer at it or anything like that to try and get the grass to grow quickly. Um, so long and short is no, I wouldn't, you know, if it's getting plenty of sunlight, you're watering it well, it's, I'm sure it's gotten plenty of fertilizer over the season, just let it, let it do its thing, let it run its course. Um, and next season you should be, uh, you should be good to go. I wouldn't try and correct that this late, um, this late in the season. All right, next up we got Lenny Dean says, hey Ron, great show. Thank you so much, Lenny, I really appreciate it. What is the best fall fertilizer for cool season grass? Okay, the same, the best fall fertilizer for cold season grass is the same fertilizer um, for warm season grass. And really the, be the best answer is it's based on what your soil tests tell you. So. If you want to match the fertilizer you're applying to your lawn, Lenny, um, to what the, you want to match the fertilizer to the soil, the, to your current soil conditions as best you can, the best way to do that is with a soil test. And the one that I recommend is this one, the one from my soil. These are super easy to use. Um, you're gonna, it's like, it's got a, a scoop, um, some, de some deionized water, some and that you will put the sample in. I'll actually show you what it looks like, just for, uh, for grins. Some of you guys have seen this, but I'll show you. Um, in there, you get a scoop, if I can get it out. Can I? Yeah, you get a scoop um, that once you collect your samples, you use this um, to put a scoop that represents your soil into this container. You'll mail this out in the envelope that it comes with to my soil, and about a week, you'll get an email saying, Lenny, here are the results of your soil test. And then it, along with those soil test results, it will tell you which fertilizer is the best fit for your soil based on, on the results. That's the best answer as far as doing things the most correct way. As far as a great fertilizer that you can use on cool season grass, uh, that's going to work great. Um, Humic Max. It's a really, it's a really good one. So it's this one. If you go to golfcourselawn.store, it's the same one that I've been using on my lawn um, all season. A lot of people have used it and have had excellent results with it. Um, I will show you here what it looks like. So you go to golfcourselawn.store and then scroll down and you'll see this one here, Humic Max um, from Lebanon Turf. It's got um, right at nine percent humic acid in it as well, which is a soil amendment that helps improve um, nutrient uptake, helps improve microbial activity in the soil. It's a great overall all-around fertilizer. One bag of this covers 15,000 square feet. So depending on the size of your lawn, you may want buy one bag and be good for um, the entire season. You know, So that is what I would recommend. Um, if you're saying, hey, I don't wanna do a soil test, I just want a great fertilizer option, Humic Max. It's an excellent, excellent fertilizer. Um, but I'd really recommend get a soil test done and then fertilize based on, uh, based on those results. Great question. 
All right, um, McCreese Allen says, how long should you wait before adding another application of fertilizer um, at overseeding lawn? I have, a, I have a tall fescue bluegrass mix. It depends on the kind of fertilizer you use when you, when you overseeded, um, when you overseeded McCreese. Most slow release fertilizers are good for some of them up to two months, right? Most of them are like six weeks to two months, six to eight weeks is what you get out of them. Um, if you used a quick release fertilizer, one that, that has less of a slow release component in it, like Humic Max, you could apply that one monthly. So it, the, answer, the best answer to your question is it depends on what kind of fertilizer um, you use. It depends on the fertilizer you use, but anywhere between a month afterwards to as long as um, two months afterwards. So a month, so anywhere, so anywhere between a month to, to, uh, to two months is when you can do your next app. If you want to split hairs, six weeks after your, you did your overseeding is when you can do your next fertilizer app. But again, it, it, it's really based on the type of fertilizer that you use. But if you just want to be safe, wait six weeks and then do your, your next fertilizer application. Good question. All right, Dwizzle's in the, in the live stream. He says, uh, hey, Ron, what's up? I just joining. I noticed what appears to be black mold just on the back of the lawn. It's going away now, but it was my first time seeing it after using PGR this year. Thoughts? Um, it sounds like, like an algae um algae problem or something. I mean, have you been watering super heavily, uh, Dwizzle, or is there an area of the lawn that, uh, that water settles? Um, cause I think, I think you're in Georgia too. I believe so. We'll be getting a lot of, a lot of rain here lately. So all those things can contribute to, um, like that black mold or algae that's your, um, that you're, you're describing. Um, PGR should not cause that. Uh, even, a, even an over application of PGR is going to tend to turn the grass brown or make it look like it's, it's, um, like you, like you over applied fertilizer, but it's, it shouldn't create like a black mold or anything like that on the lawn. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking the issue is, um, uh, too much water, either from too much watering or a drainage issue from all the rain we've been having, and then that section of the lawn just you know just held on a lot more water and and uh, and and developed a mold issue. So if that's the case, kind of like I was telling another viewer, consider looking into ways to improve drainage in that spot, like um like a French drain or a catch basin, something like that, something to divert the water away from those areas where the algae is developing would be um, would be my recommendation. Uh, great, great question. Um, uh, Justin Cummings says, is applying Epsom salt to your lawn um, help a greeter lawn or is that a myth? I've heard that. I've heard, what is Epsom salt? Isn't it, um, isn't it magnesium? I think that's what, what's in it. I think so. I have to look at the label. I think Epsom salt is that. So I, I, I have heard that you can um, put a little bit of Epsom salt, like a, like a scoop or two of it in your backpack sprayer, like, you know, um, like suspend it and spray it. Um, I've, ne I've, I've never actually tested that to know for sure how well that would work. I guess I could give that a try, um, probably not this year, but next season I could actually just do a control of like an area and we just do Epsom salt and see um, how it works. Um, I don't think it's necessarily a myth, but I don't know that it's going to work as well um, as like using an actual liquid fertilizer, uh, if, that, if, you, if that's what you're getting to, Justin. So um, I, I think it might, there might be something to it, but it's probably not gonna be as good as a dedicated product that is designed uh, for, that, for that purpose. Uh, you're very, very welcome, Lone Star. Anytime, no problem at all. And then we got Mr. Kelby Ruiz in the house saying, I'm doing an ugly lawn makeover next season for my neighbor. That's awesome, Kelby. Nice, congrats. That's, 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 uh, that's good of you, man. Um, it says, her yard is 100% weeds uh, and dirt with Bermuda. <laughs> Sounds like you can only go up from here, right? That's, a, that's, that's the positive. You can only go up from, uh, from what you're describing. Um, apply pre-emergent and wait till next spring to get started. What would you do? Yeah, I would still apply a pre-emergent. I would. Um, because, you know, while there's, while there's 100% weeds now, we apply, um, we apply pre-emergent now. If you want us to apply a post-emergent to try and knock the weeds back, you could even do that now if you want to. And then in the spring, um, that just means you're going to have less weeds to deal with. You're going you're to get ahead of the curve so that whenever you start your Fix My Ugly Lawn series on your neighbor's lawn, you're going to be, you know, weeds will be less of a thing you have to deal with. You're still going to have them, but it's going to be less bad. So yes, I would do pre-emergent this fall. Um, I might even like use a, do a post-emergent to try and get rid of some of what some of the weeds that she's dealing with right now. And I would also do a pre-emergent in the spring. And that's going to, like I said, it's going to put you ahead of the game as far as, um, as far as dealing with, um, with, with, with your, your upcoming makeover. All right. Um, Lone Star says, uh, Ron, the hormone in the chicken manure is very strong. The best time it is, uh, to use it is when the lawn go dormant or uh, give it time to break down before you put it on the lawn. I've never applied chicken manure directly to my lawn to be able to tell you um, 
which way, like what was the best time to apply it. I can tell you the stuff is very potent. Like literally, if you left it on a lawn, again, in a pile, like I mean, a pile was like maybe, I don't know, maybe 18 inches, a foot, a foot, a pile of, uh, of uh, sand and chicken manure mixed together, um, and it burned the grass. It literally created like a like a, like a ring, it like crop circles in the in the lawn in the areas where we dumped it out with a wheelbarrow. So um, you sh you probably should still be fine to be completely honest to apply it to your lawn now if you want. Um, I just wouldn't like top dress with it um, this late in the season. So as long as you're just using it as an as a fertilizer, meaning a very very light app, you should be okay. But I've never used it directly to be able to tell you what kind of results. Um, you would get, especially this time of year. No problem at all. Great question. All right, Kevin D says, no problem, I was trying to retract typos. No worries at all, Kevin. No problems at all. Um, and then Dalvin says, so fall is here and it's time for pre-emergent grass going to sleep for a lawn with warm season weeds. Would you even bother um, with spraying it out or not wasting herbicide on warm weeds? Depends. I mean, if we're, I, mean, I can tell you what I'm doing. I have not sprayed outside of like the, the the spot spraying I did for the video on Celsius uncertainty. I have not blanketed my lawn with with a, with a selective herbicide all season. It hasn't seen any herbicide at all. If it's me, I'm not. I'm just gonna let it go. I'm just gonna put down a fall pre-emergent. Let any warm season weeds die off as the as temps um, get cooler, and then in the spring, I'm also gonna get my pre-emergent down. So um, it's your call. If it's really bothering you, driving you crazy, you can spray them out, but. I, what I'm doing, I'm not putting any, um, I'm not putting any any post-emergent herbicides on my lawn outside of what's going to be in coastal. Uh, so hopefully that helps, Dalvin. You can you can decide which way uh, uh, which way you want to go. All right, next up is a question that I'm not going to know the answer to, but it's a good one. Maybe someone else will. So hey, Ron, do you have any questions of how to get rid of liverwort? I'm not even sure what liverwort is. Um, UC Bedoy 25. I noticed it on my sidewalk, um, sidewalkway, but starting to creep onto the lawn. Cool season lawn. I just did my first overseed. Thanks. I'm guessing it's a weed of some sort. Um, I don't know. I've never actually. Um, it's, a, it's the first time I've ever heard of um, of that. Of that. I'm guessing it's a weed. Um, what I might do is if you look, because you have a, a cool season lawn, check the label for tenacity and for speed zone and see if um, that is on the label, if it's labeled to control uh, that particular type of weed. But it's not one that I'm familiar with. But again, given that you have a cool season, a cool season lawn, um, check the label for tenacity and speed zone, both of which you can apply on cool season grass. And one of those two will probably take care of it if it's a weed that can be um, that can be easily controlled. So. Sorry, I'm not, more, I'm not more help on this one, but I, I pointed you in the right direction. So hopefully that gives you, gets, sets you off on the right on the right path. All right, Erna Joe says, for a southern lawn, what month should I stop treating the lawn? Okay, if by, by, by treating it, if you mean fertilizing it, um, October, like this month, the end of this month is the last app that I would do um, to, that I'm doing to my lawn, to Bermuda, to, which, is a, which is a warm season lawn. Um, as far as other things you can do, still do as far as treatments. If your lawn needs lime, that's something you can still do after doing your last fertilizer app. If you want to put down a, pre a preventative fungicide, that is something you can also continue to do. Like you could do one um, at the beginning of October and you could do another one 28 days later. So you do one in October, you could do one in November and that would pretty much close things out. Um, but as far as fertilization, um, stopping next month is what I'm going to be doing. Mainly because I had some issues with spring dead spot last year, and I'm trying to prevent that from being a problem next year. So I'm back. I'm like you know putting the brakes on adding any more fertilizer to my lawn um, starting next weekend. So hopefully that helps. All right. Next up, we got Mazamba Blue in the house. He says, "Happy Friday, Ron. Happy Friday. Thumbs up, everyone." Up the frequency of Turfplex to once a week at three ounces per thousand. Okay, so you're kind of you're like doing a split split app, um, but now I'm mowing three times a week with a manual reel at six thirty a.m. Um, KBG is flourishing. Mow mow and mow some more. Yeah, man. I mean, if, you, if you have the time, that's a that's a great option. I mean, you know that you're taking spoon feeding to like the next level. Um, it'd be interesting, Mazama Blue. Um, did you do um, Turfplex applications? every two weeks for a while and see how they looked. And then you switched to once per week. And did you notice a difference when you went to the once per week um, app, even though you're doing the same amount of product, just splitting that up over a weekly application, did you notice a difference? It'd be interesting to uh, to hear that. If you don't mind just letting us know before, but yeah, good job, man. Good job on getting the turf plex down and keeping up with your mowing. We got Patrick from Texas in the house. What's going on, Patrick? Uh, thanks for coming to hang out, sir. And then Doug M says, yeah, blindside is safe for fescue in Bermuda, if I'm not mistaken. I think you are right, 
um, Doug. I'm not sure. I have to look at the label. I can't do it right now, but Blindside might be an option for doing, for taking care of both. Yep, I'll have to look into it. All right. Uh, Mark Houston says, uh, Ron, thanks so much. I got the Yard Mastery Sprayer for Celsius Certainty Combo. Should I use the red or the white T-Jet nozzle for applying? You would use the red one, not the white. The white one is for soil. Um, it's got the, it's a big droplet one. It's for uh, soil-based products. So um, like pre-emergence, the first thing that comes to mind is where you, what you would use the white one for, the flood jet for. Um, the red nozzle is for foliar apps, and that's definitely what you want to do for Celsius and certainty. Also, Mark, if you're going to be doing that, um, make sure that you want to you get a surfactant. I mean, use like a non-ionic surfactant. Um, along with the Celsius um, and Certainty as well. You didn't mention that. I'm not sure if you, you know that, but in the video, I do mention using um, using that wing along with it. So make sure you do that. But yeah, the red tip is what you want is what you're gonna want to go with. All right, G Free's in the house says just been enjoying the show. Good questions and answers. Thank you so much, G Free. So you're lurking tonight, man. You just you just coming to show the support. We're just hanging out, huh? I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. All right, uh, next up, uh, uh, B. Bailey says, hands down the best Q&A ever. My old old Army veteran working this YouTube channel. Wow, made my day, Ron. Uh, I'm ordering uh, some of your products for sure. Have a great weekend. Thank you so much, sir. I really do appreciate uh, the support. Thanks so much, I really do appreciate it. All right, next up, David Plonk. What's going on, David? It's been a while. He says, hey, Ron, St. Augustine here in South Texas. Uh, should I consider aerating? I've been throwing down Lawn Mastery stress for it every four weeks or so, or should I wait until spring? Thank you. I would wait till next spring. We're a little bit late in the season for aeration, um, David. I mean, granted, you're in South Texas, so you may have a little bit longer season. Uh, you know, I guess, how does the grass look? Does the grass look as good now as it did during like the summer? Meaning, is it is it still actively growing? Because if it's still actively growing and you're really, you just really want to aerate and you want to do that, you, I guess you can, but if it were me, I would just wait. I mean, there's, I don't know that you'd get um, a ton of value out of it compared to waiting until next spring. Because next spring when you do it, right, you're going to be able to aerate, you're going to be able to put down your, your granular soil amendments, like you can put down your carbon, you can do your, your, your fertilizer apps, all that stuff. Um, whereas now, outside of just doing it just because you want to do it, I, there'd be there'd be less less reason for it. So I would wait till next spring if it were me. But good job, man. Good job on uh, on getting uh, the stress for it down. I guess I'm sure you're getting good results with the uh, with the yard mastery uh, stress blend. And then uh, Dwizzle D Maris chiming in here. He's saying you could have slime mold. They'll appear uh, dark in appearance, and like Ron said, excessive leaf moisture and and poor drainage can cause those symptoms. So um, so there you go. There's. You have someone that actually works in the turf grass industry professionally chiming in and thinking it's, it's I'm thinking it's a water issue because I, I want to say you're also in Georgia Dwizzle and we've had a lot of rain here lately, which will cause the kind of problems that you're uh, you're describing. I appreciate it, Bailey. Thank you for ordering. Thanks. And let me know how it works out for you. Be sure. One thing, one thing I will tell you is follow the rate, like the label, the rate for Humic Max, do not go heavy. You don't need to go heavy with it. Like the, the three pounds per thousand is all you need to get a great result. Trust me, I've done the research. I've done the research. I'm trying to make you. I'm trying to make you get more out of your fertilizer application, right? Bad for me, but good for you. So just go at the rate uh, on the on the label. It's plenty for an awesome result. Okay, um, Carolyn McLean chimes in. And says, "Hey, Ron, I had my soil test done. My NPK is optimal, but they did not give any records for what fertilizer I should use. Any suggestions? Thank you. If your NPK is optimal, um, Carolyn, you really don't have to. Um, it, I mean, I guess what they're saying as far as amendments go." You don't have to to put down um, like anything from a standpoint of, of fixing deficiencies. In that case, if you want to use something like Humic Max, which has just the nitrogen and the potassium in it, um, that would be a good option. That would be a good option. I tend to not like to um, recommend people applying fertilizers with phosphorus in them unless the soil unless soil test results actually say you need it. So in your case, where you're you are you're doing something right or your soil is already in great shape and you just want to feed it. Um, then an application of Humic Max or your some other fertilizer of choice um, would be would be uh, would be good to go. I would just avoid anything with phosphorus, seeing as how you're saying your your test results say you don't really need any of it. Great, great question. And congrats on getting the soil test done and on um, and on being in search now of looking for a good fertilizer. You know, so good stuff. All right, um, Jamie Haas uh, has a question. He says. So what happens to the pH after you've limed over the winter and now you're uh, top dressing in the spring? North Georgia lawn, Bermuda. Um, if you've applied lime to your lawn, Jamie, like now, 
in the spring, next time you test, you should see, I mean, assuming you put down enough of it, um, you should see that reflected in a raise in soil pH. So, so um, lime has a, has a has the effect of raising soil pH. So, um, you know, if you did that, and then the next time you soil test in the spring, you should see um, you should see like the pH has moved up some to some point. What I've done is I've I've uh, I've been testing my soil every three months. Um, mainly because I just like the data, and I want to also just when I play with like different application rates for fertilizers and different products, I want to see how quickly they're reflected in the soil. And I and a, a lime application done in the winter can show up in a soil test that you do in like March. So that if you next time you test your soil, you could see that um, you could you should see a a bump in pH, assuming um, you put it down at a heavy enough rate to make to make a difference. Richard's in the house says, "Hey Ron, sorry I'm late. You are late, but you are here, so we cannot uh, can't complain about that, right? Can't complain about that." Um, uh, Martin Mueller says, "Yard Master just came out with chicken poop and rich biochar biocharkin. I use it for my fall overseeding this year. Waiting to see some results. Okay, well yeah, let us know, Martin. Keep us posted as far as how uh, well that works out for you. And um, let's see what else we got here. Um, it says Clayton says Clayton says, uh, "Hey Ron, now that things are slowing down, I've been researching." Uh, growing degree days uh, to time insect and lawn applications, not finding many resources for southern grasses or pests. Do you know of any good resources for this? Does this timing method work for lawns? Um, so look at what look at any of the um, like look at look up UGA. Look at, um, go to, to to UGA's extension office website. They've got a ton of great papers and research there. Um, as far as in as insects or applying insecticides. I have not really timed that um, as much as I do for things like uh, like fun like fungicides. More so, you want to be more um, cognizant of when you put those down because they have a limited they have a limited effectiveness um, period. So, like most fungicides, will only last for 28 days a month thereabouts. Um, so, if you're doing like a preventative fungicide, like May June is the time to do that. For insecticide, the ones that I've used, I've used Caravan G in the past, um, and I've also used a Celeprin. I did a Celeprin G in April. Um, and that's the only insecticide application or insecticide product I've used on my lawn all year, and it's worked very well. I've not had any issues with grubs or with um, or with army worms or things like that. So what, what, what I would say is do, do some research into like the lawn insects you're worried about. So like grubs and army worms. And what I'm gonna tell you is that really the earlier in the season you can get your insecticide down, the better. You don't wanna you don't wanna be behind the curve or you don't want you don't want to wait till there's a problem to treat it um, once they're already here, apply it earlier in the season. So uh, even before this year, I've been doing my insecticide apps in April and that's that's worked pretty well for me. But if you want to look up any of the extension offices like um, like Tennessee University, um, like Tennessee, like UGA's got a really good one. Um, Universe, like the Vols um, has, a, has a good um, um, extension office as well. Just look at their websites. They have tons of research on there that you can look at uh, as far as that particular question. But in my case, April is when I do it and it seems to work, seems to work pretty well. Okay, uh, next up we got Greg Lyon in the house. He says, Ron, what tips do you have for winterizing our real mowers? Also, how often do you do synthetic oil changes? Thanks. Oil changes I do once per season because it's um, like Greens Master. I'm 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 not putting any wear on that mower compared to what it's normally used to, like on an actual golf course. Um, and as far as winterizing it, the one thing I would say is this, right? Um, as you are getting closer to the end of the season, just like now, um, if you've not been running ethanol-free gas in your mower, um, now would be the time to switch to that. Um, so you know you can get away. I mean, if you can run ethanol-free gas all year all year round, that'd be that'd be ideal. But um, if you want to run like you know like the the stuff you can just get at any gas pump throughout the season when you're turning over the gas pretty regularly in the mower, and now when you get to now to the end of the season when you're gonna put the mower up, you, um, that's when if you're gonna leave gasoline in it, um, you want it to be like ethanol free. You don't want to leave anything that's gonna attract water or moisture um, into the fuel system. Outside of that, um, you know what I'm gonna do with my Greens Master because I have the True Cut. Uh, the Greens Master is going to go into the nice folks at Jerry Pate. They're going to um, service it, do the oil change, sharpen it, get it all set up, and then I'm going to wrap it. I'm going to I'm going to literally put like a um, I'll probably put some I'll put some plastic over it and just have it let it sit sit in the garage until uh, next spring. Um, and then the the uh, True Cut um, I will probably not winterize because I'll still use it throughout the winter to knock down any high spots that still come up as the grass is growing, and I'll use it also for um, scalping in the spring. Um, so, so yeah, that's what I do. But as far as your greens master, um, I only do my oil changes once per season. Um, 
Well, I should say that's actually not true. I do my oil, so I do my oil change whenever the mower is freshened up for the season. So in this case, um, because I'm going to be sharpening the greens master now, and that's that's going to be what's going to have until the spring, I will. That's going to be my oil change um, into next year. Um, and then as far as winterizing, just um, just run ethanol free gas in the mower is what I would is what I would say. There's also fuel stabilizer. I think there's like stable. You can put that in there. That will help as well too. But like in addition to that, using like an ethanol free gas is a good always a good idea. All righty. Often Bird says, he says, a quick update on, wrong person, he says, a quick update on Scott's Rapid Grass Fescue Seed versus the Baron Brug RTF. Ten days after seeding, the Baron Brug is already two inches tall. The Scott started germinating yesterday. Update more later. So there you go. So the Baron Brug is coming in faster, um, and then the Scott's is taking its time. But you never know. Once the Scott's catches up, it might look just as good. It just might. But it sounds like the Baron Brug is off to the races. Thank you for updating us, um, Austin. I appreciate it. Uh, and Winchard says, uh, good evening, everyone. Doing my last application of Humic Max at three pounds per thousand, followed by Heritage G. It's a good plan, um, Winchariot. That is a, uh, that is a good, a good plan. All right. Let's see what other questions we've got going on. We got Greg, um, here. Greg Lyons says, we will be going back to ATL soon and I'm hoping for a Bermuda lawn. However, if it is zoysia, oh. would I mow the earth the same height? as I've been doing with my Bermuda at around three quarters of an inch. Uh, yeah, I mean, three quarters of an inch to a one inch will work well if you're real mowing it, um, Greg. Uh, yeah, I mean, zoysia, yeah, either one of those those, those heights would, be, will, will work just fine. I would not mow zoysia as low as you mow, as, as low as we um, mow Bermuda grass. So I wouldn't take zoysia down to like half an inch. Like that's, that's a bit on the short side. Um, but three quarters of an inch to an inch is going to be just fine uh, for zoysia. No, no problem at all. And congrats, man. Congrats on coming back to the ATL. It's pretty awesome. All right. Um, next up, NASCAR Life says, Ron, do you know any good toe behind sprayers for people that can't use backpack sprayers? I don't, man. I've just never done any research into that. Let me, you know what? That's a good, that's a good research point. Um, that's when you're starting to get into more, into the more commercial, some of the more commercial ones. Um, I don't, if LG were here, I would ask him or if, um, or if Chris, Bal if Chris Balducci were here, he'd be able to tell you because both those guys have, um, I think they both have toe behind sprayers, but I don't, I don't, I just have never looked into that one NASCAR life um, to be able to tell you um, which one is a good one. But let me look into that because this is, I've gotten that question a couple of times. So um, let me uh, make a note on that one. Toe behind sprayer options. It's great, great question. All right. Uh, and then um, Dave Plunko says it's still actively growing. But I just made just wait. Thanks for the call out. And then Kellen, who is a girl, I remember from last week. See, yeah, yeah, I remember. This is, uh, hey, Ron, uh, Miss Kellen, hope you had a great week. What's going on, Kellen? I mean, you said miss, but I, as soon as I saw your name, I knew it was you because I remembered you from last week. I have been having a great week. Thank you so much for coming to hang out. And uh, let's see. We got Manchester Souls saying, hi, Ron, when using the higher PSI output option on certain backpack sprayers, do you have to walk extra fast to avoid over application? Uh, the answer is yes. It, de it depends on the nozzle that you're using, um, Man Manchester Souls Shoals. Because here's the thing, right? So you look at like the Flow Zone or like the Yard Mastery Sprayer, right? Um, depending on which nozzle you use, the flow rate, the the amount of product or amount of, of the amount of product that's coming out will change over over a given period. That's why, like when I did the test for um, that video. Um, I use the same green tip on both of them. I use it because the green tip is what the flow zone comes with, and the yard mastery also includes one of those. So to make the test truly comparable, I use the same tip. So the one thing I'll tell you is that on a flow zone, first of all, I give you an example of what I'm talking about. The green tip on a flow zone at the high at the high setting um, will flow about a gallon of product in 91 seconds. Um, the or 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 this so, way, if we do, if we take the 15 second interval, it'll it'll flow um, 22 ounces in around 15 seconds. The um, if you take the same T jet nozzle, like the Foliar T jet one, the red nozzle, it only flows like 17 or so ounces in that same time period because that sprayer, because it's designed for Foliar apps, it produces a finer mist. It's more restrictive, so the sprayer isn't putting out as much. So the, you really need to. You really need to calibrate the sprayer based on the, the the nozzle you're using to know what your walking pace needs to be to apply the product 
at the rate that you're after. Does that make sense? So it varies. It's not just as simple as just flipping to the high setting and being like, okay, I'm just gonna walk really fast. It's also it's also based on more than nozzle and how much that nozzle flows than um, the setting, the PSI setting, if that makes sense. So hopefully that helps. Naomi's in the house. What's going on, Naomi? Thanks for coming to hang out in the live stream. You know who you are. Appreciate you taking some time out of your busy Friday evening to come say hi. And uh, let's see, what else we got here? We got Wind Chariot. He says, grass is super thick this year, more than it has ever been. Thank you, Ron. Thank, no, thank me. Thank you. You did all the work. I just said, hey, I would do this, 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 and this, and you did it, and you got the result. Um, but it's really on you. He says, I think I have one more year of sand leveling to do, my third year, and I think I will have less sand on the slopes. I I'll let you know on a secret, Wind Chariot. It's probably not going to be your last year. Every year that I have, I have like leveled my lawn, I say, you know what, this is it. I'm done. We're, you know, we're done. This is it. It's perfect. There's no way I can improve on this. This is as good as it's ever going to be. Even like Alex, we were talking uh, yesterday, and he, we were talking about top dressing and stuff. He's like, yeah, man, you because know, when we first finished the top dressing, um, we were both like, we're done. Never again. And we were finished. We're, you know, the lawn looks fine. We're never top dressing ever again. Yesterday we were top dressing. He was saying, you know, yeah. You never know, man. Maybe like a small bit just in this area. We'll do some do some spot top dressings. You see where this is already going, right? It's uh, you see where, 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 how that how that happens. It's one of those things you just never, um, you never really. You're always in search for perfection, and you know. Plus, it's kind of fun. The, the lawn looks awesome after it's done. So uh, we'll see. You you let me know if the next year's top dress is truly your last one, uh, Win Chariot. I would be highly impressed if that were the case. All right. Uh, Kellen is in the house. She has a question now. She says, Ron, do, do leaves impact the soil? I have one area in my Palisades, zoysia, that is always dealing with leaves. I've heard they can create a problem with the salt in the leaves. Mm, I've not heard about the salt, but I mean, if you have leaves and they fall on your lawn um, and you just leave them there, they can create problems with the grass because they're going to, you figure, the leaves form a pretty big barrier as far as like sunlight getting to the grass, so that's going to cause going to cause problems. Um, as far as also building up thatch, if you go, if you mow over them or just leave them there, that can be that that's also an issue with leaves. As far as them causing problems with um, with salt on the on the on the grass, I've never heard that one, but I mean it's possible. I've just not I've just not heard that one. The big the biggest thing I think about when it comes to leaves are you don't want to leave them on the lawn. Um, if they if it's so heavy that they're actually smothering the grass, one reason because it looks it just looks bad, but then also um, they can they can hurt the grass right because you're not you know you're smothering the lawn you you pretty much put this barrier over over your zoysia that's blocking sunlight it's preventing air from circulating it's just doing a lot of bad things in addition to when it rains now you've got this 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 barrier that's trapping all that moisture in so you can also increase the problems um, with with lawn fungus it just in general you just want to get leaves off the uh, off the lawn whenever they fall. But I've not heard the salt the salt issue, but it's quite possible that it could be a thing too. Uh, Zach Hall says, um, "What's going on? What's going on, Ron? Um, thanks for coming to hang out, Zach. I appreciate you. Um, you're saying specifically holly tree leaves. Yeah, I'm not sure on that one, Kellen. There might, it might be absolutely correct, but I just I just don't know the answer to that one. Okay, uh, Greg Lyons says, "Hey, even after adjusting my real mower, I'm getting lots of scalp marks going up and down my slope diagonal." In the last few months, before then, it never did that. I wonder if I need to raise my cut. Yes. So, Greg, it could be a couple of things. Um, one, if you um, you may need to raise your height of cut. If you're if you're mowing at the same height of cut now as you were like in the late spring over the summer, I can almost guarantee that yeah, that's why you're getting some scalping. Second, if the mower's not sharp, like check it to make sure it's still cutting paper. If it's not cutting paper, like the mower is dull, like that tearing can also, I mean, you, you'll think it's scalping, but it can also cause the lawn to become discolored or brown too. Like that was a problem that Alex had on his lawn. Literally, he was mowing every other day, but his lawn just never looked green. It looks kind of kind of off, right? Um, and I, I just asked him, dude, have you ever have you checked to make sure your mower's sharp? He's like, no, I haven't checked it in like a couple of weeks. And we checked it and it was like a, but, like a butter knife cutting the grass. So he took it out, got it sharpened, like two mows later, lawn looked great. So um, I would raise the height of cut. Um, if you're mowing the exact same way you have been all season and, and now you're getting some getting more prone to scalping, then just try, try bumping the height of cut up a little bit. I am getting some of that on my lawn as well. Um, but a lot of that is due to the fact that I just haven't been able to mow as regularly as I, as I normally do due to all the rain. Um, but I would just raise it, uh, Greg. I'm not sure how low you are, but try try going up on a quarter inch. Try going up a quarter inch and see what difference that makes. If you, see if that helps with um, with the scalping. Uh, great, great question. 
Um, Dwayne says, uh, hey, Ron, how does Spurge spread? Does it have seed heads and spread if you don't bag your clippings? Yeah, I believe Spurge does have, it does have seed heads. Um, and it, 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 yeah, so so mowing over it or not and not bagging your clippings if you mow over Spurge can spread it around. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, so if you have Spurge, I would get rid of it. I would spray it out. Like Spurge is one of those nasty ones, man, that you don't want, you don't want that one taken off. Spurge will spread like wildfire and make a real mess of the lawn. And unfortunately, um, unlike we're, unlike crabgrass, where my advice would normally be with crabgrass, if you're mowing super short, crabgrass is going to be, str is going to struggle when it's mowed short. Um, Spurge does not. Like Spurge, if you're mowing at half an inch, Spurge will, will just literally grow at half an inch. Like I had, I, I had that issue, uh, this year in my lawn. So, um, with Spurge, I would, I would use a, a herbicide, a selective herbicide to get rid of it. Um, and yeah, if you're, if you are mowing over big, large patches of, of Spurge, uh, you are spreading it around. Even if you're using a bagger, um, you're probably still going to be moved, spreading some of it around. So I, I would just work to get rid of it. Um, more so than going from bagging or not bagging. Great question, Dwayne. Appreciate you. And then um, Mazama Blue says, it's hard to tell if there's a difference between the two months to increasing the frequency of the apps to once a week. I, I switched at the same time as the fall temps kicked in, but a huge difference over last year. So in other words, spoon feeding works. So what you're saying is that the spoon feeding program made the biggest difference, whether doing it every two weeks or every week, that that one the jury's still out on, but the big thing is that spoon feeding has made a big difference in your lawn, which I'm not I'm not um, surprised. It's it's a it's a really good way to to feed your lawn if you have the time uh, to do it. If you have the time to do it, I uh, I definitely agree with you on on that. I think I missed it. I missed a question. No, I did not. Yep, I think I'm I think I am good there. All right. Um, we got Donnell Burrell in the house. He says, hey, Ron, Lawn, Get Lawn Academy in the house. And for anyone that doesn't know what Donnell's talking about, the Golf Course Lawn Academy is the course that I put together over the course of last season. That is a very structured course. It talks about like all the stuff that I talk about on the live stream, but in more detail, um, pretty much content that I could not make for YouTube because most people wouldn't watch it because it's too propeller head. Like that's the stuff that's in the course. In addition to that, we also have a private Facebook group where all the crazy lawn care nuts all hang out and we talk about stuff that's going on in our lawn, projects, things along those lines. It's a great group of guys and gals. We have a great time um, you know, talking about lawn care. So if you're interested in that, you can see that at, um, at golfcourselawn.com. He says, I've been neglecting my lawn duties due to working 60 hours per week. Yikes, it's a lot of work, man, but you gotta, gotta do what you gotta make that money while you can, right? He says, I'm preparing for fall and winter regiment, pre-emergent and the triple 12. Sounds good, Donnell. Sounds like a good plan, man. That should uh that should do the trick, should do the trick, sir. And I appreciate you uh, coming, coming, coming to hang out in the show for a little bit. Always like having the the, the academy members come in and just and uh, and chill out for a little bit in the uh, in the live stream. All right, uh, let's see. We got here J Work the Thur O Nine. J Work Thur O Nine says, "Hey Ron, I live in Conyers. Um, uh, had new sod put down mid spring. Had it looking good for a while, but then I got the Rona." and the crabgrass came in like a forest fire. How do I kill the crabgrass over the fall? So the crabgrass is gonna go away once temps get a lot cooler, um, Jay Work. What I would do is this, if you want to, um, if you want to do something that's also going to, that's gonna help, um, that's gonna ding the crabgrass a little bit, but it's also gonna prevent any kind of baby crabgrass from growing, from coming in, which again, this time of year, crabgrass is beginning to fall off because the temps are going down. Um, use uh, Dithiopyr for your pre-emergence. If you look up, um, it, that's the name of the active ingredient, but if you look up uh, a product called Dimension, that's like the brand name, um, that use a pre-emergent with that in it um, because that's going to do a lot to, for helping um, prevent like your cool season weeds. But if there's any crabgrass left, like especially any small ones, that will help knock them, knock them back. I wouldn't go out and, um, you know, if you really want to, if you, you can, if you really want to go out and spray something like Spectracide, or um, cream chloric again on them to try and kill them off, but they're gonna go away here in the next month or so that I really wouldn't bother. I would just focus on uh, pre-emergent in this fall and then in the spring, uh, pre-emergent, definitely in the spring, because that's gonna do a lot for preventing you from having issues with crabgrass next year, if that makes sense. So congrats on the new sod and um, sorry you got, you got, um, you know, you got, you got, you got, had to deal with uh, coronavirus, but glad you are doing well, glad you're doing well. All right, uh, next up, Manuel Alvarez says, Ron, have you talked about your winter plans? I have, I have, yeah. So what's gonna happen is I still have to do my pre-emergent. That has to happen, it's probably gonna be next weekend. Um, my last fertilizer app of the season will also be next weekend. 
And then I have two fungicide applications that I'm planning to do um, the first one <laughs> next weekend and the next one in uh, in November. And that, that should be it. That should be everything to close the season out. Just mowing it and hanging out with you guys on the live stream and YouTube, right? That should be it in a nutshell. All right. Um, and let's see uh, what else we got here. And um, Demir is chiming in. He says, NASCAR Live, check the website for Sprayer Depot. If you're looking for a tow behind unit, really good company to work with. Thank you so much, Demir. Um, always good to hear, always have you coming in and, you know, saving the day, calling the audible. So, uh, yeah, so there you go, NASCAR Live. You don't have to wait till next week. Um, check out their website. They probably have some options, as uh, Demir91 is uh, is saying. Oh, he says, Greg Lyons says, are you still having live shows when all of our lawns are dormant in November through January? Thanks for all the insightful help. Is Bermuda grass the most awesome grass ever for warm season grass? Yeah, so yeah, I'm gonna keep doing it. I mean, all of last year I did it. So, I mean, if you guys keep showing up, I'll keep doing it. Granted, the shows will probably get maybe a bit shorter and we'll do like giveaways and just cut up and have a great time just talking about whatever you guys got going on in your lawns. Um, but yeah, I was, my plan is to still do the show every week. Um, the only times I will not do it is, um, like in a good example, in October, there will be one week where I will not do the show because, um, we are going to be, there's going to be the, uh, the, a black belt test that I'm proctoring. So it's actually the same week as GIE, which is probably why, which is why I'm not going to be going to GIE this year. Um, that weekend is, um, our, we have a tournament and we have a martial arts tournament and we have, um, a black belt test and I am... One of the proctors, I get to put them through their paces, see if they know their stuff, make them suffer a little bit, make them earn that, or make them earn that black belt. Um, but outside of that and vacation, which I hardly ever go on vacation, never go anywhere. I don't have much of a life outside of YouTube and work. Um, outside of that, I'll be doing the, the shows. So if I'm not doing it, I will let you guys know ahead of time. You're not going to show up Friday night and be like, "Where is he? He didn't. He, he didn't tell us." I, I will let you guys know ahead of time if there's going to be a time when I'm not going to be doing uh, the live stream for whatever reason. So yes, plan to keep doing them. You guys keep showing up. I keep doing them. All right, um, JK, um, he says, I think I have mole crickets. I already put down the spectrocyte insect killer, but any other tips for getting rid of them? Oh, there was, a, there was a, um, an insecticide that uh, the gentleman last week in the live stream mentioned. Um, JK, check last week's show. I forget the name of it that he, I forget the name that he, that he put out, but, there, but this question was asked uh, last week. Um, and there is a contact insecticide that that, uh, that um, a gentleman that was in the show was mentioning that will work. The, the, the spectrocyte insect killer should work as well too, but that product he was talking about was really good. So check last week's show um, and the answer to that question is in is in there. Sorry, I don't have it now, but I don't remember off the top of my head. I think it started with an A. I think it started with an A. I forget the name of the product though. But yeah, check last week. The answer is in, the, in last week's show. All right, um, Ricardo is in the house. Castillo says, hey Ron, what's a good alternative to watering my lawn? I don't have sprinklers and I have half an acre of Kentucky um, of KBG and tall fescue in the Midwest. Um, I mean, so you can't water. So the, I mean, uh, one option, something that can help is a product called Hydrotain. It's a moisture manager. I'm not sure if we actually have any in stock in the store. Let's see. I think it should be. It is back in stock. Um, yeah, it is. Cool. Very nice. Yep. So there's a, a, a moisture manager product called Hydrotain. What it does is it, you can think of like a, it is like a water magnet. You put the Hydrotain down, you apply it to the lawn, and you water. Well, you can't water. <laughs> it, it needs to be watered in to work. So what you would do, Ricardo, is you would wait until, let me actually show you what I'm talking about here. You go to golfcourselawn.store and search for Hydrotain. Uh, you can see how it's spelled here, hydrotain. Let me move my face out of the way so you can see like right here how it's spelled. You got a couple of options. You have a liquid and you have a granular. In your case, because you don't have irrigation, I'm going to say we're going to go with the granular. Um, a 15-pound bag, um, uh, you, may, you, may, you may have to see if you can find like a site one nearby because they have it in like a 50-pound bag size, I think, which would probably be better for half an acre. I mean, you can you can get it here, but you'll probably, you will likely need multiple 15 pound bags to cover half an acre. What this does is, um, is it, it draws moisture both from above and below the root zone to the roots and makes it available to the grass for uptake. So, so for someone that can't water their lawn and is mainly relying on rainwater, Hydrotain is a, is a great option. The one you're gonna want is the granular because that one is not super picky about, um, being watered in like immediately. Like the, the water, the liquid versions of it 
once you apply it, literally you have to water it in like immediately after. Like you apply it now and like within 15 minutes, 20 minutes later, you need to be watering it in. The granular, you have several days. You have a window of several days. So if you think you're gonna have like a, like a heavy rain shower in the forecast, that's when you could go and pick that up or you should have it, have it ahead of time, obviously, but that's when you could apply it, let the rain water it in or wash it down into the root zone. And that's, that is going to help um, with um, moisture or keeping keeping um, moisture in in the root zones, your Kentucky bluegrass will do well. So that's gonna be my only um, suggestion. I don't have anything else for you outside of using something like hydrotain. I used it this year and it worked very well. Other people use it as well too with good results. So, uh, so try that out. You can get that at the golf course lawn store, but again, um, you probably need you'll probably need a couple of bags of it, several bags of it for for half an acre. If you've got like a site one nearby, you, they also I think they carry something similar. But, um, and that's gonna be in a bigger, a bigger um, quantity. So it just depends. If you feel like supporting me, if you feel like supporting the store, um, definitely go to the store, pick it, pick up the bag there. But, you know, given the size of your lawn, you might want to get it in a, in a larger quantity. Hope that helps. Uh, Alex B says, yeah, I'm definitely a spoon feeding convert. I switched to doing it this season and noticed a huge improvement. Not, not to mention many of the golf course lawn products helped tremendously. I'm glad to hear that, Alex. I know you did the carbon kit, so... The, what he's talking about as far as the other products are like the Release Zero. So these are the two products that are part of the Miramichi Green Carbon Kit. This is, is the bee's knees, especially for foliar apps. Um, so um, Alex was mixing this along with his fertilizer. And it, it, again, it's, it's an excellent, excellent product from a standpoint of improving um, nutrient uptake, making nutrient availability. It's just, um, I've had nothing but good results um, with, uh, with, those, with those products. And again, you can also get those at the golf course salon store. All right. Um, Mazama Blue says, a little concerned about snowmobile and dead spot. What preventative would you go with to protect the coolest of all cool season lawns? Kentucky bluegrass. Um, snow mold. I don't know. I'm not sure what you would, what you could use for that. I don't know if, um, you check the labels for Azoxia strobin and propoconazole. See if either of those are labeled as preventatives for snow mold, um, Mazama Blue. Um, there is something you can use after the fact, but it's not it's not labeled for, for residential lawns. So check um, uh, the labels for propoconazole or azoxastrobin. Actually, what I'll do is this: I'll just send you, I'll give you the label for Headway G because that's both head, that's both propoconazole and azoxastrobin, and just see if it has um, snow mold listed as one of the many lawn fungi that it will either control or prevent. Um, let me send that to you. So at Mazama Blue, check out the label for that. So check out Headway. That's that's um, that's both of them. So if if Snowball is on the label for that product, then you're uh, you're good to go. All right. Uh, Carolyn says, Hey Ron, I sprayed um, humic acid about three weeks ago. I overseeded. And I put down Scott's starter for today. How soon? How soon should I wait after my seeding? Uh, should I use the Humic Max you recommended? Okay, so if you did Humic Max, let me think of this. You did Humic Acid, that doesn't really matter as far as fertilization, you overseeded. Um, okay, so if you, if you put down the Scots Furt and you overseeded today, we're gonna wanna wait four weeks, four to six weeks, um, Carolyn. So let's say the end of October, um, assuming that your grass is still growing, that's when you're gonna wanna use Humic Max. I, I don't want, I don't know what Scott fertilizer you use, but just to make sure you give it, you've given yourself enough window, enough spacing in between them, um, let's give it till, let's give it the entire month of October before you, uh, before you apply it. Great, uh, great question. Uh, you're very, very welcome, um, sir. You're very welcome, um, Jay Work. And then San Singh says, what um, company companies do you trust when buying Bermuda seed for reseeding? Um, what is her name? Hancock Seed in um, Florida. Like outside Pride sells it, but Hancock Seed, uh, that's who I would who I would go with. That's where I get a lot of my Arden 15 from, or that's where I get most of my, I've gotten from outside, outside Pride one time, but um, primarily it's been um, Hancock Seed. And they, they ship fast and yeah, that's what that's who I would go with. That is who I would go with. Okay, Cool Cat says, can I apply a pre-emergent now? And again, next month, or is that too much? It is too much. Just So what I would do, Cool Cat, is apply it once this season, this fall, at the correct rate. Um, and if you do that properly, you water it in, that should be enough to, to cover you into the spring. You know, I don't, you don't, I don't want you to, you can actually cause problems by, um, by doubling up. You don't want to, you don't want to do that when it comes to pre-emergent. More is not better um, when it comes to, uh, to pre-emergent. So just follow, you get the, you know, whatever product you said to go with, um, read the label carefully, apply it based on that, on the instructions on the label, and then you should be good to go. If you want a couple of options for, 
pre-emergent, like an easy one, you can go with like the granular prodiamine. Um, I will show you that here now, if I can get back here, if my mouse will work. Yep, there we go. All right, so an easy option is, um, is this, the, the Yard Mastery 007. This has prodiamine in it. This is um, a pre-emergent, this one right here, this bag I'm clicking next to. Uh, that's a good option. Just follow the, the rate. There's nothing to mix, and it's, you're gonna get a good result with it. And if you're looking for something that's easier than mixing up, um, like using a backpack sprayer and mixing and mixing products and you know all that kind of thing, this is an easy, easy way to go. So I would just pick pick one and apply it at the rate um, on the on the label. We don't want to we don't want to be going super heavy on a, on a pre-emergent. All right. Um, next up, I think it's Juan Hernandez. He says, "Hey Ron, uh, glad I made it to your show. I sprayed prodiamine a few days ago before all the rain. Should I worry about washout? What can I do uh, in the winter soil treatment? If you sprayed it right before it rained, you did it exactly right, Juan. That's exactly what you should have done. Like rain is only going to help." when it comes to prodiamine because it needs to get down into the soil to work. So um, good job, Lex, look, your timing was perfect. Um, as far as winter soil treatments, um, it, you know, what I would say is if, you, if you've if you had any issues with fungus in your, if fungus issues with your lawn in the spring, I would consider putting down a preventative fungicide. So something like Headway or Heritage uh, G in the fall, that's a good, that's a good option. Um, Outside of that, not, not much is really necessary. If you want to also um, put down some some granular carbon, like in the sense of um, like a, the Carbon Pro G or Essential G, whenever it gets back in stock, those are things you can do to do as well. But uh, it, you know, prodiamine, the the most important thing I'd say you've already done, which is getting the prodiamine down, so that's going to prevent issues with POA and those kinds of things uh, in your lawn next spring. So good uh, good stuff. And I will do my best. So you said, please keep doing your live during the winter. I really look forward to your Friday lives, but I will do my best. No problems at all. No worries at all. Um, let's see here. And Demir says, Mazama Blue, uh, at my house and course at Colorado sits at 10,000 feet and I have Kentucky bluegrass. I wouldn't worry about snow mold or dead spot. KBG will almost always grow out of it in the spring, part two, as things wake up. Uh, I have had areas that sit under snow coverage for four plus months. An application of headway before first snowfall can help, but a little shot of N in the spring will help with damage. So there you go. There you go. You have a person that has the exact same issues you're going to be dealing with, Mazama, and uh, there you go. So don't don't stress it. And if you want to do something headway um, prior to it going to sleep, we'll do we'll do it do the best. We got Tiffany White. Hey Tiffany, how's it going? I, I remember you from last year. You were doing the. Um, the lawn renovation project where you were tilling, you, you till the lawn, you were like getting all the rocks and everything out of it. I remember, your, I remember your, some of your content from last year. You said, I had to drop in to get my fix. You have the best speaking voice in lawn care. It's, it's the mic, it's not my voice. I promise you, it's the, the microphone. I've got, I've got my, my voice running through all kinds of equipment to try and make my annoying voice not sound so annoying. I, I appreciate it, uh, Tiffany. And uh, hopefully your, your uh, lawn project is going well. I haven't seen uh, many updates on it, but I know last year you were doing a lot of work on the lawn. So hopefully that is... Uh, that worked out worked out well. All right. Um, yes, and then uh, yeah, Alex B is also chiming in too as well. Hydrotain works as far as reducing the amount of water that your lawn needs to do well. I, I would definitely look at incorporating hydrotain uh, into your program, especially what you what, what you're dealing with. You know, you don't have irrigation. That's a perfect case for it. Just just time the application around when you expect there to be rain in the forecast. Like definitely gonna be rain in the immediate forecast. Get up there with, this, with the, your broadcast spreader, get it all down on the lawn, um, and then you should be good to go. Good to go. All right, Lois H says, hey Ron, good info tonight. I'll deal with leaves all fall and winter. If I mulch to save my back, will it hurt the grass? I plan on dethatching in the spring. Depends on how much leaves we're talking about here. If we're talking about like a small amount, like, in other words, if you have enough leaves, Lois, on the lawn to where you cannot even see the grass, it's all leaves, I would get it out. I would I would blow it up, I would blow them off or get them off the lawn. I wouldn't mulch that. If it's just, you know, a few leaves here and there, and you know, you just want to mow over them, that's not gonna be that big of a deal. But if it's enough leaves that are falling to where like your entire lawn just looks like it's just covered in like dead leaves, um, I would remove those. I would not, I would not mulch that. I wouldn't. So hope that hope that helps. I know it's gonna be more work, but hopefully. Um, you know, you should, it shouldn't be a continuous thing. Like when, when the leaves start to fall, um, you know, each time it should be a little bit lighter. It, it should, it should, in other words, the, the first time you do it should be the worst time and it should get progressively better. But I, I understand it's a lot of work. Um, I, I yeah, so to answer your question, depending on how heavy it is, I wouldn't leave the weeds on there. I the leaves on your grass. I wouldn't do that. 
I would do my best to get to get rid of them. All right, we are winding down, guys. Alex B says, so Alex is, is breaking down what he did this season. He did Carbon Kit, which is the Mermaid Tree Green Carbon Kit that you guys are, are, are talking about. The Carbon Kit, what he's actually referring to, guys, is this, which consists of three products. Consists of Release Zero, which is micronized um, carbon, 10%. Um, it really talks about, he's talking about Nutri Kelp, which is 24% um, sea kelp and also 2% micronized carbon. And then the extra kicker is Biospectrum, which is a microbial package. So between these two, or three products rather, you're, um, you're introducing healthy bacteria to the soil. You're also um, adding 24% um, kelp. Um, extract, and then you're also doing 12% uh, um, micronized carbon. So it's great stuff. I've only had awesome results with it all season. Anyone that's been using it has only reported to me that they also had good results with it as well. So that's what Alice is talking about. Um, the Turfplex is my liquid fertilizer of choice, and this is what he is referring to, this guy here. This is what I use in the spoon feeding program which consists of like Humic Max as the granular, does the heavy lifting, and then I apply the Turfplex, this, at a very light rate. I'm talking about six ounces per thousand square feet. It's only like point, what is it, point one? Yeah, point, um, yeah, it's a, it's a tenth a pound of nitrogen is what this is. So it's, a, it's just a taste, just a taste, to keep the grass, to keep the grass and the color and growth consistent um, throughout, throughout the entire growing season. So between a granular and liquid, it's a great way to have amazing looking turf. The only negative to it is it takes more time. Right, because you gotta be out there twice a month putting down the liquid. So that's the only only negative. But I'm glad that you uh that you got that you you bought the store out, Alex, and then you had uh great results with it. I really, really do appreciate um all the love and support. All being loved, all the love and support. All right, I think we are running down. I got um Veronica. She says, Good evening. We are in northwest Arkansas. We have erosion and rocks. What grass do you recommend? Um in North, in Arkansas, you got a couple of choices. You can go Bermuda, you can go, or you could do a cool season grass. So it's kind of your call which grass fits your eye better. Um, grass, the like growing grass, Veronica, is a is probably one of the, is one of the best things you can do for holding the soil and, and, and preventing issues with um, with erosion. Um, when you say you have erosion in rocks, are you saying your like your entire lawn has rocks in it, or you do you have like a slope or something with a lot of rocks in it? Um, I mean, if, if you're just saying that you want to turn an area that has a lot of erosion and that you're going to get rid of the rocks into a lawn, um, I would say Bermuda, put down Bermuda grass. Um, but it's, it's, a, it's an interesting question. I'm not sure if you're talking about an area, like a sloped area that you, you don't want to really take care of, but you just want to um, you just want to plant some kind of a grass to prevent erosion. I'm not, I'm not sure how to best answer your question, but if it's just that I, I want you want to turn a bare area into a lawn, you have in Northwest Arkansas, you can go either way. You could go cool season or you could do um, Bermuda, like the, the lawn tools. Um, the guys who were in here earlier, you probably don't know them, but um, Jordan um, and his brother there, they have um, Bermuda. So that's that's a good option for, for your lawn. Um, and no, it's not it's not off topic, not off topic or anything like that. I just it's just I just don't understand the question that well, but hopefully my answer is helpful. Some kind of grass. Um, is going to be the best thing for holding onto the soil and preventing issues with um, with erosion. All right, next up, Andrew um, seventy seven says, if I applied Carbon Pro G three weeks ago and did a big overseed since Carbon Pro G, okay, when do you recommend the next biochar application? I would do it monthly, um, G free. I would do it, sorry, Andrew. I would do it monthly. Once a month is fine. Um, I would do it once a month. You don't really need to do it more than that. Um, so if you did it three weeks ago, and another, if you've got some more in another week or so, you can do it again. Um, no worries at all. Again, you're not going to really hurt anything other than your pocketbook by applying Carbon Pro G. But I would space it out monthly. I, I've not, I've never gone where I've applied it more than once in a month. Um, just, just you don't really need to do it. And then um, Veronica, yes, yeah, so you ch chimed in. You said the entire lawn sloped uh, because of erosion. Wow. Okay. So I mean. <laughs> Can you send me a picture of it? It'd be interesting to see what, what, you're, what you're dealing with here. Um, my, um, my email is this, it's ron at golfcourselawn.com. Ron at golfcourselawn.com. Send me a picture of the slope um, just, just to see what you're, what you're talking about. Because it, depending on how bad it is, I mean, you know, the sod might even not, not even stay. It might be difficult to even get sod to stay on it while it's trying to root in. Um, but if you are if if you have a slope, like if you look at look at some of my other content, Veronica, I have a sloped front lawn. Um, 
I don't have any, I don't have issues with erosion, but some kind of grass, whether it's Bermuda or some other kind of grass, um, once it grows in and establishes, it tends, it does a good job of holding onto the soil and will help prevent issues with erosion. So uh, if you can send me a picture, that would help. Um, but in Northwest Arkansas, you got your choices, Bermuda or even cool season grass if you want to. But um, Bermuda is probably what I would go with because I like Bermuda grass. I think it looks cool. All right, uh, Botros Marzak has a question. I think it's gonna be our last one, or getting close. He says, hey Ron, I live here, uh, Bermuda grass here in North Carolina. I'm noticing the grass isn't growing as much when you stop cutting. I am using a real mower. The reason why it's not growing as much right now is because it's getting cooler. It will, if you had stopped cutting in the summer, it would have kept growing, but now the temperatures are starting to fall off. So the grass isn't growing as aggressively. In other words, it's not, it's not because you are mowing it or stop mowing it. It's because temperatures are, are dropping and the grass just isn't growing as aggressively now. That's, uh, that is why, uh, Botros. That is the reason why. All right, um, Ivan uh, Ho says, if you dethatch in the spring, Will your lawn have enough time to recover or will it make it easier for weeds to germinate? Okay, so if you are dethatching, like say a warm season grass like Bermuda, um, yes, you, it will have plenty of time to recover. I dethatched my lawn this spring. The first time I ever dethatched it, actually um, the guys at Real Rollers lent me uh, one of their dethatchers, a sword one with a dethatcher attachment to it and I did it, ran it on my lawn um, and my lawn recovered just fine. So there's no, no problems with that um, at all. If you're talking about cool season grass, will it have enough time to recover, it should, because I mean, dethatching de is, while it is, um, I mean, while it does introduce some trauma to the grass, it's not like uh, like verticutting it or or or, aer or aerating it or things like that. It's not necessarily, it's of, of the things you can do to your lawn, it's on the lighter of the aggressive things that you could do as far as like causing damage. So yeah, you should be fine. Should be good to go, Ivan Ho. And uh, Alex is chiming in, he says he dethatched this past spring and didn't get any weeds from doing that, but he also used pre-emergent. Yeah, so as long as you're doing pre-emergent, you should be good uh, to go. All right, my piece of grass has a question. He says, my only problem is grubs. What do you recommend? Thank you and good night. Um, a celeprin, a celeprin G is what I recommend, uh, my piece of grass. I will send you a link to it. Um, it's, a, it's, an, it's an excellent, excellent, excellent insecticide. Um, that is what I would go with. If you're looking for um, a really, really good insecticide that will that will take care of grubs and army worms and a bunch um, annual bluegrass weevils, bill bugs, and a bunch of other bunch of other um, nasty insects that damage turf, um, that is what I would I would go with. So a celeprin in granular form, super easy to apply. All right, um, and then Jay Clark says, hi Ron, cool JC from um, Northern VA, t uh, turf type tall f fescue. I'm really proud of myself guys that I can actually say that now without like getting stuck. I used to get stuck before, but I'm doing better. Uh, just saying hello, thanks for a great season and great advice. You're very, very welcome, sir. I appreciate you coming to hang out. And then Botros, I think this will be the last comment of the night where he says, um, when do you stop cutting? Um, so I have a confession to make. I, I stopped my main mowing like in November, but you know, even when the grass is dormant, I have been known to mow dormant grass because you can still stripe, you can still stripe um, dormant Bermuda. Um, but as far as like my regular mowing, it's already starting to slow down. Like by the time November rolls around, it's not, I'm not gonna really need to mow the grass as much, but I'm still gonna get out there once every two weeks just to like, you know, knock down the high spots and just maybe lay some stripes and, you know, just, just get out in the lawn and do, some, do something fun on days when it's not so freezing cold. Um, that's what I'll do. So I don't, I don't really ever fully, fully stop mowing. That's why I have the true cut. Uh, I'll, I'll take it out whenever I'm bored and go do that. But as far as when I need to stop, um, when I don't need to mow anymore, November is when I won't really need to mow the grass until like late February or so when I scalp. Hope that helps. Um, and then, uh, Ivan Host says, thanks Ron and Alex. I'm in Canada where pre-emergent herbicides are banned. Yeah. Um, I said, I mean, it's, un it's, I, I get it. I mean, it's unfortunate, but it's also, I, I understand why too, right? Because, you know, if you, if you apply use incorrectly, they can do damage to the environment. So I get why a lot of countries are, uh, are doing that. And you know what? The United States is, a, is probably not too far away at some point, probably not in the next few years, but eventually, um, you know, they're probably gonna become more restrictive around the stuff that we put on our lawns. Well, guys, thank you all so much. I really do appreciate it. To all the winners, again, congrats on winning, um, you know, the the hat and the and, and those kinds of things. I got some more hats from Miramichi Green. We'll have to do another giveaway. I got the Stealth Gray hat. 
isn't that cool? I like it, it's clean. And then we have the FDE. So for those of you guys that like FDE, um, this, we got we got a couple of hats we're gonna be doing. Not this week, probably next week we will do another giveaway. Um, it'll be like another comment in the section, uh, you know, add a comment type thing. Um, but yeah, that's just gonna be more of a theme going into the fall. Uh, once the content begins to slow down because there's less stuff to do in the lawn, you know, we'll just be hanging out, cutting up on the live stream doing giveaways, talking about lawn care, and just still having a great time. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I truly, truly do appreciate it. I was about to finish, and I got one more question. Okay, John. John Finley he says, last question. He says, hey, three weeks old, healthy, sodded backyard, tiff tough. When can I put down pre-emergent? Uh, it, it's only, if it's only three weeks old, man, that's, that's, that's early. That's early. I would wait till spring, John. If you can, if you can hang on till spring, that's what I would do. It. I mean, you you could do it now, but you're kind of rolling the dice. I would wait until spring um, before I did pre-emergent. That's that's the safest course of action, knowing that you are going to have more some weeds to deal with in the spring. But you know, it's it's you just spend all this money and time getting um, your your lawn your backyard sodded. I don't want you to go put down pre-emergent. And if you even if you happen to go a little heavy-handed on the app, that you do you know you do some damage to that beautiful sod that you just put in. So there we go. Well, guys, uh, thank you guys so much. I really, well, no, we got one more here from Red Dog. Let me, let me take the, I'm, I'm trying to wrap it up, but you guys won't let me leave. He says, do you have any experience using tenacity for turf type tall fescue seeding? Will it um, slow germination trying to control POA? I don't have any direct experience with it. I do know that you can use tenacity when seeding. It can work and it will not negatively affect germination. However, the window when you have to do that is clearly spelled out on the label on Red Dog. So you gotta, you gotta look at the label for tenacity and um, follow that to the letter to get a good result. So if you're looking for the label, I will, um, I'll even do you a solid and I'll, I'll, I'll pull it up right here and I will send it to you. Let's see, so just follow this link here and in there you'll be able to see um, tenacity. Red Dog, um, that is, the, that will take you to the Tenacity product, assuming you don't already have it, and just look at the label and it has the instructions around seeding and application. All right, Tom Lebunski says, um, hey Ron, what can I use against Poannua? Have a great, I have quite a bit of it on cool season uh, rye fescue mix and I'm looking to get under control before the summer, thanks. So the best way to, before summer, the best way to control Poannua is to use pre-emergent. So get a, um, get a pre-emergent down now, something like prodiamine, um, Tom, uh, that's gonna do a lot to help to, to really reduce how much of it you have to deal with um, come springtime. Uh, that is that is what I would do. So hopefully that helps, guys. I think that is all, that's uh, that's all of it. And then Demir also has another option for you. He says if you can get um, pro grass from Bear, works, to, works great to remove um, POA in cool season grass. So that's another option as well for you. So there you go. Well guys, thank you guys so much. I truly do appreciate it. Demir, thanks for coming to hang out in the live stream. I know I keep you guys up really late, but I really do appreciate all your help, sir. Also coming in to answer um, some of the more obscure questions and to just to, to share your knowledge uh, with us. Really do appreciate it. Guys, get out and mow your lawns this weekend. Do something fun. Spend some time with the fam. And you know, overall, you know, it's been a rough year for a lot of people. Um, you know, last year, it's been last been a rough two years for a lot of people. So, you know, if I get to leave you guys with anything other than mowing your lawn and getting your pre-emergent down, it's just to be nice. You know, th there's people that are going through a lot. Um, and when someone is ugly to you, it's not necessarily because of anything you did. It's just that everyone's going through a lot right now. So if you can just be that, you know, that little, a small little beacon of sunlight in, in someone else's world, even when they don't deserve it, uh, you know, try your best to do that because, um, you know, it's only, you're only going to, cause good things to come back your way. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys next week. Have an amazing, amazing weekend. Take care.